Right now on America This Morning, the holiday travel rush kicks into high gear this morning just as a massive storm slams the west coast, dumping up to 10 inches of rain. What to expect and the message from the TSA, what it's now finding in record numbers in the security lines. Breaking overnight, back on U.S. soil. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. Ten Americans held in Venezuela arrive home after a prisoner swap. Also included, a fugitive known as Fat Leonard. What's behind the deal and what Venezuela got in return? New chaos at the border. Texas now flying migrants to Chicago. Authorities overwhelmed by record numbers of migrant crossings. What's fueling this new surge and the damage to the economy as rail lines across the border are closed? An ABC News exclusive, the family of a nine-year-old girl kidnapped on a camping trip speaks out. I dropped my knees, screaming. Their ordeal, how she's doing, and what's happening now to the suspect. Backlash in the cereal aisle, new proof that customers are fed up with price increases. And later, the UPS driver going way above and beyond to make his delivery. And Macaulay Culkin in a new Home Alone movie, sort of. I was just a kid, and you left me home alone. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimberg. I'm Andrea from GE in for Rhiannon. We begin with concerns about holiday travel today, which is four days before Christmas. As millions prepare to travel by air, a massive storm is bearing down on the West Coast, which could have ripple effects across the country. At least three deadly car crashes could be related to the storm, and the first evacuation warnings have already been issued. The holiday travel rush is on. Airports today are bracing for the busiest day of the season with nearly 49,000 planes in the air. There's a lot of people going in many different directions. Just got to bring your patience. The biggest problem, the weather. A slow moving storm could dump 10 inches of rain in parts of Southern California, potentially triggering mudslides and air travel delays that could impact the rest of the country. On the East Coast, neighborhoods are underwater days after a powerful storm slammed multiple states, killing six people. Some rivers in New Jersey are at major flood stage through tomorrow. Boats were needed to rescue people in Little Falls. We had to leave because our heat went out. So, you know, with the kids and I'm expecting we couldn't do it anymore. In Maine, several people rescued after a river overflowed its banks. It could be days before power is fully restored. Bad weather last year caused a staffing meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Just this week, the airline was hit with a record fine. It will now be required to give passengers a $75 voucher for any significant delays caused by the airline. You need to take care of your passengers, and if you don't, there will be consequences. We will hold you accountable. Security also a concern, with the TSA seizing a record number of guns. Agents at Reagan National outside Washington stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And at New York's LaGuardia Airport, 17 bullets were found hidden inside a diaper in a carry-on. Fines for firearm violations were recently increased and can now top $14,000 per violation. Back in California, some evacuation warnings were already issued in Ventura County last night due to flood concerns. We'll check your full forecast in just a few minutes. Breaking overnight, 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil, landing in Texas overnight after a prisoner swap between Venezuela and the U.S. As part of the deal, Venezuela is also handing over a U.S. fugitive. He is known as Fat Leonard. ABC's Justin Finch is here with details. Justin, good morning. Andrea, good morning. This U.S.-Venezuela prisoner exchange is now the largest release of U.S. prisoners in Venezuela's history. It also calls for Venezuela to release 21 political prisoners. This morning, a first look at six wrongfully detained Americans en route to a Texas Army base after being freed in a prisoner exchange deal with Venezuela. The White House National Security Advisor posting this image online and welcoming the men home. California businessman Savoy Wright have been held in Venezuela since October. So much gratitude for, for the moment, for the United States of America, for, for all of you, and, and for the, the opportunity to come home. Los Angeles attorney Avon Hernandez heading home after being detained in Venezuela since March of 2022, accused of being a spy. I want to thank President Biden because I know he made a difficult decision that will... I uh, have a lot of pressure on him on Capitol Hill, but 
he got us home, and we're with our families. Senate Republican Marco Rubio slamming the exchange as a disgraceful decision. The Biden administration brokering the deal with Venezuela. The White House agreeing to grant clemency to Alex Saab, who faced money laundering charges. President Nicolas Maduro embracing his close ally at the presidential palace. In exchange for Saab, Venezuela sent back 10 Americans, plus fugitive Malaysian defense contractor Leonard Glenn Francis. Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, escaped U.S. custody last year. Francis pleaded guilty to the $35 billion scheme, which used prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers into steering lucrative contracts to his companies. As part of the deal, President Biden says President Maduro also gave assurances he would allow fair elections. Biden also saying lifted sanctions could snap back if Venezuela doesn't uphold its end of the deal. Andrew? All right, Justin, thank you. Former President Trump is expected to appeal to the Supreme Court as early as next week after being removed from the ballot in Colorado. The ruling by Colorado's highest court is based on the 14th Amendment, which bans insurrectionists from holding office. 16 other states are considering similar moves, and officials in California are now exploring options to remove Trump from their ballot. Opponents of the Colorado ruling argue Trump has not been convicted for his alleged role in the January 6th insurrection, and some legal experts question whether the 14th Amendment applies to the office of the president. New chaos at the southern border. The situation described as a disaster. Authorities overwhelmed by the surge of migrants. Rail lines have been closed, which is hurting the economy. And now officials in Texas are taking new action. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, the crisis at the southern border going airborne. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight because the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally, a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. And there's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Villarreal is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. And now growing concern about the economic impact of this surge in migrants. Officials recently closed some rail crossings at the border, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts. One rail company says the shutdown is costing $200 million per day. Smugglers play a major role in this crisis. A U.S. official says people acting as travel agents in places as far away as Africa are helping migrants travel to Mexico before being connected with smugglers for the trip to the U.S. border. Andrew, Andrea. All right, Derek, thank you. The Lincoln Memorial in Washington has been partially closed after it was vandalized, splattered with red paint. The words Free Gaza were scrawled across the base of the monument. Officials say it could take several days to remove the paint. In the Middle East, ceasefire talks are gaining momentum, but oh the airstrikes are not that? letting up as Israel vows to continue fighting until Hamas is destroyed. Palestinian officials say the war has now claimed the lives of more than 20,000 people, and humanitarian aid is still severely limited. UNICEF says children in southern Gaza have less than two quarts of water per day, a fraction of what's recommended for survival. A major recall from Toyota this morning. It's now recalling one million vehicles, including the Camry and RAV4, because of a potential problem with the airbags. Six Toyota models and five Lexus models are affected, all of them from model years 2020 through 2022. A sensor defect could stop the airbag from deploying in a crash. No injuries reported. We have a list of all the affected cars on our website, abcnews.com. Time now for a look at your Thursday weather.
Good morning. Widespread flooding is likely to continue, especially in Southern California. Today through Friday night, mudslides, flash flooding, and road closures are likely. In the meantime, into Friday, that rain is causing problems in the southwest with mountain snow in the northwest, too. But Chicago down to Houston and Dallas could be some travel delays with rain on Friday. Then this weekend, the rain will continue with a snowstorm from Denver into the northern plains, several inches likely. I'm Aki Withers, Kevin Coskrin. Have a great day. Coming up, the rising cost of breakfast. Americans fed up with cereal prices. Also ahead, is it too hard to quit satellite radio? The new allegations against Sirius XM. And we hear for the first time from the family of a nine-year-old kidnapped on a camping trip. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. We have really good news. <laughs> <laughs> oh I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> what? The Lucky Charms were the target of a joke in Austin Powers, but now the company that makes the cereal is facing a backlash over price increases. General Mills, which also makes Cheerios and Chex Mix, says revenue is down as more customers protest rising prices and turn to low-cost brands. General Mills raised prices due to supply issues and inflation. Sirius XM is facing a lawsuit accused of making it too hard for customers to cancel their subscription. New York's Attorney General claims the satellite radio company forces customers into extended phone calls calls or online chats and trains customer service agents not to take no for an answer. The company calls the allegations baseless. We're now hearing from the family of a little girl abducted from a campground in New York. The suspect is due in court today as the girl's aunt now describes what they've been through. This morning, the family of the nine-year-old girl recently abducted while camping in upstate New York is speaking exclusively with Good Morning America about their ordeal. Pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? The girl's face is blurred at the family's request. Her recovery has been a roller coaster, according to her aunt. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's trying to resume her, her normal life. While camping at Moreau Lake State Park in September, the girl was riding her bike with other family members when she decided to do one more lap on her own and seemingly vanished. This right. can really happen in the blink of an eye. It really can. And I think it's like partially 
to like not simplify it, but bad luck in some senses, like, you know, wrong place at wrong time. The family waited for two days. Then police say a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox, leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr. after they traced his fingerprints from a previous DUI arrest. They found him in a trailer about 13 miles from the campground. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees, screaming. Ross has pleaded not guilty to kidnapping and assault. Later on Good Morning America, the family explains what they hope to see in court. Coming up, the dramatic robbery at a luxury handbag store. Also ahead, a man is freed after serving 48 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. His message this morning. We have really good news. <laughs> 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 I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news, only on ABC News Live. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Back now with a so-called flash mob robbery at this Chanel store. One suspect setting off a fire extinguisher as a diversion. Police in Washington, D.C. say the suspect got away with about $250,000 in merchandise. Thieves set off a fire extinguisher during a robbery at the same store earlier this year. A man who spent 48 years in prison for a murder he did not commit is finally free. 71-year-old Glenn Simmons was officially cleared of the crime yesterday. Back in 1975, he was convicted of murdering a woman at an Oklahoma liquor store. His prison time included a stint on death row. But in July, a new trial was ordered after it was determined that prosecutors had withheld evidence. Simmons says he's not the only victim in this case. He says everyone involved in the case are victims too. There's a new push to change how prisoners are being treated behind bars. One new proposal is being closely watched across the country. This morning, a win for supporters of prison reform after lawmakers moved to ban the use of solitary confinement in one of the nation's largest prison systems. New York City's council approving a plan that would require inmates spend at least 14 hours outside their cells per day, drastically reducing the time spent in isolation, which is currently up to 23 hours per day. Your toilet is in there, your table to eat is in there, and your bed is in there, all in one room. And you don't have any human contact. You have a light on 24-7. The mayor, a former NYPD officer, has vowed to veto the bill, saying guards need to be able to separate prisoners who pose a danger. What city council is saying is while they're in jail, if they commit a, an assault on someone, an inmate or a correction officer, before we place them into punitive segregation, we need to allow them to have a trial of due process. That is saying if someone assaults me on the street, before I can place them in jail, they must have a trial to determine if yeah. I'm going to arrest them place them in jail. That makes no sense.
Earlier this year, prisoners in Pennsylvania sued, claiming isolation is unconstitutional. The state is now considering scaling back solitary confinement. California also addressing the issue, recently mandating prisoners get 20 hours per week outside their cell. But civil rights advocates say that's not enough. They want isolation punishment eliminated, calling it a form of torture. Instead of actually training staff and creating systems so that we keep treat people humanely while in prisons. We're using this tool of torture to manage people. As for the proposal in New York, it could become law if the city council overrides the mayor's veto. Coming up, the most dedicated UPS driver we've ever seen. Plus, Macaulay Culkin starring in a new Home Alone movie. Kind of. So much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Traveling with the president in Dublin, Ireland, I'm Mary Bruce. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse, and we begin with a UPS driver going above and beyond, even during a flood emergency. Ryan Long's delivery truck was cut off by rising water in Maine, so he used a neighbor's boat to get the packages across a washed-out road, and he successfully made the delivery. Ryan says his truck was loaded with Christmas presents. Next, a return of the cubicle. They are surging in popularity as more companies demand workers return to the office. Cubicles went out of style in recent decades, criticized as being dehumanizing. But now, after the pandemic, workers want their privacy and their own space. The New York Times says the cubicle production market is expected to grow by $2 billion in the coming years. Next, Home Alone fans demanding the return of Kevin McAllister. Someone online released a trailer for a new Home Alone movie. It's a parody featuring clips of Macaulay Culkin and the cast from their other more recent roles. The trailer shows an adult Kevin McAllister invading the home of the Wet Bandits. This holiday season, Kevin McAllister is back. But this time, he's not playing by the rules. In breaking news, a Chicago man has booby-trapped his house with guns, explosives, and possibly tarantulas. A SWAT team so is... again, this is fake, but that fake trailer has millions of views. So far, though, no plans for the real thing. Next, a home that looks good enough to eat. This home near Chicago looks like a giant gingerbread house. And it's all in the lighting, complete with icing, lollipops, and candy cane. And finally, an army sergeant granting his daughter's Christmas wish. He was hiding in that wrapped box as first grader Tenley read a note, and then dad sprang up and a long-awaited hug followed. He was deployed overseas, is now home 
for the holidays. That's what the season is all that about. That is a great Christmas present. Love it. Top headlines next. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Checking more top stories, a federal judge has temporarily blocked a California law that would ban carrying guns in most public places. It was set to take effect on New Year's Day. The judge says the law is, quote, repugnant to the Second Amendment. Ten Americans are back home, part of a prisoner swap between the U.S. and Venezuela. A top ally of Venezuela's president, who was in U.S. custody, was released. Venezuela also agreed to return a fugitive defense contractor known as Fat Leonard to the U.S. The Federal Trade Commission is proposing changes to improve online privacy rules for children. They include turning off targeted ads to kids under 13 by default and limiting push notifications. The proposed rules are now up for public discussion before they're adopted. Today's weather heavy rain in Southern California could cause flooding, mudslides and even travel delays. Rain also from Texas to the Midwest. Winter begins today, but most of the country will see above average temperatures. And finally, the Kansas man turning overgrown lawns into internet gold. He spoke with our Danny New. If you own a home in Wichita, Kansas, you may one day receive a knock at the door. I've gotten a lot of different reactions. I do free lawn transformations in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. I'd love to take care of it for you. Every week, Spencer here finds yards around his hometown that need a good trim and offers to clean them up pro mono. Do you get the itch? You're like, I gotta fix that thing. Yes, my heart immediately starts beating a little bit faster when I see a crazy overgrown lawn. Now, Spencer was already running his company, SB Mowing, when he got this idea two years ago. He started providing these free touch-ups, which he would record and then post to his social media channels. It blew up almost overnight. <laughs> But now, millions of subscribers later, social media has enabled Spencer to make his full-time job mowing people's lawns for free. It is extremely rewarding. On TikTok, he has nearly 8 million followers. On Facebook, over 10 million. And many of his followers also come because they find his videos relaxing. I get a lot of people that send me messages that they fall asleep to my videos every night. That's crazy because most of my life, I've woken up to people mowing the lawn. I really appreciate it. It's awesome what you did. Hopefully and, uh, I can help you out. But for Spencer, he mainly hopes that his deeds inspire people. It's hard to describe the feeling without just telling you to go out and do it yourself to see how it feels. You heard him, guys. Everyone should try it. And then, if my math is right, eventually we would all get free lawn care. Right, guys? If everyone just did it?
I think so. We don't have that problem here in New York City, though. <laughs> no. Not a lot of, a lot of cement. <laughs> That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Right now on America This Morning, the holiday travel rush kicks into high gear this morning just as a massive storm slams the west coast, dumping up to 10 inches of rain. What to expect and the message from the TSA, what it's now finding in record numbers in the security lines. Breaking overnight, back on U.S. soil. Free at last, free at last, thank God almighty, free at last. Ten Americans held in Venezuela arrive home after a prisoner swap. Also included, a fugitive known as Fat Leonard. What's behind the deal and what Venezuela got in return? New chaos at the border. Texas now flying migrants to Chicago. Authorities overwhelmed by record numbers of migrant crossings. What's fueling this new surge and the damage to the economy as rail lines across the border are closed? An ABC News exclusive, the family of a nine-year-old girl kidnapped on a camping trip speaks out. I dropped my knees, screaming. Their ordeal, how she's doing, and what's happening now to the suspect. Backlash in the cereal aisle, new proof that customers are fed up with price increases. And later, the UPS driver going way above and beyond to make his delivery. And Macaulay Culkin in a new Home Alone movie, sort of. I was just a kid, and you left me home alone. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimberg. I'm Andrea Fuji in for Rhiannon. We begin with concerns about holiday travel today, which is four days before Christmas. As millions prepare to travel by air, a massive storm is bearing down on the West Coast, which could have ripple effects across the country. At least three deadly car crashes could be related to the storm, and the first evacuation warnings have already been issued. The holiday travel rush is on. Airports today are bracing for the busiest day of the season with nearly 49,000 planes in the air. There's a lot of people going in many different directions. Just got to bring your patience. The biggest problem, the weather. A slow moving storm could dump 10 inches of rain in parts of Southern California, potentially triggering mudslides and air travel delays that could impact the rest of the country. On the East Coast, neighborhoods are underwater days after a powerful storm slammed multiple states, killing six people. Some rivers in New Jersey are at major flood stage through tomorrow. Boats were needed to rescue people in Little Falls. We had to leave because our heat went out. So, you know, with the kids and I'm expecting we couldn't do it anymore. In Maine, several people rescued after a river overflowed its banks. It could be days before power is fully restored. Bad weather last year caused a staffing meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Just this week, the airline was hit with a record fine. It will now be required to give passengers a $75 voucher for any significant delays caused by the airline. You need to take care of your passengers, and if you don't, there will be consequences. We will hold you accountable. Security also a concern, with the TSA seizing a record number of guns. Agents at Reagan National outside Washington stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And at New York's LaGuardia Airport, 17 bullets were found hidden inside a diaper in a carry-on. Fines for firearm violations were recently increased and can now top $14,000 per violation. Back in California, some evacuation warnings were already issued in Ventura County last night due to flood concerns. We'll check your full forecast in just a few minutes. Breaking overnight, 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil, landing in Texas overnight after a prisoner swap between Venezuela and the U.S. As part of the deal, Venezuela is also handing over a U.S. fugitive. He is known as Fat Leonard. ABC's Justin Finch is here with details. Justin, good morning. Andrea, good morning. This U.S.-Venezuela prisoner exchange is now the largest release of U.S. prisoners in Venezuela's history. It also calls for Venezuela to release 21 political prisoners. This morning, a first look at six wrongfully detained Americans en route to a Texas Army base after being freed in a prisoner exchange deal with Venezuela. The White House National Security Advisor posting this image online and welcoming the men home. California businessman Savoy Wright have been held in Venezuela since October. So much gratitude for, for the moment, for the United States of America, for, for all of you, and, and for the, 
the opportunity to come home. Los Angeles attorney Avon Hernandez heading home after being detained in Venezuela since March of 2022, accused of being a spy. I want to thank President Biden because I know he made a difficult decision that will uh, have a lot of pressure on him on Capitol Hill, but he got us home and we're with our families. Senate Republican Marco Rubio slamming the exchange as a disgraceful decision. The Biden administration brokering the deal with Venezuela. The White House agreeing to grant clemency to Alex Saab, who faced money laundering charges. President Nicolas Maduro embracing his close ally at the presidential palace. In exchange for Saab, Venezuela sent back 10 Americans, plus fugitive Malaysian defense contractor Leonard Glenn Francis. Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, escaped U.S. custody last year. Francis pleaded guilty to the $35 billion scheme, which used prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers into steering lucrative contracts to his companies. As part of the deal, President Biden says President Maduro also gave assurances he would allow fair elections. Biden also saying lifted sanctions could snap back if Venezuela doesn't uphold its end of the deal. Andrew? All right, Justin, thank you. Former President Trump is expected to appeal to the Supreme Court as early as next week after being removed from the ballot in Colorado. The ruling by Colorado's highest court is based on the 14th Amendment, which bans insurrectionists from holding office. 16 other states are considering similar moves, and officials in California are now exploring options to remove Trump from their ballot. Opponents of the Colorado ruling argue Trump has not been convicted for his alleged role in the January 6th insurrection, and some legal experts question whether the 14th Amendment applies to the office of the president. New chaos at the southern border. The situation described as a disaster. Authorities overwhelmed by the surge of migrants. Rail lines have been closed, which is hurting the economy. And now officials in Texas are taking new action. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, the crisis at the southern border going airborne. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight because the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally, a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. And there's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Villarreal is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. And now growing concern about the economic impact of this surge in migrants. Officials recently closed some rail crossings at the border, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts. One rail company says the shutdown is costing $200 million per day. Smugglers play a major role in this crisis. A U.S. official says people acting as travel agents in places as far away as Africa are helping migrants travel to Mexico before being connected with smugglers for the trip to the U.S. border. Andrew, Andrea. All right, Derek, thank you. The Lincoln Memorial in Washington has been partially closed after it was vandalized, splattered with red paint. The words Free Gaza were scrawled across the base of the monument. Officials say it could take several days to remove the paint. In the Middle East, ceasefire talks are gaining momentum, but oh the airstrikes are not that? letting up as Israel vows to continue fighting until Hamas is destroyed. Palestinian officials say the war has now claimed the lives of more than 20,000 people, and humanitarian aid is still severely limited. UNICEF says children in southern Gaza have less than two quarts of water per day, a fraction of what's recommended for survival. 
A major recall from Toyota this morning. It's now recalling one million vehicles, including the Camry and RAV4, because of a potential problem with the airbags. Six Toyota models and five Lexus models are affected, all of them from model years 2020 through 2022. A sensor defect could stop the airbag from deploying in a crash. No injuries reported. We have a list of all the affected cars on our website, abcnews.com. Time now for a look at your Thursday weather. Good morning. Widespread flooding is likely to continue, especially in Southern California. Today through Friday night, mudslides, flash flooding, and road closures are likely. In the meantime, into Friday, that rain is causing problems in the southwest with mountain snow in the northwest, too. But Chicago down to Houston and Dallas could be some travel delays with rain on Friday. Then this weekend, the rain will continue with a snowstorm from Denver into the northern plains, several inches likely. I'm Aki Withers, Kevin Coskren. Have a great day. Coming up, the rising cost of breakfast. Americans fed up with cereal prices. Also ahead, is it too hard to quit satellite radio? The new allegations against Sirius XM. And we hear for the first time from the family of a nine-year-old kidnapped on a camping trip. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. I'm Matt Rivers, and that is the Panama Canal. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. They're always after me, lucky charms. <laughs> what? The Lucky Charms were the target of a joke in Austin Powers, but now the company that makes the cereal is facing a backlash over price increases. General Mills, which also makes Cheerios and Chex Mix, says revenue is down as more customers protest rising prices and turn to low-cost brands. General Mills raised prices due to supply issues and inflation. Sirius XM is facing a lawsuit accused of making it too hard for customers to cancel their subscription. New York's Attorney General claims the satellite radio company forces customers into extended phone calls calls or online chats and trains customer service agents not to take no for an answer. The company calls the allegations baseless. We're now hearing from the family of a little girl abducted from a campground in New York. The suspect is due in court today as the girl's aunt now describes what they've been through. This morning, the family of the nine-year-old girl recently abducted while camping in upstate New York is speaking exclusively with Good Morning America about their ordeal. Pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? 
The girl's face is blurred at the family's request. Her recovery has been a roller coaster, according to her aunt. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's trying to resume her, her normal life. While camping at Moreau Lake State Park in September, the girl was riding her bike with other family members when she decided to do one more lap on her own and seemingly vanished. This right. can really happen in the blink of an eye. It really can. And I think it's like partially to like not simplify it, but bad luck in some senses, like, you know, wrong place at wrong time. The family waited for two days. Then police say a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox, leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr. after they traced his fingerprints from a previous DUI arrest. They found him in a trailer about 13 miles from the campground. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees, screaming. Ross has pleaded not guilty to kidnapping and assault. Later on Good Morning America, the family explains what they hope to see in court. Coming up, the dramatic robbery at a luxury handbag store. Also ahead, a man is freed after serving 48 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. His message this morning. So much at stake, so much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year and you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for best news program in all of television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Back now with a so-called flash mob robbery at this Chanel store. One suspect setting off a fire extinguisher as a diversion. Police in Washington, D.C. say the suspect got away with about $250,000 in merchandise. Thieves set off a fire extinguisher during a robbery at the same store earlier this year. A man who spent 48 years in prison for a murder he did not commit is finally free. 71-year-old Glenn Simmons was officially cleared of the crime yesterday. Back in 1975, he was convicted of murdering a woman at an Oklahoma liquor store. His prison time included a stint on death row. But in July, a new trial was ordered after it was determined that prosecutors had withheld evidence. Simmons says he's not the only victim in this case. He says everyone involved in the case are victims too. There's a new push to change how prisoners are being treated behind bars. One new proposal is being closely watched across the country. This morning, a win for supporters of prison reform after lawmakers moved to ban the use of solitary confinement in one of the nation's largest prison systems. New York City's council approving a plan that would require inmates spend at least 14 hours outside their cells per day, drastically reducing the time spent in isolation, which is currently up to 23 hours per day. Your toilet is in there, your table to eat is in there, and your bed is in there, all in one room. And you don't have any human contact. 
You have a light on 24-7. The mayor, a former NYPD officer, has vowed to veto the bill, saying guards need to be able to separate prisoners who pose a danger. What city council is saying is while they're in jail, if they commit a, an assault on someone, an inmate or a correction officer, before we place them into punitive segregation, we need to allow them to have a trial of due process. That is saying if someone assaults me on the street, before I can place them in jail, they must have a trial to determine if yeah. I'm going to arrest them place them in jail. That makes no sense. Earlier this year, prisoners in Pennsylvania sued, claiming isolation is unconstitutional. The state is now considering scaling back solitary confinement. California also addressing the issue, recently mandating prisoners get 20 hours per week outside their cell. But civil rights advocates say that's not enough. They want isolation punishment eliminated, calling it a form of torture. Instead of actually training staff and creating systems so that we creep treat people humanely while in prisons. We're using this tool of torture to manage people. As for the proposal in New York, it could become law if the city council overrides the mayor's veto. Coming up, the most dedicated UPS driver we've ever seen. Plus, Macaulay Culkin starring in a new Home Alone movie. Uh, kind of. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. and reporting in Gaza City right next to Al Shifa Hospital. Wherever the news is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse, and we begin with a UPS driver going above and beyond, even during a flood emergency. Ryan Long's delivery truck was cut off by rising water in Maine, so he used a neighbor's boat to get the packages across a washed-out road, and he successfully made the delivery. Ryan says his truck was loaded with Christmas presents. Next, the return of the cubicle. They are surging in popularity as more companies demand workers return to the office. Cubicles went out of style in recent decades, criticized as being dehumanizing. But now, after the pandemic, workers want their privacy and their own space. The New York Times says the cubicle production market is expected to grow by $2 billion in the coming years. Next, Home Alone fans demanding the return of Kevin McAllister. Someone online released a trailer for a new Home Alone movie. It's a parody <laughs> featuring clips of Macaulay Culkin and the cast from their other more recent roles. The trailer shows an adult Kevin McAllister invading the home of the Wet Bandits. This holiday season, Kevin McAllister is back. But this time, he's not playing by the rules. In breaking news, a Chicago man has booby-trapped his house with guns, explosives, and possibly tarantulas. 
a SWAT team so is... Again, this is fake, but that fake trailer has millions of views. So far, though, no plans for the real thing. Next, a home that looks good enough to eat. This home near Chicago looks like a giant gingerbread house. It's all in the lighting, complete with icing, lollipops, and candy canes. And finally, an army sergeant granting his daughter's Christmas wish. He was hiding in that wrapped box as first grader Tenley read a note, and then Dad sprang up, and a long-awaited hug followed. He was deployed overseas, is now home for the holidays. That's what the season is all that about. That is a great Christmas present. Love it. Top headlines next. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Give it to me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Checking more top stories, a federal judge has temporarily blocked a California law that would ban carrying guns in most public places. It was set to take effect on New Year's Day. The judge says the law is, quote, repugnant to the Second Amendment. Ten Americans are back home, part of a prisoner swap between the U.S. and Venezuela. A top ally of Venezuela's president, who was in U.S. custody, was released. Venezuela also agreed to return a fugitive defense contractor known as Fat Leonard to the U.S. The Federal Trade Commission is proposing changes to improve online privacy rules for children. They include turning off targeted ads to kids under 13 by default and limiting push notifications. The proposed rules are now up for public discussion before they're adopted. Today's weather heavy rain in Southern California could cause flooding, mudslides and even travel delays. Rain also from Texas to the Midwest. Winter begins today, but most of the country will see above average temperatures. And finally, the Kansas man turning overgrown lawns into internet gold. He spoke with our Danny New. If you own a home in Wichita, Kansas, you may one day receive a knock at the door. I've gotten a lot of different reactions. I do free lawn transformations in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. I'd love to take care of it for you. Every week, Spencer here finds yards around his hometown that need a good trim and offers to clean them up pro mono. Do you get the itch? You're like, I gotta fix that thing. Yes, my heart immediately starts beating a little bit faster when I see a crazy overgrown lawn. Now, Spencer was already running his company, SB Mowing, when he got this idea two years ago. He started providing these free touch-ups, which he would record and then post to his social media channels. It blew up almost overnight. <laughs> But now, millions of subscribers later, social media has enabled Spencer to make his full-time job mowing people's lawns for free. It is extremely rewarding. On TikTok, he has nearly 8 million followers. On Facebook, over 10 million. And many of his followers also come because they find his videos relaxing. 
I get a lot of people that send me messages that they fall asleep to my videos every night. That's crazy because most of my life I've woken up to people mowing the lawn. I really appreciate it. It's awesome what you did. I'm glad I can help you out. But for Spencer, he mainly hopes that his deeds inspire people. It's hard to describe the feeling without just telling you to go out and do it yourself to see how it feels. You heard him, guys. Everyone should try it. And then if my math is right, eventually we would all get free lawn care, right? Guys, if everyone just did it? I think so. We don't have that problem here in New York City, though. <laughs> no. Not a lot of, a lot of cement. <laughs> That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Right now on America This Morning, the holiday travel rush kicks into high gear this morning just as a massive storm slams the West Coast, dumping up to 10 inches of rain. What to expect and the message from the TSA, what it's now finding in record numbers in the security lines. Breaking overnight, back on U.S. soil. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. Ten Americans held in Venezuela arrive home after a prisoner swap. Also included, a fugitive known as Fat Leonard. What's behind the deal and what Venezuela got in return? New chaos at the border. Texas now flying migrants to Chicago. Authorities overwhelmed by record numbers of migrant crossings. What's fueling this new surge and the damage to the economy as rail lines across the border are closed? An ABC News exclusive, the family of a nine-year-old girl kidnapped on a camping trip speaks out. I dropped my knees, screaming. Their ordeal, how she's doing, and what's happening now to the suspect. Backlash in the cereal aisle, new proof that customers are fed up with price increases. And later, the UPS driver going way above and beyond to make his delivery. And Macaulay Culkin in a new Home Alone movie, sort of. I was just a kid, and you left me home alone. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimberg. I'm Andrea Fuji in for Rhiannon. We begin with concerns about holiday travel today, which is four days before Christmas. As millions prepare to travel by air, a massive storm is bearing down on the West Coast, which could have ripple effects across the country. At least three deadly car crashes could be related to the storm, and the first evacuation warnings have already been issued. The holiday travel rush is on. Airports today are bracing for the busiest day of the season with nearly 49,000 planes in the air. There's a lot of people going in many different directions. Just got to bring your patience. The biggest problem, the weather. A slow moving storm could dump 10 inches of rain in parts of Southern California, potentially triggering mudslides and air travel delays that could impact the rest of the country. On the East Coast, neighborhoods are underwater days after a powerful storm slammed multiple states, killing six people. Some rivers in New Jersey are at major flood stage through tomorrow. Boats were needed to rescue people in Little Falls. We had to leave because our heat went out. So, you know, with the kids and I'm expecting we couldn't do it anymore. In Maine, several people rescued after a river overflowed its banks. It could be days before power is fully restored. Bad weather last year caused a staffing meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Just this week, the airline was hit with a record fine. It will now be required to give passengers a $75 voucher for any significant delays caused by the airline. You need to take care of your passengers, and if you don't, there will be consequences. We will hold you accountable. Security also a concern, with the TSA seizing a record number of guns. Agents at Reagan National outside Washington stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And at New York's LaGuardia Airport, 17 bullets were found hidden inside a diaper in a carry-on. Fines for firearm violations were recently increased and can now top $14,000 per violation. Back in California, some evacuation warnings were already issued in Ventura County last night due to flood concerns. We'll check your full forecast in just a few minutes. Breaking overnight, 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil, landing in Texas overnight after a prisoner swap between Venezuela and the U.S. As part of the deal, Venezuela is also handing over a U.S. fugitive. He is known as Fat Leonard. ABC's Justin Finch is here with details. Justin, good morning. Andrea, good morning. This U.S.-Venezuela prisoner exchange is now the largest release of U.S. prisoners in Venezuela's history. It also calls for Venezuela to release 21 political prisoners. 
This morning, a first look at six wrongfully detained Americans en route to a Texas Army base after being freed in a prisoner exchange deal with Venezuela. The White House National Security Advisor posting this image online and welcoming the men home. California businessman Savoy Wright have been held in Venezuela since October. So much gratitude for, for the moment, for the United States of America, for, for all of you, and, and for the, the opportunity to come home. Los Angeles attorney Avon Hernandez heading home after being detained in Venezuela since March of 2022, accused of being a spy. I want to thank President Biden because I know he made a difficult decision that will uh, have a lot of pressure on him on Capitol Hill, but he got us home and we're with our families. Senate Republican Marco Rubio slamming the exchange as a disgraceful decision. The Biden administration brokering the deal with Venezuela. The White House agreeing to grant clemency to Alex Saab, who faced money laundering charges. President Nicolas Maduro embracing his close ally at the presidential palace. In exchange for Saab, Venezuela sent back 10 Americans, plus fugitive Malaysian defense contractor Leonard Glenn Francis. Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, escaped U.S. custody last year. Francis pleaded guilty to the $35 billion scheme, which used prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers into steering lucrative contracts to his companies. As part of the deal, President Biden says President Maduro also gave assurances he would allow fair elections. Biden also saying lifted sanctions could snap back if Venezuela doesn't uphold its end of the deal. Andrew? All right, Justin, thank you. Former President Trump is expected to appeal to the Supreme Court as early as next week after being removed from the ballot in Colorado. The ruling by Colorado's highest court is based on the 14th Amendment, which bans insurrectionists from holding office. 16 other states are considering similar moves, and officials in California are now exploring options to remove Trump from their ballot. Opponents of the Colorado ruling argue Trump has not been convicted for his alleged role in the January 6th insurrection, and some legal experts question whether the 14th Amendment applies to the office of the president. New chaos at the southern border. The situation described as a disaster. Authorities overwhelmed by the surge of migrants. Rail lines have been closed, which is hurting the economy. And now officials in Texas are taking new action. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, the crisis at the southern border going airborne. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight because the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally, a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. And there's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Villarreal is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. And now growing concern about the economic impact of this surge in migrants. Officials recently closed some rail crossings at the border, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts. One rail company says the shutdown is costing $200 million per day. Smugglers play a major role in this crisis. A U.S. official says people acting as travel agents in places as far away as Africa are helping migrants travel to Mexico before being connected with smugglers for the trip to the U.S. border. Andrew, Andrea. All right, Derek, thank you. The Lincoln Memorial in Washington has been partially closed after it was vandalized, splattered with red paint. The words Free Gaza were scrawled across the base of the monument. Officials say it could take several days to remove the paint. 
In the Middle East, ceasefire talks are gaining momentum, but oh the airstrikes are not that? letting up as Israel vows to continue fighting until Hamas is destroyed. Palestinian officials say the war has now claimed the lives of more than 20,000 people, and humanitarian aid is still severely limited. UNICEF says children in southern Gaza have less than two quarts of water per day, a fraction of what's recommended for survival. A major recall from Toyota this morning. It's now recalling one million vehicles, including the Camry and RAV4, because of a potential problem with the airbags. Six Toyota models and five Lexus models are affected, all of them from model years 2020 through 2022. A sensor defect could stop the airbag from deploying in a crash. No injuries reported. We have a list of all the affected cars on our website, abcnews.com. Time now for a look at your Thursday weather. Good morning. Widespread flooding is likely to continue, especially in Southern California. Today through Friday night, mudslides, flash flooding, and road closures are likely. In the meantime, into Friday, that rain is causing problems in the southwest with mountain snow in the northwest, too. But Chicago down to Houston and Dallas could be some travel delays with rain on Friday. Then this weekend, the rain will continue with a snowstorm from Denver into the northern plains, several inches likely. I'm AccuWeather's Kevin Coskrin. Have a great day. Coming up, the rising cost of breakfast. Americans fed up with cereal prices. Also ahead, is it too hard to quit satellite radio? The new allegations against Sirius XM. And we hear for the first time from the family of a nine-year-old kidnapped on a camping trip. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. We have really good news. <laughs> <laughs> you I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> what? The Lucky Charms were the target of a joke in Austin Powers, but now the company that makes the cereal is facing a backlash over price increases. General Mills, which also makes Cheerios and Chex Mix, says revenue is down as more customers protest rising prices and turn to low-cost brands. General Mills raised prices due to supply issues and inflation. Sirius XM is facing a lawsuit accused of making it too hard for customers to cancel their subscription. New York's Attorney General claims the satellite radio company forces customers into extended phone calls calls or online chats and trains customer service agents not to take no for an answer. The company calls the allegations baseless. 
We're now hearing from the family of a little girl abducted from a campground in New York. The suspect is due in court today as the girl's aunt now describes what they've been through. This morning, the family of the nine-year-old girl recently abducted while camping in upstate New York is speaking exclusively with Good Morning America about their ordeal. Pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? The girl's face is blurred at the family's request. Her recovery has been a roller coaster, according to her aunt. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's trying to resume her, her normal life. While camping at Moreau Lake State Park in September, the girl was riding her bike with other family members when she decided to do one more lap on her own and seemingly vanished. This right. can really happen in the blink of an eye. It really can. And I think it's like partially to like not simplify it, but bad luck in some senses, like, you know, wrong place at wrong time. The family waited for two days. Then police say a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox, leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr. after they traced his fingerprints from a previous DUI arrest. They found him in a trailer about 13 miles from the campground. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees, screaming. Well, Ross has pleaded not guilty to kidnapping and assault. Later on Good Morning America, the family explains what they hope to see in court. Coming up, the dramatic robbery at a luxury handbag store. Also ahead, a man is freed after serving 48 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. His message this morning. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Back now with a so-called flash mob robbery at this Chanel store. One suspect setting off a fire extinguisher as a diversion. Police in Washington, D.C. say the suspect got away with about $250,000 in merchandise. Thieves set off a fire extinguisher during a robbery at the same store earlier this year. A man who spent 48 years in prison for a murder he did not commit is finally free. 71-year-old Glenn Simmons was officially cleared of the crime yesterday. Back in 1975, he was convicted of murdering a woman at an Oklahoma liquor store. His prison time included a stint on death row. But in July, a new trial was ordered after it was determined that prosecutors had withheld evidence. Simmons says he's not the only victim in this case. He says everyone involved in the case are victims too. There's a new push to change how prisoners are being treated behind bars. One new proposal is being closely watched across the country.
This morning, a win for supporters of prison reform after lawmakers moved to ban the use of solitary confinement in one of the nation's largest prison systems. New York City's council approving a plan that would require inmates spend at least 14 hours outside their cells per day, drastically reducing the time spent in isolation, which is currently up to 23 hours per day. Your toilet is in there, your table to eat is in there, and your bed is in there, all in one room. And you don't have any human contact. You have a light on 24-7. The mayor, a former NYPD officer, has vowed to veto the bill, saying guards need to be able to separate prisoners who pose a danger. What city council is saying is while they're in jail, if they commit a, an assault on someone, an inmate or a correction officer, before we place them into punitive segregation, we need to allow them to have a trial of due process. That is saying if someone assaults me on the street, before I can place them in jail, they must have a trial to determine yeah. if I'm going to arrest them place them in jail. That makes no sense. Earlier this year, prisoners in Pennsylvania sued, claiming isolation is unconstitutional. The state is now considering scaling back solitary confinement. California also addressing the issue, recently mandating prisoners get 20 hours per week outside their cell. But civil rights advocates say that's not enough. They want isolation punishment eliminated, calling it a form of torture. Instead of actually training staff and creating systems so that we creep treat people humanely while in prisons. We're using this tool of torture to manage people. As for the proposal in New York, it could become law if the city council overrides the mayor's veto. Coming up, the most dedicated UPS driver we've ever seen. Plus, Macaulay Culkin starring in a new Home Alone movie. Kind of. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner. Oh, Crufts 2023. The secret life of dancing dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. Reporting from Miami, I'm Victor Okendo. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse, and we begin with a UPS driver going above and beyond, even during a flood emergency. Ryan Long's delivery truck was cut off by rising water in Maine, so he used a neighbor's boat to get the packages across a washed-out road, and he successfully made the delivery. Ryan says his truck was loaded with Christmas presents. Next, the return of the cubicle. They are surging in popularity as more companies demand workers return to the office. Cubicles went out of style in recent decades, criticized as being dehumanizing. But now, after the pandemic, workers want their privacy and their own space. The New York Times says the cubicle production market is expected to grow by $2 billion in the coming years. 
Next, Home Alone fans demanding the return of Kevin McAllister. Someone online released a trailer for a new Home Alone movie. It's a parody featuring clips of Macaulay Culkin and the cast from their other more recent roles. The trailer shows an adult Kevin McAllister invading the home of the Wet Bandits. This holiday season, Kevin McAllister is back. But this time, he's not playing by the rules. In breaking news, a Chicago man has booby-trapped his house with guns, explosives, and possibly tarantulas. A SWAT team so is... So again, this is fake, but that fake trailer has millions of views. So far, though, no plans for the real thing. Next, a home that looks good enough to eat. This home near Chicago looks like a giant gingerbread house, and it's all in the lighting, complete with icing, lollipops, and candy canes. And finally, an army sergeant granting his daughter's Christmas wish. He was hiding in that wrapped box as first grader Tenley read a note, and then dad sprang up, and a long awaited hug followed. He was deployed overseas, is now home for the holidays. That's what the season is all that about. That is a anyway. great Christmas present. Love it. Top headlines next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We have really good news. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. Checking more top stories, a federal judge has temporarily blocked a California law that would ban carrying guns in most public places. It was set to take effect on New Year's Day. The judge says the law is, quote, repugnant to the Second Amendment. Ten Americans are back home, part of a prisoner swap between the U.S. and Venezuela. A top ally of Venezuela's president, who was in U.S. custody, was released. Venezuela also agreed to return a fugitive defense contractor known as Fat Leonard to the U.S. The Federal Trade Commission is proposing changes to improve online privacy rules for children. They include turning off targeted ads to kids under 13 by default and limiting push notifications. The proposed rules are now up for public discussion before they're adopted. Today's weather heavy rain in Southern California could cause flooding, mudslides and even travel delays. Rain also from Texas to the Midwest. Winter begins today, but most of the country will see above average temperatures. And finally, the Kansas man turning overgrown lawns into internet gold. He spoke with our Danny New. If you own a home in Wichita, Kansas, you may one day receive a knock at the door. I've gotten a lot of different reactions. I do free lawn transformations in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. I'd love to take care of it for you. Every week, Spencer here finds yards around his hometown that need a good trim and offers to clean them up pro mono. Do you get the itch? You're like, I gotta fix that thing. Yes, my heart immediately starts beating a little bit faster when I see a crazy overgrown lawn. 
Now, Spencer was already running his company, SB Mowing, when he got this idea two years ago. He started providing these free touch-ups, which he would record and then post to his social media channels. It blew up almost overnight. <laughs> But now, millions of subscribers later, social media has enabled Spencer to make his full-time job mowing people's lawns for free. It is extremely rewarding. On TikTok, he has nearly 8 million followers. On Facebook, over 10 million. And many of his followers also come because they find his videos relaxing. I get a lot of people that send me messages that they fall asleep to my videos every night. That's crazy because most of my life, I've woken up to people mowing the lawn. I really appreciate it. It's awesome what you did. I'm and, glad I uh, can help you out. But for Spencer, he mainly hopes that his deeds inspire people. It's hard to describe the feeling without just telling you to go out and do it yourself to see how it feels. You heard him, guys. Everyone should try it. And then, if my math is right, eventually we would all get free lawn care. Right, guys? If everyone just did it? I think so. We don't have that problem here in New York City, though. <laughs> no. Not a lot of a lot lawns. Of cement. <laughs> That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. It's Thursday, December 21st. Could getting kicked off a ballot be a winning issue? We start here. The Republican Party unites around Donald Trump, including his rivals. They're saying they want to beat him at the ballot box. What a Colorado calamity has done to the race. The U.S. strikes a deal with a regional pariah. The Biden administration sort of slowly and quietly has reshaped U.S. policy towards Venezuela. We'll break down a controversial prisoner exchange. And the leader of China apparently told President Biden he's taking back Taiwan. He would sit across from President Biden and say it right to his face. But does that mean China is ready to invade? From ABC News, this is Start Here. I'm Brad Milkey. In a presidential race, when you talk about ballot access, that phrase usually means a candidate's ability to mount a national campaign. Like, do they have enough resources to meet all the filing deadlines in all 50 states? Do they have support from the state party and donors and organization? Well, in the case of former President Donald Trump, the answer to all these questions is undoubtedly Yes, he's got the support, the money, and the backing. And yet at the moment, if the election were held tomorrow, Trump would be on the ballot in 49 states maximum. Because when Colorado State Supreme Court found he engaged in an insurrection in violation of the 14th Amendment, they kicked him off the ballot and ignited a firestorm of controversy. Well, in the last 24 hours, all eyes are now turning to Trump's fellow Republicans, asking... What are the rest of you going to do about it? ABC's political director, Rick Klein, joins us this morning. Rick, can you just describe just kind of the reverberations in the political world here? Yeah, Brad, nobody saw this coming. Uh, all the other states that have looked at this, six and counting, uh, judges had rejected this. The lower court in Colorado had also rejected it. And, and I think for the, most people in the political world, they just thought, OK, this was an, an interesting and a very important question, but it was kind of settled. We weren't going to use this Reconstruction era constitutional amendment to keep Trump off the ballot. There were attempts. They failed. That all got upended by the surprise decision in Colorado. And that has now reverberated across the campaign trail. You saw it all. Now, whether the 14th Amendment applies, I'll let the court make that decision. But he certainly supported an insurrection. There's legitimate questions being asked of Joe Biden and of, of Donald Trump's Republican rivals. Do you think this is a good thing? Is this the right thing? Clearly, if he's not on the ballot, it makes it easier to win delegates in Colorado and maybe elsewhere. A presidential candidate running who's not been convicted of anything. That's a dangerous precedent. Most Republicans are just not convinced that this was sound law and that this is an appropriate ruling from Colorado. In Colorado, the first question also is probably like, are you going to run against him? Is this a fair fight? What are the options, though, like specific to Colorado now? What are the options that we could see? Yeah, I mean, first of all, Colorado is a super Tuesday state. It's probably not going to matter all that much uh, unless this is a really a protracted fight. But suddenly it's going to be really interesting. This is a hollowed out husk of what the country was built on. The basic principle that we, the people, select our leadership. Vivek Ramaswamy has said, look, if Trump isn't on the ballot, I'm not either. And he's challenging his rivals to pull their own names from the primary ballot. Or else these Republicans are simply complicit in this unconstitutional attack 
on the way we conduct our constitutional republic. Meanwhile, the Colorado Republican Party is saying, you know what, if you're not going to let Trump's name be on the ballot in the primary, we're not going to have a primary at all. We're going to switch to a caucus, which mm. actually is run by the state party, not a state official, in which case the state Supreme Court can't say who is or isn't on the ballot. Oh. I talked to a Republican National Committee official who said, yeah, we're happy to let them do that in all likelihood. They just have to appeal and, and petition for that process to happen. So it's very possible that even if this ruling were to hold, not get taken up by, by the Supreme Court, Donald Trump could still get Colorado's delegates if if the, the Republican Party changes the system. But to say it creates some chaos is kind of the, the least of it. This will rally Republican primary voters around Donald Trump. It makes Democrats look like they're going after Donald Trump. This upends the politics in Colorado, obviously puts pressure on the other candidates uh, to respond somehow. Uh, but it, it puts a big question mark right in the middle of the, the primary voting calendar. Yeah, and can I ask you about the other candidates? Because what I find strange here is I could imagine one of these Republican rivals saying, yeah, he's not on the ballot because he betrayed our trust. This is on him. It's not on me. It's not on the courts. He doesn't deserve to be there. That's why you should vote for me. But that's not what they're doing, right? Like You mentioned Vivek Ramaswamy. Like Ron DeSantis said they're trying to make it easier for Joe Biden next November. I'm sorry. Doesn't DeSantis think he'll be running against Joe Biden? Like This seems like people are sidelining themselves in favor of Donald Trump. It's a great point. And in some ways, it's not surprising to have Ramaswamy, who's very closely aligned with Trump, to, to say that. But Ron DeSantis, um, that's another story. Uh, I think that that is not the way uh, the, the law is intended to be enforced. He's uh, trying to find a lane to, to take over as the heir apparent in the Republican Party. Nikki Haley is relishing the fact that Donald Trump's allies are attacking her on the campaign trail. Even Chris Christie, who, of course, has not been shy in criticizing Trump for his conduct on and around January 6th, he says this is not appropriate. It's kind of left to Asa Hutchison, who, yes, is still in the race. To, to be out there saying this is the problem with nominating Donald Trump. You've got all of these legal issues, all of these questions that are swirling, and yeah, actual questions about whether he's qualified to be president. But the flip side of all of it, Brad, is that there's an element to what the Republicans are doing, his rivals are doing, that plays into the central argument of Donald Trump. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just Trump is out there saying they're the just doing this to target we'll me. They're just that. doing this to try to stop our movement. So I want to see this in the hands of the voters. We're going to win this the right way. We've got Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis and even Chris Christie who are kind of saying the same thing when they are mm. saying that this is not a legitimate ruling. Even though they know it would be better for them politically potentially not to have him on the ballot, they're saying they want to beat him at the ballot box. Hey, last question, Rick. So far, all these challenges to Donald Trump's candidacy had like fallen by the wayside, we thought. A lot of that felt like it was because no one wanted, like everyone seemed to be agreeing, like, yeah, he, I, we don't love what happened on January 6th, but I don't want to be the person to say, like, this guy can't be on the ballot. That doesn't, like, I don't, I don't feel right with that. Could this decision now embolden other state officials or other judges? Yeah, Brad, I think Colorado broke a, a kind of a seal that had been on uh, a lot of people's lips around this. Uh, we're expecting a ruling out of the state of Maine, which is a state that Donald Trump actually carried an electoral vote from Maine in 2020, uh, but before the end of this week to decide a similar question, whether he's eligible to be on the ballot. The Democratic lieutenant governor of California it, it has now publicly called on officials in that state to decide in light of this Colorado ruling whether Trump should be on the, the primary ballot in California, which gets more delegates to the National Convention than anyone because it's the most populous state in the country. And there have been kind of lower level challenges in a whole flurry of states, probably more than half the states that just haven't made their way through the legal process. And talking to people that are involved in it and the, the people that were involved in this suit, particularly in Colorado, they are eager to see it taken up in more jurisdictions. So you could see kind of more chaos before it gets settled. Yeah, and almost to that point, I mean, Trump is appealing this verdict to the Supreme Court and also, at the same time, fundraising off of it. Some liberal groups have cautioned members not to gloat too much because this could all, A, definitely be overturned, and in the meantime, B, it's really firing up Trump's base even more. Uh, Rick Klein, our political director, thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. Next time on Start Here, why did President Biden make a deal with a nemesis? That's after the break. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. The Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. 
With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. So if you don't pay attention to South American politics that much, the last time you might have thought about Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela might have been during this. Maduro meeting with military troops, rejecting an international ultimatum to call for new elections within eight days. In 2018, Maduro appeared to rig an election to keep himself in power. The leader of the National Assembly there, a guy named Juan Guaido, was recognized by many countries, including the U.S., as the country's rightful leader. But Maduro, and perhaps more importantly, his military, refused to hand over the keys and Guaido eventually fled the country. You remember all this? Well, since then, Maduro has remained and our relationship with him has only gotten more precarious. In fact, several U.S. nationals have been imprisoned there in recent years. Well, yesterday, the U.S. announced they had struck a deal with Nicolas Maduro to get them back. Ten Americans now coming home, including six, considered wrongfully detained. But one man also now on his way back wanted by the U.S. ABC's Connor Finnegan is based in Mexico City where he covers Latin America. Connor, what is this deal? Hey, Brad, yeah, this is another deal that the Biden administration has hammered out to try to secure the release of American citizens held by an adversary. But it's perhaps the most controversial yet, and, and as you said, the most interesting, the most important for how it could reshape U.S.-Venezuelan relations. After months of secret talks between the U.S. and Venezuela, facilitated by the Middle Eastern country Qatar, President Biden signed off on this deal after consulting with his senior aides. They decided that it was a difficult decision to make, but in their words, the right decision. We have no higher priority than the release of detained and or hostages, Americans being held hostage. In addition to that, Venezuela thus far is keeping their commitment toward the democratic election. What unfolded yesterday had U.S. officials tense, because for hours they didn't know if those Americans were going to be released until they were up in the air and on their way home. In total, the Venezuelan government has released 10 U.S. citizens, six of whom the State Department classifies as wrongfully detained, meaning that U.S. officials have been putting the full force of the U.S. government into trying to bring them home. This has been a priority for us. Broadly, it's also been a priority when it comes to Venezuela. They haven't released the names of all 10, but among them are Evan Hernandez, a public defender from Los Angeles, Savoy Wright, a California businessman, Jarrell Kenamore, a software engineer from Texas who had been living in Colombia, and Joseph Cristela. Three of the four of them were detained near the border between Colombia and Venezuela, and in some cases perhaps held by armed groups affiliated with the government before they were transferred to government custody. Really interestingly here, though, is, is another component. The Maduro government has also released Leonard Francis, a.k.a. Fat Leonard. He's a notorious defense contractor who is the mastermind behind the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history, a $35 million scheme where he used prostitutes, luxury travel, even suitcases of cash to bribe Navy officials and steer contracts to his companies. He's now back in U.S. custody after escaping one year ago and fleeing to Venezuela. Wait, wait, that's who we want to get back, Connor? Like, not, not, not to be indelicate, but... Why? Why is that? Why is that the person to make a deal for? Yeah, it's a crazy story, but he's one of the most notorious fugitives from U.S. justice. And, and um, you know, this scandal helped to bring down dozens of Navy officials. So it's really important to the U.S. Mm -hmm. criminal justice system that he's back in custody. Importantly, Maduro's government has also agreed to release 20 Venezuelan political prisoners. They're releasing one opposition figure. Uh, critical to the opposition's primaries earlier this year, and they're dropping charges against three others. Okay, so so that's who Venezuela is giving up, effectively, right? Who are we giving up, then, from the U.S. side? 
Yeah, that seems like a lot to give, right? But but in exchange, the Maduro government is getting perhaps like their biggest fish. Free Alex Free Alex a Colombian Free businessman Alex named Alex Saab, who's been awaiting trial in the U.S. on money laundering charges. He's been called a bag man for Maduro because he essentially was moving money around the globe, trying to enrich the regime for years, even as the vast majority of Venezuelans have been starving. He was extradited from Cape Verde several years ago to the U.S. to face those charges, although he was still awaiting trial at the time of his release. They took him without letting his lawyers or family know or anyone else know. This was truly a kidnapping of a diplomat by the United States government. He is already back in Venezuela. He was greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters and escorted all the way to the presidential palace. I think that gives you an indication of just how important he is to Maduro. Yeah, this almost reminds me of when the U.S. was doing this exchange with, with Russia and we exchanged Victor Boot, like this very well-known arms salesman, like very, he was considered dangerous for a long time. How dangerous is Alex Saab considered, I guess? I think that image alone tells you everything you need to know about him. The fact that he was in the presidential palace within hours of arriving back in Caracas, tells you how close he and Maduro are. He is important because he's able to move money around the globe for the regime in order to continue to prop them up amid those protests that we've seen, the challenges, the, the sanctions from the U.S. and other countries. It's critical that, that Maduro has men like Saab at his side to continue to bring money in to simply survive. Wow, okay, so then this is like, a, a, this blockbuster deal happens then, Connor, but what does this say at this point then about the U.S. relationship with Venezuela, because like obviously we're back to recognizing Maduro is very much in charge of this country if we're doing these sorts of deals with him. Yeah, I think, Brett, it's really interesting how the Biden administration sort of slowly and quietly has reshaped U.S. policy towards Venezuela. Remember, this country has been in crisis for years now. Economic crisis, humanitarian crisis, political crisis, and those crises all together have created the largest refugee crisis in the world. More. Venezuelans have fled their country than Ukrainians, than Syrians in totality. And, and that's really destabilized the, the hemisphere. Brazil is hosting more than 180,000 Venezuelans who have fled economic collapse and tyranny. We start noticing the majority of that uptake is related to Venezuelan nationals. As a county, we are not resourced to handle this many people, you know, coming in. From, from Canada all the way down to Argentina and Chile, countries are struggling with this Venezuelan refugee crisis, including in the U.S. And that's played out in other ways as well. In October, the U.S. rolled back temporarily, they say, some of the most important sanctions against Venezuela on their oil and gold sectors, among others. And so with the challenges at the border, with the, with the Venezuelan refugee crisis, the Biden administration increasingly needs to cooperate with Nicolas Maduro's government. And you've kind of seen that in how these talks behind this, this prisoner exchange played out as well. As part of the deal, you know, Maduro agreed to release those 20 Venezuelan political prisoners, but that was something that they were supposed to have done two months ago when they reached a deal with the opposition and the U.S. rolled back those sanctions. The fact that they're doing so now, only after the U.S. has released Saab, to some critics says that, you know, Maduro is moving the goalposts here and Biden is simply meeting him wherever he tells him to, instead of standing up to the Maduro regime and, and putting their foot down. Well, yeah, and part of that deal that you're mentioning, Maduro had said he would have free and fair elections in his country. But in his country at this moment, there is still a ban on political opponents running against him. So that's how far these conversations have gotten. All right, Connor Finnegan, thank you so much. Thanks, Brad. I should say there was another major piece of foreign policy news yesterday when word got out that in a private conversation, President Xi Jinping of China told President Biden that China will reunify the island of Taiwan. It's not quite the same as saying, hey, heads up, we're going to invade them at some point soon, but it's in the ballpark. ABC's Shannon Crawford covers the State Department. Shannon, it's not like this happened overnight, right? We're just like learning it happened a while back. Can you describe this? That's right, Brad. Let me take you back in time. It's the middle of November. It's a beautiful vehicle. China's president and the U.S. president, they're meeting face to face for the first time in over a year in the San Francisco area on the sidelines of an important economic conference. Mr. President, we know each other for a long time. We haven't always agreed, which would not have surprised anyone. But our meetings have always been candid, straightforward and useful. I've never doubted what you've told me in terms of your candid nature in which you speak. 
Now, the purpose here for their engagement is to ratchet down tensions between the U.S. and China. President Biden and I agreed to promote dialogue and cooperation in the spirit of mutual respect. But we're learning now from American officials that during their conversation, President Xi brought up his intention to reunify Taiwan and mainland China. That's not something different uh, or new. Right after the news broke, reporters pressed White House spokesperson John Kirby about this aboard Air Force One, and he said the Biden administration has been clear. They don't support independence for Taiwan, but they also don't want to see a change in the status quo. We still adhere to the one China policy. We don't support independence for Taiwan. We also don't support a, a change in the status quo unilaterally, and certainly not one by force. And as the president has said, there's no reason for this to come to blows. So really, what's shocking here is not that China's President Xi wants to invade Taiwan, wants to take it over perhaps, but that he would sit across from President Biden and say it right to his face. Well, and for like a non-foreign policy wonk, when they say reunify, what does that mean? Is that predicting a military invasion or what? what, what is that? Well, it's unclear if he intends to invade Taiwan to take the Democratic Island by force or if he wants to seek a more peaceful route. But if actions speak louder than words and we're looking at China's actions in recent months, it's been steadily ramping up pressure on Taiwan through its military by air and by sea and even having some really close calls with U.S. military assets in the region in the process of doing that. I was going to say, where does this put the Biden administration at the end of the day? Because, like, do you basically have to tell China, OK, if you're getting ready to reunify, whatever that means, then we're going to get ready with our forces to defend them. Like, what what do you how does the Biden administration have to react now? President Biden has already come out multiple times and set a strong red line on China's actions toward Taiwan. We maintain the agreement that there is a one China policy and that uh, I'm not going to uh, change that. He said that if there's military intervention, if China seeks to take the island by force, the U.S. will intervene with the American military. The U.S. should not bet against China or interfere in China's internal affairs. It should instead welcome a peaceful, stable, and prosperous China. But Chinese officials have made their own stance clear. They're not going to be told what to do, and they're not going to be threatened. Yeah, what would it even look like at this point, Shannon? Like, do we have a sense of, like, we're coming up into a new year? Is is this the year of the invasion coming up? What do we think? Well, there's been a range of estimates. Some predict it might be right around the corner, 2025, and some say it might happen all the way in 2050. And it's not clear that President Xi has formulated his own strategy on, on how to proceed. But President Xi has made it clear he wants to see Taiwan under the Chinese government's control, and he's not going to stop until he sees that happen. Yeah, and it's almost counterintuitive to hear American officials say, like, we're not looking for this group's independence. But here, that's pretty much what the White House is saying. We'd rather have the status quo, which is officially Taiwan's part of China, but in practice, they're very much just a democracy on an island nearby. We'll see what happens, though, in the near future. Uh, Shannon Crawford, thank you. Thank you, Brad. All right, one more quick break. When we come back, if you keep raising the price of cereal, eventually your customers will say cheerio. One last thing is next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? 
Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner. Oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. <laughs> Reporting from the front lines of the war in Israel, I'm Ian Panel. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And one last thing. Kids might be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but their parents aren't crazy. In the last couple years, you don't need me to tell you, groceries have grown more and more expensive. The soaring costs are unavoidable. What you used to get, no problem. Now you have to say, OK, maybe I'll get it next month. Every month, it seemed to be something different, in part because there were so many factors. When everyone was sitting in their homes baking for themselves, there were runs on yeast and butter. When poultry factories were overwhelmed, it was chicken and eggs. And when Ukraine went to war, wheat prices went up. And now, even with inflation slowing in lots of areas, we are still paying more for food. In fact, this has been a point of pride to some of these companies. In shareholder meetings back in 2021, when describing rising costs, the CFO of Kroger Grocery Store said, quote, Generally, we've been very comfortable with our ability to pass on the increases that we've seen at this point. To pass on the increases that we've seen. He's talking about hiking prices for consumers. Procter & Gamble said it had also raised prices. And we have not seen any material reaction from consumers in terms of um, volume offtake. And mind you, this wasn't just to keep up with inflation. These companies' profits soared. In June of last year, with inflation around 9%, General Mills came out and said it had just doubled its profits from the quarter before. The reason? Well, several price hikes. Yesterday, though, the CEO of General Mills admitted they might have overshot a little. In an earnings call, Jeff Harmoning announced weaker than expected sales last quarter. We are seeing consumers continue to display stronger than anticipated value seeking behaviors across our key markets. Did you hear that? Stronger than anticipated value seeking behaviors. That means shoppers are done with the price hikes. They're off looking for deals somewhere else. Harmoning said something else illuminating. He said, usually in times of high prices, consumers will stop going to restaurants. They'll cook at home more. This time, despite menu prices and tips going up, people are not buying more groceries. Have we reached our limit? General Mills stock ended up dropping almost 4% yesterday as this news came out. And with other companies also saying demand is slowing, they're not the only company checksing themselves. Cereal prices are no joke, which you know if you've got kids or you know because you're like me and you have the palate of a fourth grader. Sometimes you just want some cinnamon toast crunch for dessert, you know? Anyway, enjoy the longest night of the year. That's right, it's solstice time. More on all these stories at abcnews.com or the ABC News app. I'm Brad Milkey. See you tomorrow. at stake. So much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner. Oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live.
to crush the families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the Dudley Hospital shooting in Atlanta, I'm Jacqueline Lee. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Right now on America This Morning, the holiday travel rush kicks into high gear this morning just as a massive storm slams the west coast, dumping up to 10 inches of rain. What to expect and the message from the TSA, what it's now finding in record numbers in the security lines. Breaking overnight, back on U.S. soil. Free at last, free at last, thank God almighty, free at last. Ten Americans held in Venezuela arrive home after a prisoner swap. Also included, a fugitive known as Fat Leonard. What's behind the deal and what Venezuela got in return? New chaos at the border. Texas now flying migrants to Chicago. Authorities overwhelmed by record numbers of migrant crossings. What's fueling this new surge and the damage to the economy as rail lines across the border are closed? An ABC News exclusive, the family of a nine-year-old girl kidnapped on a camping trip speaks out. I dropped my knees, screaming. Their ordeal, how she's doing, and what's happening now to the suspect. Backlash in the cereal aisle, new proof that customers are fed up with price increases. And later, the UPS driver going way above and beyond to make his delivery. And Macaulay Culkin in a new Home Alone movie, sort of. I was just a kid, and you left me home alone. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimberg. I'm Andrea Fuji in for Rhiannon. We begin with concerns about holiday travel today, which is four days before Christmas. As millions prepare to travel by air, a massive storm is bearing down on the West Coast, which could have ripple effects across the country. At least three deadly car crashes could be related to the storm, and the first evacuation warnings have already been issued. The holiday travel rush is on. Airports today are bracing for the busiest day of the season with nearly 49,000 planes in the air. There's a lot of people going in many different directions. Just got to bring your patience. The biggest problem, the weather. A slow moving storm could dump 10 inches of rain in parts of Southern California, potentially triggering mudslides and air travel delays that could impact the rest of the country. On the East Coast, neighborhoods are underwater days after a powerful storm slammed multiple states, killing six people. Some rivers in New Jersey are at major flood stage through tomorrow. Boats were needed to rescue people in Little Falls. We had to leave because our heat went out. So, you know, with the kids and I'm expecting we couldn't do it anymore. In Maine, several people rescued after a river overflowed its banks. It could be days before power is fully restored. Bad weather last year caused a staffing meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Just this week, the airline was hit with a record fine. It will now be required to give passengers a $75 voucher for any significant delays caused by the airline. 
You need to take care of your passengers, and if you don't, there will be consequences. We will hold you accountable. Security also a concern, with the TSA seizing a record number of guns. Agents at Reagan National outside Washington stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And at New York's LaGuardia Airport, 17 bullets were found hidden inside a diaper in a carry-on. Fines for firearm violations were recently increased and can now top $14,000 per violation. Back in California, some evacuation warnings were already issued in Ventura County last night due to flood concerns. We'll check your full forecast in just a few minutes. Breaking overnight, 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil, landing in Texas overnight after a prisoner swap between Venezuela and the U.S. As part of the deal, Venezuela is also handing over a U.S. fugitive. He is known as Fat Leonard. ABC's Justin Finch is here with details. Justin, good morning. Andrea, good morning. This U.S.-Venezuela prisoner exchange is now the largest release of U.S. prisoners in Venezuela's history. It also calls for Venezuela to release 21 political prisoners. This morning, a first look at six wrongfully detained Americans en route to a Texas Army base after being freed in a prisoner exchange deal with Venezuela. The White House National Security Advisor posting this image online and welcoming the men home. California businessman Savoy Wright have been held in Venezuela since October. So much gratitude for, for the moment, for the United States of America, for, for all of you, and, and for the, the opportunity to come home. Los Angeles attorney Avon Hernandez heading home after being detained in Venezuela since March of 2022, accused of being a spy. I want to thank President Biden because I know he made a difficult decision that will... I uh, have a lot of pressure on him on Capitol Hill, but he got us home and we're with our families. Senate Republican Marco Rubio slamming the exchange as a disgraceful decision. The Biden administration brokering the deal with Venezuela. The White House agreeing to grant clemency to Alex Saab, who faced money laundering charges. President Nicolas Maduro embracing his close ally at the presidential palace. In exchange for Saab, Venezuela sent back 10 Americans, plus fugitive Malaysian defense contractor Leonard Glenn Francis. Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, escaped U.S. custody last year. Francis pleaded guilty to the $35 billion scheme, which used prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers into steering lucrative contracts to his companies. As part of the deal, President Biden says President Maduro also gave assurances he would allow fair elections. Biden also saying lifted sanctions could snap back if Venezuela doesn't uphold its end of the deal. Andrew? All right, Justin, thank you. Former President Trump is expected to appeal to the Supreme Court as early as next week after being removed from the ballot in Colorado. The ruling by Colorado's highest court is based on the 14th Amendment, which bans insurrectionists from holding office. Sixteen other states are considering similar moves, and officials in California are now exploring options to remove Trump from their ballot. Opponents of the Colorado ruling argue Trump has not been convicted for his alleged role in the January 6th insurrection, and some legal experts question whether the 14th Amendment applies to the office of the president. New chaos at the southern border. The situation described as a disaster. Authorities overwhelmed by the surge of migrants. Rail lines have been closed, which is hurting the economy. And now officials in Texas are taking new action. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, the crisis at the southern border going airborne. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago, 120 arriving on the first flight because the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally, a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. And there's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Villarreal is in Eagle Pass, Texas. 
There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. And now growing concern about the economic impact of this surge in migrants. Officials recently closed some rail crossings at the border, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts. One rail company says the shutdown is costing $200 million per day. Smugglers play a major role in this crisis. A U.S. official says people acting as travel agents in places as far away as Africa are helping migrants travel to Mexico before being connected with smugglers for the trip to the U.S. border. Andrew, Andrea. All right, Derek, thank you. The Lincoln Memorial in Washington has been partially closed after it was vandalized, splattered with red paint. The words Free Gaza were scrawled across the base of the monument. Officials say it could take several days to remove the paint. In the Middle East, ceasefire talks are gaining momentum, but oh the airstrikes are not that? letting up as Israel vows to continue fighting until Hamas is destroyed. Palestinian officials say the war has now claimed the lives of more than 20,000 people, and humanitarian aid is still severely limited. UNICEF says children in southern Gaza have less than two quarts of water per day, a fraction of what's recommended for survival. A major recall from Toyota this morning. It's now recalling one million vehicles, including the Camry and RAV4, because of a potential problem with the airbags. Six Toyota models and five Lexus models are affected, all of them from model years 2020 through 2022. A sensor defect could stop the airbag from deploying in a crash. No injuries reported. We have a list of all the affected cars on our website, abcnews.com. Time now for a look at your Thursday weather. Good morning. Widespread flooding is likely to continue, especially in Southern California. Today through Friday night, mudslides, flash flooding, and road closures are likely. In the meantime, into Friday, that rain is causing problems in the southwest with mountain snow in the northwest, too. But Chicago down to Houston and Dallas could be some travel delays with rain on Friday. Then this weekend, the rain will continue with a snowstorm from Denver into the northern plains, several inches likely. I'm Aki Withers, Kevin Cosgren. Have a great day. Coming up, the rising cost of breakfast. Americans fed up with cereal prices. Also ahead, is it too hard to quit satellite radio? The new allegations against Sirius XM. And we hear for the first time from the family of a nine-year-old kidnapped on a camping trip. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. We have really good news. <laughs> 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 I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted. 
babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> what? The Lucky Charms were the target of a joke in Austin Powers, but now the company that makes the cereal is facing a backlash over price increases. General Mills, which also makes Cheerios and Chex Mix, says revenue is down as more customers protest rising prices and turn to low-cost brands. General Mills raised prices due to supply issues and inflation. Sirius XM is facing a lawsuit accused of making it too hard for customers to cancel their subscription. New York's Attorney General claims the satellite radio company forces customers into extended phone calls calls or online chats and trains customer service agents not to take no for an answer. The company calls the allegations baseless. We're now hearing from the family of a little girl abducted from a campground in New York. The suspect is due in court today as the girl's aunt now describes what they've been through. This morning, the family of the nine-year-old girl recently abducted while camping in upstate New York is speaking exclusively with Good Morning America about their ordeal. Pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? The girl's face is blurred at the family's request. Her recovery has been a roller coaster, according to her aunt. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's trying to resume her, her normal life. While camping at Moreau Lake State Park in September, the girl was riding her bike with other family members when she decided to do one more lap on her own and seemingly vanished. This right. can really happen in the blink of an eye. It really can. And I think it's like partially to like not simplify it, but bad luck in some senses, like you know, wrong place at wrong time. The family waited for two days. Then police say a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox, leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr. after they traced his fingerprints from a previous DUI arrest. They found him in a trailer about 13 miles from the campground. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees, screaming. Ross has pleaded not guilty to kidnapping and assault. Later on Good Morning America, the family explains what they hope to see in court. Coming up, the dramatic robbery at a luxury handbag store. Also ahead, a man is freed after serving 48 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. His message this morning. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. It's me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I hug you. 
Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Back now with a so-called flash mob robbery at this Chanel store. One suspect setting off a fire extinguisher as a diversion. Police in Washington, D.C. say the suspect got away with about $250,000 in merchandise. Thieves set off a fire extinguisher during a robbery at the same store earlier this year. A man who spent 48 years in prison for a murder he did not commit is finally free. 71-year-old Glenn Simmons was officially cleared of the crime yesterday. Back in 1975, he was convicted of murdering a woman at an Oklahoma liquor store. His prison time included a stint on death row. But in July, a new trial was ordered after it was determined that prosecutors had withheld evidence. Simmons says he's not the only victim in this case. He says everyone involved in the case are victims too. There's a new push to change how prisoners are being treated behind bars. One new proposal is being closely watched across the country. This morning, a win for supporters of prison reform after lawmakers moved to ban the use of solitary confinement in one of the nation's largest prison systems. New York City's council approving a plan that would require inmates spend at least 14 hours outside their cells per day, drastically reducing the time spent in isolation, which is currently up to 23 hours per day. Your toilet is in there, your table to eat is in there, and your bed is in there, all in one room. And you don't have any human contact. You have a light on 24-7. The mayor, a former NYPD officer, has vowed to veto the bill, saying guards need to be able to separate prisoners who pose a danger. What city council is saying is while they're in jail, if they commit a, an assault on someone, an inmate or a correction officer, before we place them into punitive segregation, we need to allow them to have a trial of due process. That is saying if someone assaults me on the street, before I can place them in jail, they must have a trial to determine yeah. if I'm going to arrest them place them in jail. That makes no sense. Earlier this year, prisoners in Pennsylvania sued, claiming isolation is unconstitutional. The state is now considering scaling back solitary confinement. California also addressing the issue, recently mandating prisoners get 20 hours per week outside their cell. But civil rights advocates say that's not enough. They want isolation punishment eliminated, calling it a form of torture. Instead of actually training staff and creating systems so that we creep treat people humanely while in prisons. We're using this tool of torture to manage people. As for the proposal in New York, it could become law if the city council overrides the mayor's veto. Coming up, the most dedicated UPS driver we've ever seen. Plus, Macaulay Culkin starring in a new Home Alone movie. Kind of. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner. Oh, Crufts 2023. The secret life of dancing dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. <laughs> With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. 
wherever news breaks. It's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse, and we begin with a UPS driver going above and beyond, even during a flood emergency. Ryan Long's delivery truck was cut off by rising water in Maine, so he used a neighbor's boat to get the packages across a washed-out road, and he successfully made the delivery. Ryan says his truck was loaded with Christmas presents. Next, a return of the cubicle. They are surging in popularity as more companies demand workers return to the office. Cubicles went out of style in recent decades, criticized as being dehumanizing. But now, after the pandemic, workers want their privacy and their own space. The New York Times says the cubicle production market is expected to grow by $2 billion in the coming years. Next, Home Alone fans demanding the return of Kevin McAllister. Someone online released a trailer for a new Home Alone movie. It's a parody <laughs> featuring clips of Macaulay Culkin and the cast from their other more recent roles. The trailer shows an adult Kevin McAllister invading the home of the Wet Bandits. This holiday season, Kevin McAllister is back. But this time, he's not playing by the rules. In breaking news, a Chicago man has booby-trapped his house with guns, explosives, and possibly tarantulas. A SWAT team so is... So again, this is fake, but that fake trailer has millions of views. So far, though, no plans for the real thing. Next, a home that looks good enough to eat. This home near Chicago looks like a giant gingerbread house, and it's all in the lighting, complete with icing, lollipops, and candy canes. And finally, an army sergeant granting his daughter's Christmas wish. He was hiding in that wrapped box as first grader Tenley read a note, and then dad sprang up, and a long a weighted hug followed. He was deployed overseas, is now home for the holidays. That's what the season is all that about. That is a anyway. great Christmas present. Love it. Top headlines next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We have really good news. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, on the brink, now streaming on Hulu. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. Checking more top stories, a federal judge has temporarily blocked a California law that would ban carrying guns in most public places. It was set to take effect on New Year's Day. The judge says the law is, quote, repugnant to the Second Amendment. Ten Americans are back home, part of a prisoner swap between the U.S. and Venezuela. A top ally of Venezuela's president, who was in U.S. custody, was released. Venezuela also agreed to return a fugitive defense contractor known as Fat Leonard to the U.S. 
The Federal Trade Commission is proposing changes to improve online privacy rules for children. They include turning off targeted ads to kids under 13 by default and limiting push notifications. The proposed rules are now up for public discussion before they're adopted. Today's weather heavy rain in Southern California could cause flooding, mudslides and even travel delays. Rain also from Texas to the Midwest. Winter begins today, but most of the country will see above average temperatures. And finally, the Kansas man turning overgrown lawns into internet gold. He spoke with our Danny New. If you own a home in Wichita, Kansas, you may one day receive a knock at the door. I've gotten a lot of different reactions. I do free lawn transformations in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. I'd love to take care of it for you. Every week, Spencer here finds yards around his hometown that need a good trim and offers to clean them up pro mono. Do you get the itch? You're like, I got to fix that thing. Yes, my heart immediately starts beating a little bit faster when I see a crazy overgrown lawn. Now, Spencer was already running his company, SB Mowing, when he got this idea two years ago. He started providing these free touch-ups, which he would record and then post to his social media channels. It blew up almost overnight. <laughs> But now, millions of subscribers later, social media has enabled Spencer to make his full-time job mowing people's lawns for free. It is extremely rewarding. On TikTok, he has nearly 8 million followers. On Facebook, over 10 million. And many of his followers also come because they find his videos relaxing. I get a lot of people that send me messages that they fall asleep to my videos every night. That's crazy because most of my life, I've woken up to people mowing the lawn. I really appreciate it. It's awesome what you did. Hopefully well, uh, I can help you out. But for Spencer, he mainly hopes that his deeds inspire people. It's hard to describe the feeling without just telling you to go out and do it yourself to see how it feels. You heard him, guys. Everyone should try it. And then, if my math is right, eventually we would all get free lawn care. Right, guys? If everyone just did it? I think so. We don't have that problem here in New York City, though. <laughs> no. Not a lot of lawns. A lot lawns. of cement. <laughs> That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. It's Thursday, December 21st. Could getting kicked off a ballot be a winning issue? We start here. The Republican Party unites around Donald Trump, including his rivals. They're saying they want to beat him at the ballot box. What a Colorado calamity has done to the race. The U.S. strikes a deal with a regional pariah. The Biden administration sort of slowly and quietly has reshaped U.S. policy towards Venezuela. We'll break down a controversial prisoner exchange. And the leader of China apparently told President Biden he's taking back Taiwan. He would sit across from President Biden and say it right to his face. But does that mean China is ready to invade? From ABC News, this is Start Here. I'm Brad Milkey. In a presidential race, when you talk about ballot access, that phrase usually means a candidate's ability to mount a national campaign. Like, do they have enough resources to meet all the filing deadlines in all 50 states? Do they have support from the state party and donors and organization? Well, in the case of former President Donald Trump, the answer to all these questions is undoubtedly yes. He's got the support, the money, and the backing. And yet at the moment, if the election were held tomorrow, Trump would be on the ballot in 49 states max because when Colorado State Supreme Court found he engaged in an insurrection in violation of the 14th Amendment, they kicked him off the ballot and ignited a firestorm of controversy. Well, in the last 24 hours, all eyes are now turning to Trump's fellow Republicans, asking, what are the rest of you going to do about it? ABC's political director Rick Klein joins us this morning. Rick, can you just describe kind of the reverberations in the political world here? 
Yeah, Brad, nobody saw this coming. Uh, all the other states that have looked at this, six and counting, uh, judges had rejected this. The lower court in Colorado had also rejected it. And, and I think for the, most people in the political world, they just thought, okay, this was an, an interesting and a very important question, but it was kind of settled. We weren't going to use this Reconstruction era constitutional amendment to keep Trump off the ballot. There were attempts. They failed. That all got upended by the surprise decision in Colorado, and that has now reverberated across the campaign trail. You saw it all. Now, whether the 14th Amendment applies, I'll let the court make that decision. But he certainly supported an insurrection. There's legitimate questions being asked of Joe Biden and of, of Donald Trump's Republican rivals. Do you think this is a good thing? Is this the right thing? Clearly, if he's not on the ballot, it makes it easier to win delegates in Colorado and maybe elsewhere. A presidential candidate running who's not been convicted of anything. That's a dangerous precedent. Most Republicans are just not convinced that this was sound law and that this is an appropriate ruling from Colorado. In Colorado, the first question also is probably like, are you going to run against him? Is this a fair fight? What are the options, though, like specific to Colorado now? What are the options that we could see? Yeah, I mean, first of all, Colorado's a Super Tuesday state. It's probably not going to matter all that much uh, unless this is a really a protracted fight. But suddenly it's going to be really interesting. This is a hollowed out husk of what the country was built on. The basic principle that we, the people, select our leadership. Vivek Ramaswamy has said, look, if Trump isn't on the ballot, I'm not either. And he's challenging his rivals to pull their own names from the primary ballot. Or else these Republicans are simply complicit in this unconstitutional attack on the way we conduct our constitutional republic. Meanwhile, the Colorado Republican Party is saying, you know what, if you're not going to let Trump's name be on the ballot in the primary, we're not going to have a primary at all. We're going to switch to a caucus, which mm. actually is run by the state party, not a state official, in which case the state Supreme Court can't say who is or isn't on the ballot. Ah. I talked to a Republican National Committee official who said, yeah, we're happy to let them do that in all likelihood. They just have to appeal and, and petition for that process to happen. So it's very possible that even if this ruling were to hold, not get taken up by, by the Supreme Court, Donald Trump could still get Colorado's delegates if if the, if the Republican Party changes the system. But it, to say it creates some chaos is kind of the, the, the least of it. This will rally Republican primary voters around Donald Trump. It makes Democrats look like they're going after Donald Trump. This upends the politics in Colorado, obviously puts pressure on the other candidates uh, to respond somehow. Uh, but it, it puts a big question mark right in the middle of the, the primary voting calendar. Yeah, and can I ask you about the other candidates? Because what I find strange here is I could imagine one of these Republican rivals saying, yeah, he's not on the ballot because he betrayed our trust. This is on him. It's not on me. It's not on the courts. He doesn't deserve to be there. That's why you should vote for me. But that's not what they're doing, right? Like You mentioned Vivek Ramaswamy. Like Ron DeSantis said they're trying to make it easier for Joe Biden next November. I'm sorry. Doesn't DeSantis think he'll be running against Joe Biden? Like this seems like people are sidelining themselves in favor of Donald Trump. It's a great point, and in some ways it's not surprising to have Ramaswamy, who's very closely aligned with Trump, to, to say that. But Ron DeSantis, um, that's another story. Uh, I think that that is not the way uh, the, the law is intended to be enforced. He's uh, trying to find a lane to, to take over as the heir apparent in the Republican Party. Nikki Haley is relishing the fact that Donald Trump's allies are attacking her on the campaign trail. Even Chris Christie, who of course has not been shy in criticizing Trump for his conduct on and around January 6th, he says this is not appropriate. It's kind of left to Asa Hutchinson, who yes, is still in the race, to, to be out there saying this is the problem with nominating Donald Trump. You've got all of these legal issues, all of these questions that are swirling, and yeah, actual questions about whether he's qualified to be president. But the flip side of all of it, Brad, is that there's an element to what the Republicans are doing, his rivals are doing, that plays into the central argument of Donald Trump. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end... They're not after me. They're after you. I just Trump is out there saying they're just doing this to target me. They're just doing this to try to stop our movement. So I want to see this in the hands of the voters. We're going to win this the right way. We've got Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis and even Chris Christie who are kind of saying the same thing when they are mm. saying that this is not a legitimate ruling. Even though they know it would be better for them politically potentially not to have him on the ballot, they're saying they want to beat him at the ballot box. Hey, last question. Rick, so far all these challenges to Donald Trump's candidacy had like fallen by the wayside we thought a lot of that felt like it was because no one wanted like everyone seemed to be agreeing like yeah he I, we don't love what happened on january 6th but i don't want to be the person to say like this guy can't be on the ballot that doesn't like i don't i don't feel right with that could this decision now embolden other state officials or other judges 
Yeah, Brad, I think Colorado broke a, a kind of a seal that had been on uh, a lot of people's lips around this. Uh, we're expecting a ruling out of the state of Maine, which is a state that Donald Trump actually carried an electoral vote from Maine in 2020. Uh, but before the end of this week to decide a similar question, whether he's eligible to be on the ballot, the Democratic lieutenant governor of California it, it has now publicly called on officials in that state to decide in light of this Colorado ruling whether Trump should be on the, the primary ballot in California, which gets more delegates to the National Convention than anyone because it's the most populous state in the country. And there have been kind of lower level challenges in a whole flurry of states, probably more than half the states that just haven't made their way through the legal process. And talking to people that are involved in it and the, the people that were involved in this suit, particularly in Colorado, they are eager to see it taken up in more jurisdictions. So you could see kind of more chaos before it gets settled. Yeah, and almost to that point, I mean, Trump is appealing this verdict to the Supreme Court and also, at the same time, fundraising off of it. Some liberal groups have cautioned members not to gloat too much because this could all, A, definitely be overturned, and in the meantime, B, it's really firing up Trump's base even more. Uh, Rick Klein, our political director, thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. Next time on Start Here, why did President Biden make a deal with a nemesis? That's after the break. So much at stake, so much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crips, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crips 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. So if you don't pay attention to South American politics that much, the last time you might have thought about Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela might have been during this. Maduro meeting with military troops, rejecting an international ultimatum to call for new elections within eight days. In 2018, Maduro appeared to rig an election to keep himself in power. The leader of the National Assembly there, a guy named Juan Guaido, was recognized by many countries, including the U.S., as the country's rightful leader. But Maduro, and perhaps more importantly, his military, refused to hand over the keys and Guaido eventually fled the country. You remember all this? Well, since then, Maduro has remained and our relationship with him has only gotten more precarious. In fact, several U.S. nationals have been imprisoned there in recent years. Well, yesterday, the U.S. announced they had struck a deal with Nicolas Maduro to get them back. Ten Americans now coming home, including six, considered wrongfully detained. But one man also now on his way back wanted by the U.S. ABC's Connor Finnegan is based in Mexico City where he covers Latin America. Connor, what is this deal? Hey, Brad, yeah, this is another deal that the Biden administration has hammered out to try to secure the release of American citizens held by an adversary. But it's perhaps the most controversial yet. And, and as you said, the most interesting, the most important for how it could reshape U.S.-Venezuelan relations. After months of secret talks between the U.S. and Venezuela, facilitated by the Middle Eastern country Qatar, President Biden signed off on this deal after consulting with his senior aides. They decided that it was a difficult decision to make, but in their words, the right decision. We have no higher priority than the release of detained and or hostages, Americans being held hostage. In addition to that, Venezuela thus far is keeping their commitment toward the democratic election. 
What unfolded yesterday had U.S. officials tense because for hours they didn't know if those Americans were going to be released until they were up in the air and on their way home. In total, the Venezuelan government has released 10 U.S. citizens, six of whom the State Department classifies as wrongfully detained, meaning that U.S. officials have been putting the full force of the U.S. government into trying to bring them home. This has been a priority for us broadly. It's also been a priority when it comes to Venezuela. They haven't released the names of all 10, but among them are Evan Hernandez, a public defender from Los Angeles, Savoy Wright, a California businessman, Jarrell Kenamore, a software engineer from Texas who had been living in Colombia, and Joseph Cristela. Three of the four of them were detained near the border between Colombia and Venezuela, and in some cases perhaps held by armed groups affiliated with the government before they were transferred to government custody. Really interestingly here, though, is, is another component. The Maduro government has also released Leonard Francis, a.k.a. Fat Leonard. He's a notorious defense contractor who is the mastermind behind the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history, a $35 million scheme where he used prostitutes, luxury travel, even suitcases of cash to bribe Navy officials and steer contracts to his companies. He's now back in U.S. custody after escaping one year ago and fleeing to Venezuela. Wait, wait, that's who we want to get back connor like not 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 to be indelicate but why why is that why is that the person to make a deal for yeah it's a crazy story but he's one of the most notorious fugitives from u.s justice and and um you know this scandal helped to bring down dozens of navy officials so it's really important to the u.s mm -hmm. criminal justice system that he's back in custody importantly maduro's government has also agreed to release 20 venezuelan political prisoners they're releasing one opposition figure uh, critical to the opposition's primaries earlier this year, and they're dropping charges against three others. Okay, so so that's who Venezuela is giving up, effectively, right? Who are we giving up, then, from the U.S. side? Yeah, that seems like a lot to give, right? But but in exchange, the Maduro government is getting perhaps, like, their biggest fish. Free Alex Free Alex a Colombian Free businessman Alex named Alex Saab, who's been awaiting trial in the U.S. on money laundering charges. He's been called a bag man for Maduro because he essentially was moving money around the globe trying to enrich the regime for years, even as the vast majority of Venezuelans have been starving. He was extradited from Cape Verde several years ago to the U.S. to face those charges, although he was still awaiting trial at the time of his release. They took him without letting his lawyers or family know or anyone else know. This was truly a kidnapping of a diplomat by the United States government. He is already back in Venezuela. He was greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters and escorted all the way to the presidential palace. I think that gives you an indication of just how important he is to Maduro. You know, this almost reminds me of when the U.S. was doing this exchange with, with Russia and we exchanged Victor Boot, like this very well-known arms salesman, like very, he was considered dangerous for a long time. How dangerous is Alex Saab considered, I guess? I think that image alone tells you everything you need to know about him. The fact that he was in the presidential palace within hours of arriving back in Caracas, tells you how close he and Maduro are. He is important because he's able to move money around the globe for the regime in order to continue to prop them up amid those protests that we've seen, the challenges, the, the sanctions from the U.S. and other countries. It's critical that, that Maduro has men like Saab at his side to continue to bring money in to simply survive. Wow, okay, so then this is like, a, 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 this blockbuster deal happens then, Connor, but what does this say at this point then about the U.S. relationship with Venezuela, because like obviously we're back to recognizing Maduro is very much in charge of this country if we're doing these sorts of deals with him. Yeah, I think, Brett, it's really interesting how the Biden administration sort of slowly and quietly has reshaped U.S. policy towards Venezuela. Remember, this country has been in crisis for years now. <laughs> Economic crisis, humanitarian crisis, political crisis, and those crises all together have created the largest refugee crisis in the world. More. Venezuelans have fled their country than Ukrainians, than Syrians in totality. And, and that's really destabilized the, the hemisphere. Brazil is uh, hosting more than 180,000 Venezuelans who have fled economic collapse and tyranny. We start noticing the majority of that uptake is related to Venezuelan nationals. As a county, we are not resourced to handle this many people, you know, coming in. From, from Canada all the way down to Argentina and Chile, countries are struggling with this Venezuelan refugee crisis, including in the U.S. And that's played out in other ways as well. In October, the U.S. rolled back temporarily, they say, 
some of the most important sanctions against Venezuela on their oil and gold sectors, among others. And so with the challenges at the border, with the, with the Venezuelan refugee crisis, the Biden administration increasingly needs to cooperate with Nicolas Maduro's government. And you've kind of seen that in how these talks behind this, this prisoner exchange played out as well. As part of the deal, you know, Maduro agreed to release those 20 Venezuelan political prisoners, but that was something that they were supposed to have done two months ago when they reached a deal with the opposition and the U.S. rolled back those sanctions. The fact that they're doing so now, only after the U.S. has released Saab, to some critics says that, you know, Maduro is moving the goalposts here and Biden is simply meeting him wherever he tells him to, instead of standing up to the Maduro regime and, and putting their foot down. Well, yeah, and part of that deal that you're mentioning, Maduro had said he would have free and fair elections in his country. But in his country at this moment, there is still a ban on political opponents running against him. So that's how far these conversations have gotten. All right, Connor Finnegan, thank you so much. Thanks, Brad. Now, I should say there was another major piece of foreign policy news yesterday when word got out that in a private conversation, President Xi Jinping of China told President Biden that China will reunify the island of Taiwan. It's not quite the same as saying, hey, heads up, we're going to invade them at some point soon, but it's in the ballpark. ABC's Shannon Crawford covers the State Department. Shannon, it's not like this happened overnight, right? We're just like learning it happened a while back. Can you describe this? That's right, Brad. Let me take you back in time. It's the middle of November. It's a beautiful vehicle. China's president and the U.S. president, they're meeting face to face for the first time in over a year in the San Francisco area on the sidelines of an important economic conference. Mr. President, we know each other for a long time. We haven't always agreed, which was not surprised anyone. But our meetings have always been candid, straightforward and useful. I've never doubted what you've told me in terms of your candid nature in which you speak. Now, the purpose here for their engagement is to ratchet down tensions between the U.S. and China. President Biden and I agreed to promote dialogue and cooperation in the spirit of mutual respect. But we're learning now from American officials that during their conversation, President Xi brought up his intention to reunify Taiwan and mainland China. That's not something different uh, or new. Right after the news broke, reporters pressed White House spokesperson John Kirby about this aboard Air Force One, and he said the Biden administration has been clear. They don't support independence for Taiwan, but they also don't want to see a change in the status quo. We still adhere to the one China policy. We don't support independence for Taiwan. We also don't support a, a change in the status quo unilaterally, and certainly not one by force. And as the president has said, there's no reason for this to come to blows. So really, what's shocking here is not that China's President Xi wants to invade Taiwan, wants to take it over perhaps, but that he would sit across from President Biden and say it right to his face. Well, and for like a non-foreign policy wonk, when they say reunify, what does that mean? Is that predicting a military invasion or what? What? what is that? Well, it's unclear if he intends to invade Taiwan to take the Democratic Island by force, or if he wants to seek a more peaceful route. But if actions speak louder than words, and we're looking at China's actions in recent months, it's been steadily ramping up pressure on Taiwan through its military by air and by sea, and even having some really close calls with U.S. military assets in the region in the process of doing that. I was going to say, where does this put the Biden administration at the end of the day? Because, like, do you basically have to tell China, okay, if you're getting ready to reunify, whatever that means, then we're going to get ready with our forces to defend them. Like, what, what do you, how does the Biden administration have to react now? President Biden has already come out multiple times and set a strong red line on China's actions toward Taiwan. We maintain the agreement that there is a one China policy and that uh, and I'm not going to uh, change that. He said that if there's military intervention, if China seeks to take the island by force, the U.S. will intervene with the American military. The U.S. should not bet against China or interfere in China's internal affairs. It should instead welcome a peaceful, stable, and prosperous China. But Chinese officials have made their own stance clear. They're not going to be told what to do, and they're not going to be threatened. Yeah, what would it even look like at this point, Shannon? Like, do we have a sense of, like, we're coming up into a new year? Is, the, is this the year of the invasion coming up? What do we think? Well, there's been a range of estimates. Some predict it might be right around the corner, 2025. And some say it might happen all the way in 2050. And it's not clear that President Xi has formulated his own strategy on, on how to proceed. 
But President Xi has made it clear he wants to see Taiwan under the Chinese government's control, and he's not going to stop until he sees that happen. Yeah, and it's almost counterintuitive to hear American officials say, like, we're not looking for this group's independence. But here, that's pretty much what the White House is saying. We'd rather have the status quo, which is officially Taiwan's part of China, but in practice, they're very much just a democracy on an island nearby. We'll see what happens, though, in the near future. Uh, Shannon Crawford, thank you. Thank you, Brad. All right, one more quick break. When we come back, if you keep raising the price of cereal, eventually your customers will say cheerio. One last thing is next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is what would you do? Let's go. How are you? Thank you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. <laughs> Reporting from the aftermath of the Maui fires, I'm Melissa Adan. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And one last thing. Kids might be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but their parents aren't crazy. In the last couple years, you don't need me to tell you, groceries have grown more and more expensive. The soaring costs are unavoidable. What you used to get, no problem. Now you have to say, okay, maybe I'll get it next month. Every month, it seemed to be something different, in part because there were so many factors. When everyone was sitting in their homes baking for themselves, there were runs on yeast and butter. When poultry factories were overwhelmed, it was chicken and eggs. And when Ukraine went to war, wheat prices went up. And now, even with inflation slowing in lots of areas, we are still paying more for food. In fact, this has been a point of pride to some of these companies. In shareholder meetings back in 2021, when describing rising costs, the CFO of Kroger Grocery Store said, quote, Generally, we've been very comfortable with our ability to pass on the increases that we've seen at this point. To pass on the increases that we've seen. He's talking about hiking prices for consumers. Procter & Gamble said it had also raised prices. And we have not seen any material reaction from consumers in terms of um, volume offtake. And mind you, this wasn't just to keep up with inflation, these companies' profits soared. In June of last year, with inflation around 9%, General Mills came out and said it had just doubled its profits from the quarter before. The reason? Well, several price hikes. Yesterday, though, the CEO of General Mills admitted they might have overshot a little. In an earnings call, Jeff Harmoning announced weaker-than-expected sales last quarter. We are seeing consumers continue to display stronger-than-anticipated value-seeking behaviors across our key markets. Did you hear that? Stronger-than-anticipated value-seeking behaviors. That means shoppers are done with the price hikes. They're off looking for deals somewhere else. Harmoning said something else illuminating. He said, usually in times of high prices, consumers will stop going to restaurants, they'll cook at home more. This time, despite menu prices and tips going up, people are not buying more groceries. Have we reached our limit? 
General Mills stock ended up dropping almost 4% yesterday as this news came out. And with other companies also saying demand is slowing, they're not the only company checksing themselves. Cereal prices are no joke, which you know if you've got kids or you know because you're like me and you have the palate of a fourth grader. Sometimes you just want some cinnamon toast crunch for dessert, you know? Anyway, enjoy the longest night of the year. That's right, it's solstice time. More on all these stories at abcnews.com or the ABC News app. I'm Brad Milkey. See you tomorrow. is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the auto workers picket lines in Michigan, I'm Faith Abube. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Hi, I'm Diane Macedo. Today on ABC News Live First, the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What you need to know as you head out for Christmas. The major storm slamming the West Coast is already breaking records with rain and threats of mudslides. Ginger Z is tracking it all for us, plus your holiday forecast. The crisis at the border. Texas is now flying migrants to Chicago as officials say they're overwhelmed by a record number of people crossing the border. Now the new concerns for the economy. Plus, new images of the volcano in Iceland, why scientists are now warning about potential new cracks and more toxic gas. And we are counting down to Christmas. Will Gans is here to help us with some last-minute decorating hacks just in time for the holiday weekend. We begin with the holiday travel exodus. With just four days until Christmas, millions of Americans are trying to get an early start on what's expected to be the busiest travel season ever. ABC News transportation correspondent Gio Benitez has the latest from the tarmac in Houston. The record-breaking holiday travel rush soaring to new heights as the FAA's busiest day in the skies gets underway. Nearly 49,000 planes expected in the air today as passengers make a mad dash home for Christmas. It's like herding cats. Airports packed from Chicago to Seattle to Charlotte. This is ridiculous. Hard to get here. As far as cancellations and delays, largely smooth sailing, with just a few disruptions. At LaGuardia Airport on Wednesday, the TSA says it removed 17 bullets hidden inside a diaper in one traveler's carry-on bag. While at Reagan National outside Washington, agents stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And an unattended bag leading to brief delays at Charlotte's Douglas International. I could miss my flight. Everybody here can miss their flights. Outrageous. Major airlines say most passengers will fly today through Saturday. Delta says it will transport nearly 9 million passengers over the holiday. 
American expecting more than 12 million. And United Airlines saying this Christmas season will be its busiest on record, transporting around 9 million passengers over the holiday with nearly 4,000 flights each day. Those planes are going to be full, the airports are going to be full. I'm not going to like sugarcoat that. What our focus is, is making sure that we get those planes out on time and get those planes to their destination on time with their bags. All right, ABC News transportation correspondent Gio Benitez in Houston, thank you. And a powerful storm is slamming the West Coast, threatening to disrupt holiday travel. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow, flash flooding, and mudslides. ABC News chief national correspondent Matt Gutman joins us now from Oxnard, California. Matt, what's it like there right now? It's rainy. Uh, it's been coming down for about 12 hours now, Diane. Um, Really over the past 48 hours, six inches of rain in Northern California. Uh, this part of Southern California got pummeled a few hours ago. It was actually driving from LA to Santa Barbara uh, through this flooding rain that happened. Uh, we were getting all these uh, alerts on our phone, extremely hazardous flooding, National Weather Service warning that this is a uh, life-threatening situation. Um, and this whole intersection about an hour ago was underwater. I think you can see the cones, if Lenny can show over there. Uh, that's how far back it went. Also, on the other end, trash cans like this were brought in from neighborhoods uh, that we don't know where they are, but they're hundreds of yards away. This trash can uh, is recycling from somewhere. Uh, there are a couple of others down the road over there. Um, this is the kind of weather that LA, that California and Southern California in particular um, have grown accustomed, accustomed to over the past year and a half. These El Ninos bring very powerful uh, atmospheric rivers, bring a tremendous amount of moisture to Southern California and Northern California as well. Uh, remember there's that Lake Lake Tulare that had essentially disappeared for over a century and then reappeared after the atmospheric rivers last year. This one happening a little earlier than the ones last year, which is raising concern for flooding, for mudslides, and other very dangerous, dangerous weather. Um, the bulk of this rainstorm is supposed to hit in the next couple of hours, so it's supposed to get worse. Again, additional flooding watches. There is even a tornado warning earlier this morning, but right now, uh, nobody has been hurt, uh, despite the fact that there have been a number of high water rescues here in Southern California, Diane. All right, Matt Gutman in Oxford, California. Stay dry, Matt. Thank you. And this powerful storm is expected to hammer parts of the West Coast for the next 24 to 48 hours before it threatens other areas. ABC News Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z is tracking the holiday forecast. Let's go ahead and start with that forecast. And the western storm that's already been drenching parts of Southern California, Oxnard, had about a month's worth of rain and 40 minutes earlier this morning. So that elevated risk now includes Redondo, Santa Monica, but it will extend through the deserts and into Arizona, Phoenix, and Tucson tomorrow. So the heavy rain's going to come in those bands, and that's why when they do set up, you could end up seeing mudslides or landslides, certainly flash flooding. We're going to take that same storm right on through the desert by Friday, Friday night, and then it will join up with some other energy as it mixes through, you could wake up with some thunderstorms. Dallas up to, say, Kansas City on Christmas Eve. That warm front is bringing with it record warmth possible going into Christmas uh, from Iowa up through uh, South Dakota. But no, no real surprise that we're going to be warm and wet because we're on track for the warmest year on record for all of those cities that you see highlighted. Top five warmest years on record includes much more of the Great Lakes. And currently, in the 20 years of snow cover that we have been watching, this is the lowest to date just over 14%. Diane? All right, ABC News Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z, thank you. And Texas is now flying migrants from the southern border to Chicago. Authorities say they're overwhelmed by the record numbers of people entering the country. Now, after Chicago cracked down on buses dropping off migrants, Texas Governor Greg Abbott flew over 100 migrants to O'Hare Airport, implying more flights will be incoming. ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kuturski has the latest. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission. Adding, until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. 
a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. There are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now also there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, Diane, of $200 million per day. Diane. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. And 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil after being released in a high-stakes prisoner swap with Venezuela. As part of the deal, the Biden administration agreed to exchange Venezuelan Alex Saab, who's a close ally of Venezuela's president. Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. 10 Americans jailed in Venezuela, back on American soil. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. The safe return home comes after months of secret negotiations. 38-year-old freed American businessman Savoy Wright describing the moment he called his family. I just FaceTimed them and I said, I'm, I'm on the way home, back to the U.S., and I love you, and we cried. Wright, one of six of the 10 Americans considered wrongfully detained, including Avon Hernandez, a Los Angeles public defender who was taken into custody last year near the border, accused of being a spy. All you think about when you're in prison is how you didn't appreciate being free. Hernandez thanking President Biden for what he calls a difficult decision. He got us home, and we're with our families, and so we're incredibly grateful, all of us. Also returned to the U.S., fugitive Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, the mastermind of a $35 million bribery scheme, the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to using prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers to steer lucrative contracts to his companies. Here is Francis on an investigative podcast produced by Project Brazen in 2021. Everybody was in my pocket. I had them in my palm. I was just rolling them around. <laughs> and then I could just move the carriers like, you know, uh, paper ships in the, in the water. In exchange, the U.S. granting clemency to Alex Saab, a top ally of Venezuelan's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. Saab greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters, Gracias al pueblo de Venezuela. saying, I thank the people of Venezuela. I'm proud to serve the people of Venezuela and to serve this government. Saab was arrested in 2020 on money laundering charges. Saab was later welcomed at the presidential palace there. This all comes as the Biden administration is trying to improve relations with Venezuela in hopes the country moves towards free and fair elections. Diane? Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz, thank you. And the White House says serious negotiations are underway for another temporary ceasefire and the release of more hostages in Gaza. This comes as Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry reports the death toll has now surpassed 20,000. Foreign correspondent Britt Clement has the latest from Stewart, Israel. My God, did you hear that? Yes, yes, we did. Oh, my God. Civilians and journalists caught in an Israeli airstrike. And as the war nears its 12th week, a grim milestone in Gaza, 20,000 killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. We are just collateral damage. Arwa Naif is a mother of two, forced to evacuate five times already since the start of the war. There is no one single place where you can say, here, it's a secure place where I can sleep the night. It is worse every day. 
It's getting worse every day. But the war unlikely to end soon in Beirut. A senior Hamas leader saying there's no hostage deal without a ceasefire. One of those released hostages returning to his home on Kibbutz Beri Wednesday, recalling his nightmare. The last thing I remember is being carried away and the while my girlfriend say I love you. House by house, charred out. Painful reminders of the horrors committed that day as pressure intensifies on the government to bring the rest of the hostages home. Well, the White House says that serious negotiations are underway, but Hamas telling us that the latest round of talks in Egypt ended without results. Diane? Foreign correspondent Britt Clenet in Israel, thank you. And scientists in Iceland are warning of a new danger after a major volcano eruption. They say new vents could open up and release more toxic gas. And they warn while volcano activity is slowing down, the eruption could re-intensify. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore is in Iceland with the latest. Hi, Marcus. Hey, Diane, we have been watching this eruption happen in the distance behind us here all along the uh, Reykjanes Peninsula, just outside Reykjavik. And the, the activity that we have seen has been along this two and a half mile fissure that opened up on Monday night. And today, uh, there are two vents that remain where that magma and the gases and steam have been rising up. As long as this eruption is happening, there is concern that uh, toxic gases could spread across the region. It's the reason why officials have been, have been paying very close attention to the winds and the weather uh, and, and measuring the air quality. But so far, the winds have been taking the gases uh, towards the sea. And uh, one of the other uh, issues that they were most concerned about was the potential for lava from this eruption uh, to perhaps reach the town of Grindavik, which, as you know, is a town of 4,000 people that was evacuated several weeks ago. Uh, after a, a series, an outbreak of earthquakes, um, the lava has not reached that town, but it, of course, is still evacuated as long as this eruption is happening. Uh, the, the big question is how long will this last? And nobody really knows. Despite all of the data and information they're able to gather in real time, there's still a big question of, of how long this will go, and it's a difficult a question to answer. Some of these eruptions go on for as long as six months. Um, in the meantime, uh, you have 4,000 people who have been displaced uh, from their homes, hoping to get back a a at some point. Uh, but at this point, um, it's anyone's guess on, on when that will happen. And Diane, just one other note, uh, an official with the meteorological office told me that they're most worried about those, those toxic gases, but also the potential for this eruption uh, to re-intensify, which could happen at any time. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore in Iceland. Stay safe, Marcus. Thank you. Meanwhile, Toyota is recalling a million vehicles worldwide over a potential airbag sensor issue. The automaker says a defect could cause airbags not to deploy, increasing the risk of injury. ABC's Morgan Norwood has what you need to know. Toyota is recalling one million cars and SUVs in the U.S. due to a possible defect that could cause the passenger side airbag not to deploy in a crash. That recall involves 15 different 2020 and 2021 Toyota and Lexus models, including the Toyota Camry, RAV4 and Sienna, as well as Lexus RX350 and ES350. Now, Toyota says a short circuit in the vehicle's occupant classification systems could prevent those passenger side airbags from deploying properly, then driving up the the risk of injury during a crash. So here's what you need to know. If your car is being recalled, Toyota says they'll notify you sometime in February. The dealers will then examine the recalled vehicles to see if your sensors need to be replaced. And if so, they're free. Diane? ABC's Morgan Norwood, thank you. Coming up, the family of a nine-year-old kidnapped on a camping trip is speaking out. What they're saying exclusively to ABC News about the moment they found out she was found alive. Also ahead, holiday travel hacks. Dr. Patel is here with what you need to know before heading to the airport with your kids. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah! 
with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. Oh so what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. The family of a girl abducted on a camping trip and found days later are now sharing their story for the first time. In an ABC News exclusive, her aunt is sharing how she vanished, the moment she learned her niece was alive, and the justice the family wants now. ABC's Ariel Reshef has more. You always say, like, this type of stuff doesn't happen to you, but obviously... It can happen to you. It was a case that gripped the country. A little girl abducted while camping in upstate New York last September. No. Now her aunt what speaking exclusively with ABC torture. News about the harrowing ordeal. Um, pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? ABC News is not naming or showing the nine-year-old and blurring her face at the family's request. Her aunt, Janae Senna, speaking for the girl's family, fiercely protective of her as she tries to regain a sense of normalcy. Honestly, it's been a roller coaster. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's trying to resume her, her normal life. During a family camping trip at Moreau Lake State Park, the little girl was riding her bike with other family members around this loop when she decided to do one more lap on her own and then vanished. Her sudden disappearance sparking a massive multi-agency manhunt. For two days, her family waiting in agony. Then a bizarre break in the case. Law enforcement says a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox while an officer was watching. Fingerprints leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr., who had been arrested for a DUI in 1999. Authorities tracking him down in a trailer behind his mother's home, 13 miles from the victim's house. Police say the 9-year-old was found alive in a cabinet. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees, screaming. Ross Jr. now charged with nine counts of kidnapping and assault. He's pleaded not guilty. Unfortunately, the world we live in, there are predators out there. And so justice will be not only him being safely away to not do this to anyone else, but also her having, you know, great a support system and tools and whatever she needs around her to move forward. What do you want people to know and take away from your family story? This isn't just a headline. This isn't just um, something to get clicks. This is a real person, a real child, a real family. Ariel Reshev, thank you. And Jean was adamant about the need for sensitivity and how these traumatizing cases are handled, both in the legal system and in the public eye, especially when involving children. The family will be spending Christmas together. Coming up, buyers are saying no to the skyrocketing cost of breakfast cereals. What it says about the economy. Also ahead, holiday decorating hacks. Our friend Will Gans is looking at the top trends on TikTok that you can use before Christmas.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. <laughs> Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. It's time to buy the right stuff. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. I'm Kana Whitworth at the Apex Summit in San Francisco. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Americans are showing they are fed up with the skyrocketing cost of cereal. One of the top cereal makers now says people are not buying as much of the breakfast staple. ABC News' Trevor Alt has the details. Trevor? You know, you've heard of kitchen table issues. Well, these are breakfast table issues. It actually does tell us a lot about the economy. So we're talking about General Mills here, the makers of Cheerios, Lucky Charms, Wheaties, a whole lot more than that. They say sales are down because prices went too far up. They released their quarterly results, and the CEO blamed, quote, stronger-than-anticipated value-seeking behaviors, which is very heavy corporate speak, for people wanted a deal and we weren't giving them one. So let's step back a few years here. The pandemic turned around what had actually been a steady slide in serious sales. Everybody, though, then was eating at home. So sales went up 5% in 2020. That didn't last, though. They fell 8.7% in 2021 and almost 4% in 2022. And over that time, with supply chain issues and inflation, General Mills was raising their prices, but they were raising them higher than the rate of inflation. In fact, too high for a lot of people. And then sales of cheaper store brands spiked 20%. So General Mills now has to figure this out. They predict they might not return to typical sales volume until at least next summer. All right, ABC's Trevor Alt, thank you. Coming up, the holiday travel rush is in full swing. The best times to hit the road and the skies if you're headed out of town. Also ahead, respiratory illnesses on the rise nationwide. What parents need to know to keep their kids safe while traveling. Plus, tap to pay transactions are growing in popularity. Our Becky Worley digs into whether they're safe to use.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> I you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. ABC News, America's number one news source. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. Thanks for streaming with us. You're looking at New York's Penn Station on this Thursday, and we have a lot of news to get to. Here's the rundown right now. Texas is now flying migrants out of the state. A plane chartered by Texas Governor Greg Abbott has landed in Chicago with more than 100 migrants on board. Abbott says until President Biden steps up to secure the border, Texas will continue to provide overwhelmed border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a bill into law this week authorizing local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. Toyota is recalling around a million vehicles due to a possible airbag sensor defect. The company says the issue could cause the passenger side airbag not to deploy in a crash. The recall involves 15 different 2020 and 2021 Toyota and Lexus models, including the Toyota Camry, RAV4, and Sienna, as well as the Lexus RX350 and ES350. Toyota says it will notify you in February if your car is on the list. And a UPS driver is being praised for one of the most dramatic package deliveries in recent memory. Ryan Long was carrying Christmas gifts in Mercer, Maine, and wasn't about to let this major flood stop him from completing his mission. A passerby says he spotted Long on the other side of a washed out and damaged road. He says instead of turning around, Long grabbed a small boat nearby, jumped in, and got those packages across intact. Now the waters have receded and the road is now scheduled to be repaired, so hopefully no more dramatic deliveries needed. Meanwhile, millions of Americans are heading out amid what's expected to be a record-breaking holiday travel season. Nearly 49,000 planes are expected today in the air alone. 
ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us now from Los Angeles International Airport with the latest. Jacqueline, what's it like there right now? It looks actually pretty calm behind you. Hey, Diane, good morning. You know what surprisingly it is? We weren't really sure what to expect when we got here, but as you can see, the security line, there's barely a line. Things are moving. People are starting to descend to TSA. And I got to say, when it came to the roads, it was absolutely pouring coming in. But as you had mentioned, today is expected to be the busiest travel day with nearly 49,000 flights. And LAX is considered, uh, according to Hopper, it is number four uh, in terms of what will be the busiest airport across the country for Christmas week travel, Diane. So what's the latest on delays and cancellations, Jacqueline? Miraculously, at the moment, it's not too bad. We have 54 delays here at LAX and seven cancellations. But as we look uh, for the week ahead, the several weeks ahead, you can't help but think about the Southwest meltdown that we had last year. Uh, Southwest just was given a $140 million fine by the DOT um, and is required to be giving passengers um, $75 in refunds if they're dealing with delays of three hours and longer. Southwest say uh, they are prepared for this holiday season, they have made several changes to their operations. For example, uh, not letting crews be dependent on other crews, so therefore flights will not be as delayed or canceled as last year. So we know a lot of passengers are praying and hoping that things will go smoothly over the next few days, Diane. Uh, Jacqueline, this is expected to be a record travel season. So any tips to help ensure your trip goes smoothly? You know, aside from praying to the airline gods, I mean, the best thing you can do is really be prepared and also know your rights. So for example, if you are delayed or canceled knowing you know who to call you want to call the customer service with the airline but airlines are also saying that they have updated their technology so for example united uh, to, to help prevent um, any massive hiccups when it comes to customer service because they have so many passengers coming in they say they've, they've worked on their app so then if you are delayed or you're canceled you can go right into it and hopefully reschedule and hopefully things can go smoothly from there diane all right jacqueline lee at lax jacqueline thank you and a powerful storm is expected to hammer parts of the West Coast for the next 24 to 48 hours before threatening other areas. So that could cause some travel hiccups as well. Meteorologist Ginger Z is tracking the holiday forecast for us. Let's go ahead and start with that forecast. And the western storm that's already been drenching parts of Southern California, Oxnard had about a month's worth of rain and 40 minutes earlier this morning. So that elevated risk now includes Redondo, Santa Monica, but it will extend through the deserts and into Arizona, Phoenix, and Tucson tomorrow. So the heavy rain's gonna come in those bands and that's why when they do set up, you could end up seeing mudslides or landslides, certainly flash flooding. We're gonna take that same storm right on through the desert by Friday, Friday night, and then it will join up with some other energy as it mixes through you could wake up with some thunderstorms Dallas up to say Kansas City on Christmas Eve that warm front is bringing with it record warmth possible going into Christmas uh, from Iowa up through uh, South Dakota but no no real surprise that we're gonna be warm and wet because we're on track for the warmest year on record for all of those cities that you see highlighted top five warmest years on record includes much more of the Great Lakes and currently in the 20 years of snow cover that we have been watching this is the lowest to date just over 14%. Diane? All right, meteorologist Ginger Z, thank you. And even if the weather plays nice, your kids might not. Traveling with little ones can be a big challenge, especially if they're sick. So let's bring in our ABC News medical contributor, physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Lok Patel, for some tips on how we can help ensure the kids cooperate, if that's even a thing. Um, so Dr. Patel, I know my kids have a knack for getting sick when we're traveling. It's like they catch something on the plane or maybe they catch something when we arrive. I don't know, but it happens almost every time. So what are your tips for keeping kids healthy and how to be prepared just in case? I feel this topic in my bones, Diane, because <laughs> we're all crammed in a metal tube flying across the country to different states. People are touching everything. There's less hydration on planes. If we're dehydrated, you're in a state where you're gonna get sick. One important thing for parents to do is prevent and plan. So think about, do you need any vaccinations where you're going for going to an exotic destination? Do you have all your medications available on your carry-on, not in your luggage? And prepare for the fact that you might be delayed by several hours. And then you want to think about the fact, as you mentioned, that a lot of people get sick around the actual flight or car ride when you're in a bus terminal or a train station or you're with other passengers. And when you're on the plane, make sure that you're wiping down everything. People often wipe down the tray table, but flight attendants will tell you those instruction cards, which my toddler daughter used to love to like chew what? on, are not always cleaned. 
and people touch them and the, and the seat pocket and the headrest and you see kids turn around and touch those all the time sometimes even nibble on them they're dirty so many things make sense now <laughs> um, adjusting kids to different time zones can also be a challenge any tips for keeping their sleep on track I think paying attention to the time zone you're going to, some parents swear by the fact that if you adjust your bedtime by about 30 minutes a few days before, that can also help. It's important to remember that sometimes flying eastbound can be harder for young kids because mm -hmm. the bedtime comes earlier than it normally would. And with young babies under the age of one, they've not, they haven't really established a routine bedtime yet, so you might get away with it. With older kids, you can kind of talk to them about it as well. And also, this is one indication to use melatonin in kids is to help with jet lag. Something tells me that you have some tips as well because you've been through this. I'm literally in the process of doing this right now because we are about to travel overseas and so I am shifting my kids right now. Working like a charm because they are going to bed earlier and they are waking up earlier. The downside is now when I get ready in the morning, I have a bustling house full of kids who would love for me to play with them instead of getting ready. But There's, there's a cheat code because their mom's a sleep <laughs> expert. But, um, but yeah, this is one of the few cases um, maybe the only case that I will use melatonin for the kids. Tiny doses, tiny doses. So really talk to your pediatrician about the dose um, and bright light in the morning. So when they wake up, you know, at 6 or, or 5 a.m. Follow the light. Our bodies are trained yeah, to do that. Yeah, trying to expose them to as much light as possible so their brain gets the memo, oh, it's daytime, time to wake up now. Um, what about on the flight itself? Any tips for getting kids to, you know, keep their sanity on those long flights? Well, I cannot stress the importance enough, again, of if your kids have any underlying medical conditions, to be prepared for anything that could go wrong on the plane. I will tell you right now, doctors always talk about in-flight emergencies. I've responded to three really? where someone had a seizure and did not have their rescue seizure medications. So this is a situation. So if your kids have asthma, allergies, be prepared. Also, with young kids, I often get asked about ear popping and those eustachian tubes yeah. when kids fly. So remember, kids have those tiny little tubes. They can get, the, the pressure can actually cause discomfort. So encourage young kids to yawn, blow something, suck on something, anything to keep those tubes open. Distraction and reassurance is key. And try to recreate the natural bedtime or the play space on the plane with toddlers. That seems to be the toughest age. We bring a white noise machine, toys, anything we can to keep a occupied toddler happy for six hours. I have these inflatables. They're, they don't fill the entire seat, but they're kind of, they're meant for the trade table for you to sleep this way, but they work great to fill that gap. And it kind of creates the whole area into a play space with no hole for them to fall totally. into. So that's, that's my little travel hack for you. And snacks, snacks, more and more snacks. snacks. And then your flight could be delayed and you need <laughs> even more snacks and diapers and a change of clothes and all of it. And no screen time rules. There are no screen time rules on the flight. Oh, there's the, the screens, screens and calorie rules don't, uh, don't count <laughs> on planes at all. Dr. Patel, great to have you. Thank you. And coming up, Dr. Patel will be back for some last minute holiday hacks with our friend Will Gans. Plus, how Apple is working to keep the peace in your group chat. Why green bubble shaming may become a thing of the past. Stay with us. So much at stake, so much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for best news program in all of television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. We have really good news. Congratulations, you're 
I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. The Catholic Church is entering a new era after Pope Francis approved priests to bless same-sex couples. The decision seems to be causing a split among U.S. Catholics, with some saying it's a landmark moment and others saying it violates church teachings. Let's bring in ABC's Brad Milkey, host of the Start Here podcast, for more on this. Brad, this decision is specific to same-sex unions, not same-sex marriages. How significant is this move and that distinction? Yeah, well, there's still a big difference between these things, right? So the eyes of, in the eyes of the church, a marriage is a vow, it's unbreakable, it's a forever relationship, and it's cemented in this sacrament that, that couples take together in the church, in a mass, with the priest. It's very, very official. A union is different. A union could almost be more akin to dating in the eyes of the church, even though the way that we're talking about this now, you might have a legally married gay couple. However, what the priest is allowed to do is bless them as a union. So all the time, Catholics will, Catholic couples will come up to the priest and say, hey, after mass, would you mind blessing our union? Would you mind, you know, asking God to watch over us together? So it's still a, a or maybe like a, you know, at a party, come by and bless us. So it's still a, you know, an inherent recognition of that romantic relationship. And that's what's so different here, is that for a long time, if you were a same-sex couple, a priest could not say, yeah, I bless this union. This is great that you guys are together. Now they can. So they're not taking you into the church. They're not, you know, performing a, a sacrament or anything, but they are basically allowed to go, oh, you're together? Fantastic. That in itself is a big difference. The other difference between marriage and unions is sex is implied in a marriage. It's not necessarily implied in the union, even though if people are legally married, I think everyone, including the priest, knows what's going on here. But there's almost a plausible deniability for the church to say, uh, the, married, the married couple, they're definitely having sex. The, the union, we're, we're not going to get into that. Okay. Now, the new approval, it doesn't require priests to offer blessings to all same-sex couples. So how does that part work, and is there concern that we could see a split in the Catholic Church into who will and won't do this? Well, this is what's really interesting, is almost in the text of the order here, it basically says priests can do this. It doesn't mention priests may ask their bishop for permission, it doesn't mean they have to sort of follow the rules of the rest of their diocese. It really just says this is up to priests. So when we talked to Father James Martin, who's also an ABC News contributor, he's a Jesuit priest, he said, I'm thrilled to do this, don't really need to ask permission from anyone, and so I'm just going to do this next couple that shows up. However, the U.S. Conference of Bishops, which is famously pretty critical of Pope Francis, came out with a pretty terse statement, basically saying, um, nothing, nothing's changed here, really. Nothing fundamentally has changed. But in Europe right now, you've got bishops and priests that are going off and almost creating a rite. It's not quite a sacrament, but like a very official-looking union process for couples. That almost goes beyond what this order is, is okaying mm -hmm. here. So there are priests looking to go much farther than this right now. And this is kind of this half measure. And frankly, some priests are like worried that there could be confusion. What are we allowed to do? What aren't we allowed to do? Who are we allowed to support here? Um, I also, before I let you go, I want to ask you about this big controversy in the world of text messaging and iMessaging. There's a patent dispute. The green bubbles and the blue bubbles and a lot of back and forth here. So can you break this down for us? Yeah, okay. So, Diane, if you have an Apple phone, right, an Apple device, you know that your text to other Apple users show up blue, yeah. right? And that is because Apple has this program called iMessage. It's proprietary, it's proprietary to Apple. Basically means you're allowed to, you know, send quick reactions and all these little things, send videos and photos very easily. Crucially, it's also more secure. It's more encrypted. And if you've ever been in a group chat with Apple users, but then an Android user joins in, 
Dun, ruins dun, everything. Dun. Ruins everything for <laughs> everyone. <laughs> and the reason for that is, it's not just that the Android user's text will show up green, that kind of highlights the distinction that we're talking about, but the difference is it all goes back to this much more basic system called SMS, like what you'd have on your Nokia back in the day. That text messaging, yeah. that is now what your whole group is doing because the Android user is, is out of this loop. Right. So what this company, what this Android company did, and Androids are, are very famous for being a little bit more experimental, very innovative. An Android app uh, came out with a way to almost disguise Android devices as Apple devices. In the, in the software, it almost shows up as an Apple device. So now not only are texts showing up blue, but they're all able to be encrypted. They're all able, like everything finally so worked. So you can like the text yes, you with can put a the heart instead of it up. saying so-and-so liked the text. That's right, and, and, and you can leave a group chat Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right? a good one. That's the other thing. Like, getting out of the group chats is very difficult when you're just in these SMS chains. So chains. how's Apple reacting to so this? So then Apple comes out and makes it harder. All of a sudden, all these users of this Android app are realizing, oh, this isn't working anymore. Oh, Apple no. comes out and admits, yeah, we changed our system so that this app will not work with our system because we don't want third-party apps messing around with our stuff. If they were able to reverse engineer this, Somebody else could reverse engineer a way to get into. This is unsecure all of a sudden, which some tech experts say is a legitimate worry that it's less secure. It's also a branding thing, though. For Apple, they know these blue text messages create peer pressure, they create scarcity, they create money. And that is one of the reasons that Apple has not given up these blue versus green debates anytime soon. All right, interesting. So, so far, the green bubble will live. We will. Follow this one, Be Brad. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and to hear Brad dive into more stories like these, check out the Start Here podcast. New episodes drop weekday mornings at 6 Eastern, wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up, last minute holiday hacks how you can make decorations with things you already have in your home. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> How cute. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crufts 2023, The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. <laughs> Reporting from the Federal District Courthouse in Washington, D.C., I'm Terry Moran. Wherever the news is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First Christmas is now just four days away, and many people are turning to TikTok for some hacks on how to deck the halls before the family gets into town. Well, Gans is here to put together some great last-minute decorating ideas and put them to the test. Take a look. It's not too late to unleash your inner elf this Christmas.
everybody turning to TikTok for some elf-like inspiration, where hashtag holiday hacks has racked up 3.1 billion views. Do you know the painter's tape hack? First up, turning microfiber feather dusters into mini Christmas trees. Step one, detach the duster from the handle and trim the fibers into a tree shape. I feel like I'm giving the Grinch a haircut. 6.30, dinner with me, I can't cancel that again. 6.30, dinner with me. I can't cancel that again. Now add fairy lights to your furry trees, but beware, they are nearly impossible to untangle. Just five minutes of this. Riveting television. Secure your mini Christmas trees into some floral styrofoam and boom, a tiny, twinkly, merry little masterpiece. Next up, the trendiest way to level up your living room, damage-free. No hooks, tacks, or tape needed. Oh my gosh, look how it turned out. All you need is a shower curtain rod, a.k.a. a tension rod and some garland. Some folks use zip ties to attach the garland to the rod, but these branches themselves can secure the strand in place just fine. Voila! Mistletoe is optional. And finally, a holiday hack for achieving that vintage holiday look with more energy-efficient lights, a knife, and ping-pong balls. And it just adds, like, another layer of dimension to your tree. It has a little equator on it. You're not going to puncture the equator. You're going to go in the North Pole or the South Pole. Slide the ball over a light and repeat until your strand is complete. All right, those are cute. And Will's joining me now for a holiday hack right here on set, along, on set, along with Dr. Patel. I'm already in. The Avengers have assembled. Because I see cheesecake. Listen, all-star team aligned. That's right. I don't know if America is ready. Okay, so we uh, have one more hack for you guys, and this is perfect if you're serving up dessert, I think especially at an office party where you don't want other people's fingers kind of getting in your slice of cake. So what you're going to do, you can see there, is you take a knife, you wrap it in parchment paper or wax paper, oh. and you slice like that. So that way, whenever you pull the cheesecake out, it's not sticking to the other slices of cheesecake, you know what I mean? I love so that. So it's like individual serving sizes and a, a very easy way to do that. Um, and because he has a PhD, I brought in my friend Dr. Patel here to pull off the holiday hack. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I approve with not having fingers all over other pieces yes, of t-shirt. Yes, the doctor, the doctor's in the house speaking. Yes. That was that actually looked kind of intimidating because she was doing it very quickly. She was. I think the video's a little bit sped up. Okay, so she was, she <laughs> but we don't, like. we don't have the special effects team here to speed you up, so you're gonna have to do it. All right, let's oh, see I'm it. I'm doing it. Let's you're see it, you're doing it. it. If it helps, the first slice she did was all the way across. I think we need big, to cut it, right? This yeah. is way, no, no, parchment paper. You cut it as it's happening. Oh, no, cut, the you need to cut the parchment paper, yeah, the parchment right? Paper I see what you're saying. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, there you go. I feel like I'm rushing, too. Little strippies. Are you a surgeon? I'm not a surgeon. <laughs> He's not a cheesecake surgeon. But here's the, thing, here's the thing: is putting stitches. I think on you a only kid's, need one piece. We don't need you to cut the whole. Putting cake. stitches on a kid's. I love face how nervous you are right can now. Can be easier than doing this, right? So here we go. This is way too big, but moment of truth. Just wait for the oh! perfectly cut Look cheesecake that, slice for you two. It's honestly quite good. Here, we'll just trim the top. Yeah, I trim can. the top. There you go. Teamwork. Perfect. Jingle bells, cheesecake slices are gonna be perfectly cut. Yes, they are. There you go. No one's fingers will please cut this parchment paper. <laughs> I got you, Dr. Patel. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hyperglycemia to, has never been so delicious. Are we gonna so get delicious. to eat this cheesecake? <laughs> All right, Dr. Patel's gonna keep cutting the cake while Will, you give us some tea, yeah, apparently. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to break down a little bit of tea for you. The tea is hot this morning and I'm gonna spill it. Okay, first up. I'm going to tell you about our first story, which is prompter roll up, I'm not off book. Uh, the greatest Hollywood duo coming to the big screen in the tradition of Lucy and Ethel, Rachel and Monica, and you could toss in a little bit of Ben Sard and Stabler. Hannah Waddingham and Octavia Spencer are teaming up for a brand new series about a trained assassin played by Hannah and her best friend, played by Octavia, who has no idea about the secret life of her assassin bestie until a hit goes wrong and the two must go on the run together. The series doesn't have a title, yet, but will come to Amazon Prime sometime soon. Fun! I like that team up. Isn't that and who would have thought to put them together? But whoever did, I love it. It's like us. Who would have thought to put us together, Dr. <laughs> Patel? But here we are. A genius. And all I gotta say is, How's this that is looking really, really along? good. Okay. You're impressed now. Love I am. it. Miss Macedo, 
from one duo to another. Barbie director Greta Gerwig and her writing partner Noah Baumbach have finally tied the knot. The couple have been together for 12 years. They share two sons together, and now they're ca capping off their big Barbie year by quietly getting married, not in Malibu or in a Mojo Dojo Casa house, but in a courthouse <laughs> right here in New York City. But it would have been so cool if it was in the Mojo Dojo Casa house. I would have loved it. He wears a fur coat. She wears a pink dress. I mean... A lot of beers in the mini fridge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Horses coming down the aisle. Speaking of horses, Ryan Gosling and Mark Ronson releasing a Christmas version of their hit, I'm Just Ken, from the Barbie movie. It's called I'm Just Ken, Merry Christmas, Barbie. Check it out. <laughs> uh, Gosling, who famously played Ken in the popular film, solidified his first ever Billboard Hot 100 with the movie version, which came out at number seven over 87 over the summer. Gosling's longtime love, Eva Mendes, shared some love for the holiday version of the now classic single, writing, Ken not wait for this. I'm just Ken. Merry Christmas, Barbie is streaming everywhere now. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to anything you were saying because I was too busy watching how focused Dr. Mattel I'm was sorry, let on me this in. cheesecake. The, the people Jingle need to bells, see. Ladies and gentlemen, <gasps> look at that. Wow. I see some perfectly. Cut I mean, cheesecake. that is that is impressive. You're All a right. man of many talents. Can we, Listen. can we eat it now? Yeah, let's pass it out. Can we let's see those perfect slices? Perfect non-germy slices. Come on and get a perfectly cut cheesecake slice, you too. <laughs> Pumpkin. Oh, okay. wow. After everything They're I did. They're perfectly sliced and I'm yeeting them around the Maybe studio. Maybe we should let the doctor serve the cheesecake The point cheesecake was for too. it to be a hygienically cut piece. Yeah. And now <laughs> you're just actually You know what? Table. I'm going to yeah. eat it anyway. Cheers. Here's a fork. All right. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. Pumpkin cheesecake to my two favorite oh, pumpkins. Oh, that's yummy. Oh. Thank you, friends. Cheers. cheers. Cheesecake cheers. Cheesecake cheers. Cheesecake cheers. And thank you at home for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context analysis. And cheesecake. And cheesecake. We'll be right back. We have really good news. <laughs> oh I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. Live, America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7 straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. 
I'm Lindsay Davis reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. I'm Diane Macedo. Today on ABC News Live First, the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What you need to know as you head out for Christmas. The major storm slamming the West Coast. It's already bringing record-breaking rain and threats of mudslides. Ginger Z is tracking it all for us, plus your holiday forecast. The crisis at the border. Texas is now flying migrants to Chicago as officials say they're overwhelmed by a record number of people crossing the border. Now the new concerns for the economy. And the new gift card scam warning. Exclusive images from the FBI show how criminals tamper with gift cards, making them worthless. How you can protect your money. We begin with the holiday travel exodus. With just four days until Christmas, millions of Americans are trying to get an early start to what's expected to be the busiest travel season ever. But today is expected to be one of the busiest days among them. ABC News transportation correspondent Gio Benitez has the latest from the tarmac in Houston. The record-breaking holiday travel rush soaring to new heights as the FAA's busiest day in the skies gets underway. Nearly 49,000 planes expected in the air today as passengers make a mad dash home for Christmas. It's like herding cats. Airports packed from Chicago to Seattle to Charlotte. This is ridiculous. Hard to get here. As far as cancellations and delays, largely smooth sailing, with just a few disruptions. At LaGuardia Airport on Wednesday, the TSA says it removed 17 bullets hidden inside a diaper in one traveler's carry-on bag. While at Reagan National outside Washington, agents stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And an unattended bag leading to brief delays at Charlotte's Douglas International. I can miss my flight. Everybody here can miss their flights. Outrageous. Major airlines say most passengers will fly today through Saturday. Delta says it will transport nearly 9 million passengers over the holiday. American expecting more than 12 million. And United Airlines saying this Christmas season will be its busiest on record, transporting around 9 million passengers over the holiday with nearly 4,000 flights each day. Those planes are going to be full. The airports are going to be full. I'm not going to like sugarcoat that. What our focus is is making sure that we get those planes out on time and get those planes to their destination on time with their bags. All right, Gio Benitez, thank you. And today is expected to be one of the busiest travel days with nearly 49,000 planes expected to take off. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us now from LAX with more on that. Uh, Jacqueline, things are looking like they're picking up a little bit, but it still seems like it's pretty calm over there. Yeah, that's right, Diane. I mean, it's only been 30 minutes since we last spoke, but you can already see more people starting to line up through the TSA line. Uh, the rain has tapered off for now, so that's good. Um, but for the most part, things are not super chaotic, even though today is expected to be the busiest travel day so far for this holiday season. But as you had mentioned earlier, we are expecting it to pick up a little bit later, Diane. Now, I know you just spoke to some officials from LAX. What advice are they giving to passengers? So the biggest piece of advice is you just want to be prepared and get ahead of things. So, for example, if you know your flight is leaving at a certain time, you want to get to the airport several hours in advance. You have to keep in mind you're going to be dealing with traffic. You're going to be dealing with lots of people who are going to be getting to the airport at the same time. So you don't want to be cutting it too close. So just get here early was the biggest piece of advice, Diane. All right, Jacqueline Lee at LAX Forest. Thank you. And a powerful storm is slamming the West Coast, threatening to disrupt all that holiday travel. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow, flash flooding, and mudslides. ABC News Chief National Correspondent Matt Gutman is in a very rainy Oxnard, California with more. Uh, it's been coming down for about 12 hours now, Diane. Um, really over the past 48 hours, six inches of rain in Northern California. Uh, this part of Southern California got pummeled a few hours ago. It was actually driving from LA to Santa Barbara uh, through this flooding rain that happened. And uh, we were getting all these uh, alerts on our phone, extremely hazardous flooding, National Weather Service warning that this is a uh, life-threatening situation. Um, and this whole intersection about an hour ago was underwater. I think you can see the cones of Lenny can show over there. Uh, that's how far back it went. Also on the other end, trash cans like this were brought in from neighborhoods uh, that we don't know where they are, but they're hundreds of yards away. This trash can uh, is recycling from somewhere. Uh, there are a couple of others down 
the road over there. Um, this is the kind of weather that L.A., that California and Southern California in particular um, have grown accustomed, accustomed to over the past year and a half. These El Ninos bring very powerful uh, atmospheric rivers, bring a tremendous amount of moisture to Southern California and Northern California as well. Uh, remember, there's that Lake Lake Tulare that had essentially disappeared for over a century and then reappeared after the atmospheric rivers last year. This one happening a little earlier than the ones last year, which is raising concern for flooding, for mudslides, and other very dangerous, dangerous weather. Um, the bulk of this rainstorm is supposed to hit in the next couple of hours, so it's supposed to get worse. Again, additional flooding watches. There is even a tornado warning earlier this morning, but right now, uh, nobody has been hurt, uh, despite the fact that there have been a number of high water rescues here in Southern California, Diane. All right, Matt Gutman in Oxnard, California, thank you. And Texas is now flying migrants from the southern border to Chicago. Authorities say they're overwhelmed by the record numbers of people entering the country. Now, after Chicago cracked down on buses dropping off migrants, Texas Governor Greg Abbott flew over 100 migrants to O'Hare Airport, implying more flights will be incoming. ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kaczerski has the latest. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally, a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. There are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now also, there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, Diane, of $200 million per day. Diane. All right. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. And 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil after being released in a high-stakes prisoner swap with Venezuela. As part of the deal, the Biden administration agreed to exchange Venezuelan Alex Saab, who's a close ally of Venezuela's president. Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. 10 Americans jailed in Venezuela, back on American soil. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. The safe return home comes after months of secret negotiations. 38-year-old freed American businessman Savoy Wright describing the moment he called his family. I just FaceTimed him and I said, I'm, I'm on the way home, back to the U.S., and I love you, and we cried. Wright, one of six of the 10 Americans considered wrongfully detained, including Avon Hernandez, a Los Angeles public defender who was taken into custody last year near the border, accused of being a spy. All you think about when you're in prison is how you didn't appreciate being free. Hernandez thanking President Biden for what he calls a difficult decision. He got us home and we're with our families and so we're incredibly grateful, all of us. Also returned to the U.S., fugitive Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, the mastermind of a $35 million bribery scheme, the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to using prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers to steer lucrative contracts to his companies. 
Here is Francis on an investigative podcast produced by Project Brazen in 2021. Everybody was in my pocket. I had them in my palm. I was just rolling them around. <laughs> and then I could just move the carriers like, you know, uh, paper ships in the, in the water. In exchange, the U.S. granting clemency to Alex Saab, a top ally of Venezuelan's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. Saab greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters, Gracias al pueblo de Venezuela. saying, I thank the people of Venezuela, I'm proud to serve the people of Venezuela and to serve this government. Saab was arrested in 2020 on money laundering charges. Saab was later welcomed at the presidential palace there. This all comes as the Biden administration is trying to improve relations with Venezuela in hopes the country moves towards free and fair elections. Diane? All right, Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz, thank you. And the White House says serious negotiations are underway for another temporary ceasefire and the release of more hostages in Gaza. This comes as Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry reports the death toll has now surpassed 20,000. Foreign correspondent Britt Clennett has the latest from Starot, Israel. Oh my God, did you hear that? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Civilians and journalists caught in an Israeli airstrike. And as the war nears its 12th week, a grim milestone in Gaza, 20,000 killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. We are just collateral damage. Arwa Naif is a mother of two, forced to evacuate five times already since the start of the war. There is no one single place where you can say, here, it's a secure place where I can sleep the night. It is worse every day. It's getting worse every day. But the war unlikely to end soon. In Beirut, a senior Hamas leader saying there's no hostage deal without a ceasefire. One of those released hostages returning to his home on Kibbutz Beri Wednesday, recalling his nightmare. The last thing I remember is being carried away and involved my girlfriend say I love you. House by house, charred out. Painful reminders of the horrors committed that day as pressure intensifies on the government to bring the rest of the hostages home. Well, the White House says that serious negotiations are underway, but Hamas telling us that the latest round of talks in Egypt ended without results. Diane? All right, foreign correspondent Britt Clenet in Israel, thank you. And scientists in Iceland are warning of a new danger after a major volcano eruption. They say new vents could open up and release more toxic gas. They also warn while volcanic activity is slowing down, there is potential the eruption could re-intensify. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore is in Iceland with the latest. Hi, Marcus. Hey, Diane, we have been watching this eruption happen in the distance behind us here all along the uh, Reykjanes Peninsula, just outside Reykjavik. And the, the activity that we have seen has been along this two and a half mile fissure that opened up on Monday night. And today, uh, there are two vents that remain where that magma and the gases and steam have been rising up. As long as this eruption is happening, there is concern that uh, toxic gases could spread across the region. It's the reason why officials have been, have been paying very close attention to the winds and the weather uh, and, and measuring the air quality. But so far, the winds have been taking the gases uh, towards the sea. And uh, one of the other uh, issues that they were most concerned about was the potential for lava from this eruption uh, to perhaps reach the town of Grindavik, which, as you know, is a town of 4,000 people that was evacuated several weeks ago. Uh, after a, a series, an outbreak of earthquakes, um, the lava has not reached that town, but it, of course, is still evacuated as long as this eruption is happening. Uh, the, the big question is how long will this last? And nobody really knows. Despite all of the data and information they're able to gather in real time, there's still a big question of, of how long this will go, and it's a difficult a question to answer. Some of these eruptions go on for as long as six months. Um, in the meantime, uh, you have 4,000 people who have been displaced uh, from their homes, hoping to get back at, at, at some point. Uh, but at this point, um, it's anyone's guess on, on when that will happen. And Diane, just one other note, uh, an official with the meteorological office told me that they're, they're most worried about those, those toxic gases, but also the potential for this eruption uh, to re-intensify, which could happen at any time. All right, foreign correspondent Marcus Moore in Iceland. Thanks, Marcus. Coming up, a new warning about gift card scams with exclusive images from the FBI showing you how to spot them.
whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war, after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is a place to sing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back. The FBI is issuing a new warning about gift card scams. The FTE says gift card fraud cost Americans more than $160 million in the first nine months of this year, and there's been a sharp spike in scams this holiday season. Now the FBI is showing us how scammers are compromising cards with a simple sticker. ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kaczerski is back with an exclusive look at how to tell if a card has been tampered with before you buy it. Exclusive images of a scam. The FBI showing GMA how criminals tamper with gift cards, shoplifting them from stores and placing a bogus security sticker over the real one. Scammers reseal the packaging. These images show the glue residue left behind and put them back into stores where unsuspecting customers fill these compromised cards with money that is sometimes instantly stolen. So we're seeing this scam across the United States. It's really picked up in the last few weeks and and, and we see generally a rise in, in scams of this type around the holidays. The latest method criminals are using to lift the money out of your pocket this holiday season. You have my $200, the crook has my gift. Suzanne Godovic fell victim when she says she gave a $200 Target gift card as a baby gift. When the new mom went to spend the money, it wasn't there. She was scratching out that silver metallic security lining at the store, at the cash register with all of her baby purchases, and it comes up zero balance. And also there was um, a note that said that this gift card had been assigned to another account. Gift card scams have been around for years, but the FBI says never at the volume they're seeing now. How would a consumer even know that the gift card they're buying actually has no value because it's been siphoned away by some criminal? So the consumer has to be really vigilant. The FBI says look to see if the packaging seems tampered with, if there's a sticker over the scratch-off material, buy gift cards kept behind a counter, and save the receipts, something Suzanne Godovic said kept her from losing money. It was a little while, but then finally I got an email from Target Gift Card Services, and they said that they'd be happy to replace my gift card. So yes, for me, I got the $200 back. Target said in a statement, we are aware of the prevalence of gift card tampering and take this issue very seriously. Now store teams regularly inspect cards for physical signs of tampering. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. And the FBI says individual consumers could lose the entire value of that compromised gift card. Victims can try getting their money back from retailers, but the FBI is also asking anyone affected to file a complaint at IC3.gov. 
And now it's time for our weekly segment, Ask Alexis, where business reporter Alexis Christophorus shares financial advice on topics that matter most to you. And today she's here to answer your questions on Social Security and buy now, pay later options. So Alexis, let's start with Michael from Pennsylvania. He wants to know, can I still work and get my full Social Security benefit each month? You know what, there's a lot of confusion around this, Diane, and the short answer is yes. You can get Social Security and work at the same time, but your monthly benefit may be reduced. So if you have not reached full retirement age, which is 66 or 67, depending on the year you were born, Social Security will deduct $1 from your benefits for every two or three dollars you earn above a certain amount. So those earnings limits, as they call them, change every year. And they don't include things like pension, annuity, or investment income. That's good news. In 2024, the earnings limit will be $22,320. Now, the good news here is you don't lose the money. After you reach full retirement age, Social Security will increase your benefits to make up for the money it withheld earlier. And once you do reach full retirement age, you can work and earn as much as you want and still get your full monthly benefit. All right, now let's go to Monica from Utah. Monica asks, I've heard a lot of mixed things about buy now, pay later. How can I protect myself when using one of these payment options? Yeah, buy now, pay later has really become a, a pretty popular alternative payment option. Uh, it's offered by companies like Affirm, Klarna, PayPal, there are others. And it lets you pay for a purchase in four equal installments, usually interest-free, but unlike a layaway plan, you get to take the item with you right away. So it sounds attractive, right? But if you don't budget correctly, you could quickly wind up in debt. So you want to limit yourself to one or two buy now, pay later loans at a time. Consumer Reports actually found people who owed four or more loans at once were twice as likely to miss a payment. Some pay later lenders require automatic payments from your debit card or bank account, so you want to make sure the funds are always available to avoid any overdraft or late fees. By the way, those late or missed payments can also ding your credit score. And avoid paying your buy now, pay later bill with a credit card. Don't want to do that. You may end up paying interest on the purchase if you carry a balance on your card. Diane? All right, Alexis Christophorus, thank you. And if you want to ask Alexis any personal finance questions, leave a message on our Instagram feed and she might answer your question right here on Thursday. Coming up, a safer way to pay this holiday season. Becky Worley will take a look at how tapping the digital wallet on your phone might be safer than swiping your credit card. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Give it to me. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Mar-a-Lago in Florida, I'm Jay O'Brien. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live.
Welcome back to ABC News Live First. You may have noticed an easier way to pay this holiday season. Tap to pay transactions are estimated to be growing by more than 100 or are estimated to grow by more than 150 percent over the next few years. But is it safe? ABC's Becky Worley takes a look. Tap to pay. First, the tech. Two devices, your phone and the payment reader, communicate wirelessly. That transmission is encrypted, meaning it can't be intercepted by a hacker. It's a really great technology that helps reduce a lot of the friction of purchasing. Android, Apple, and Samsung phones all have digital wallets built in. You set them up by adding a credit card or a debit card. You can even use a prepaid card. I have an iPhone, so I just double click on the side and up pops my wallet app. I select the credit card I want to use. I just tap, and the purchase is charged just like I used a regular credit card, except it's faster and easier than using plastic. But for a lot of people, the reason they aren't doing this is they worry about safety. Some people are still hesitant on using digital wallets because it's weird to not have that card information directly in front of you. Your plastic credit card, though, has a vulnerability. If someone gets the number and the date and code on the back, they can make charges. But when your phone communicates with an e-reader, it doesn't share that credit card number. It creates a one-time use number that is useless to a thief. It's called tokenization. The reason tokenization is really helpful is that it creates a level of encryption that we just can't get with physical cards. Google says digital wallets provide added security, and Apple adds it's safer than using a physical credit, debit, or prepaid card. Okay, but what if your phone gets stolen? In order to use the digital wallets on watches or phones, your device must have a password. Now, we should mention that it's not just Apple, Google, and Samsung that offer these digital wallets. There are third-party apps like Zelle, PayPal, and Venmo, uh, and you can use those services in some stores, though not as widely as the other three. Uh, Apple tells us that Apple Pay is available in about 85% of retailers, but that other 15%, that's something that'll keep you still holding a credit card in your wallet. Diane? All right, ABC's Becky Worley, thank you. And thank you for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on various streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. You got really good I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. ABC News, America's number one news source. 
Welcome back to ABC News Live First. Thanks for streaming with us. You are looking at New York's Penn Station on this Thursday, and we have a lot of news to get to. Here's the rundown right now. Texas is now flying migrants out of the state. A plane chartered by Texas Governor Greg Abbott has landed in Chicago with more than 100 migrants on board. Abbott says until President Biden steps up to secure the border, Texas will continue to provide overwhelmed border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a bill into law this week authorizing local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. Toyota is recalling around a million vehicles due to a possible airbag sensor defect. The company says the issue could cause the passenger side airbag not to deploy in a crash. The recall involves 15 different 2020 and 2021 Toyota and Lexus models, including the Toyota Camry, RAV4, and Sienna, as well as the Lexus RX350 and ES350. Toyota says it will notify you in February if your car is on the list. And a UPS driver is being praised for one of the most dramatic package deliveries in recent memory. Ryan Long was carrying Christmas gifts in Mercer, Maine, and wasn't about to let this major flood stop him from completing his mission. A passerby says he spotted Long on the other side of a washed out and damaged road. He says instead of turning around, Long grabbed a small boat nearby, jumped in, and got those packages across intact. Now the waters have receded and the road is now scheduled to be repaired, so hopefully no more dramatic deliveries needed. Meanwhile, millions of Americans are heading out amid what's expected to be a record-breaking holiday travel season. Nearly 49,000 planes are expected today in the air alone. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us now from Los Angeles International Airport with the latest. Jacqueline, what's it like there right now? It looks actually pretty calm behind you. Hey, Diane, good morning. You know what surprisingly it is? We weren't really sure what to expect when we got here, but as you can see, the security line, there's barely a line. Things are moving. People are starting to descend to TSA. And I got to say, when it came to the roads, it was absolutely pouring coming in. But as you had mentioned, today is expected to be the busiest travel day with nearly 49,000 flights. And LAX is considered, uh, according to Hopper, it is number four uh, in terms of what will be the busiest airport across the country for Christmas week travel, Diane. So what's the latest on delays and cancellations, Jacqueline? Miraculously, at the moment, it's not too bad. We have 54 delays here at LAX and seven cancellations. But as we look uh, for the week ahead, the several weeks ahead, you can't help but think about the Southwest meltdown that we had last year. Uh, Southwest just was given a $140 million fine by the DOT um, and is required to be giving passengers um, $75 in refunds if they're dealing with delays of three hours and longer. Southwest say uh, they are prepared for this holiday season, they have made several changes to their operations. For example, uh, not letting crews be dependent on other crews, so therefore flights will not be as delayed or canceled as last year. So we know a lot of passengers are praying and hoping that things will go smoothly over the next few days, Diane. Uh, Jacqueline, this is expected to be a record travel season. So any tips to help ensure your trip goes smoothly? You know, aside from praying to the airline gods, I mean, the best thing you can do is really be prepared and also know your rights. So for example, if you are delayed or canceled knowing you know who to call you want to call the customer service with the airline but airlines are also saying that they have updated their technology so for example united uh, to, to help prevent um, any massive hiccups when it comes to customer service because they have so many passengers coming in they say they've, they've worked on their app so then if you are delayed or you're canceled you can go right into it and hopefully reschedule and hopefully things can go smoothly from there diane all right jacqueline lee at lax jacqueline thank you and a powerful storm is expected to hammer parts of the West Coast for the next 24 to 48 hours before threatening other areas. So that could cause some travel hiccups as well. Meteorologist Ginger Z is tracking the holiday forecast for us. Let's go ahead and start with that forecast. In the western storm that's already been drenching parts of Southern California, Oxnard had about a month's worth of rain and 40 minutes earlier this morning. So that elevated risk now includes Redondo, Santa Monica, but it will extend through the deserts and into Arizona, Phoenix, and Tucson tomorrow. So the heavy rain's gonna come in those bands and that's why when they do set up, you could end up seeing mudslides or landslides, certainly flash flooding. We're gonna take that same storm right on through the desert by Friday, Friday night, and then it will join up with some other energy as it 
mixes through, you could wake up with some thunderstorms. Dallas up to, say, Kansas City on Christmas Eve. That warm front is bringing with it record warmth possible going into Christmas uh, from Iowa up through uh, South Dakota. But no, no real surprise that we're going to be warm and wet because we're on track for the warmest year on record for all of those cities that you see highlighted. Top five warmest years on record includes much more of the Great Lakes. And currently, in the 20 years of snow cover that we have been watching, this is the lowest to date, just over 14%. Diane? All right, meteorologist Ginger Z, thank you. And even if the weather plays nice, your kids might not. Traveling with little ones can be a big challenge, especially if they're sick. So let's bring in our ABC News medical contributor, physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Lok Patel, for some tips on how we can help ensure the kids cooperate, if that's even a thing. Um, so Dr. Patel, I know my kids have a knack for getting sick when we're traveling. It's like they catch something on the plane or maybe they catch something when we arrive. I don't know, but it happens almost every time. So what are your tips for keeping kids healthy and how to be prepared just in case? I feel this topic in my bones, Diane, because <laughs> we're all crammed in a metal tube flying across the country to different states. People are touching everything. There's less hydration on planes. People are dehydrated. You're in a state where you're gonna get sick. One important thing for parents to do is prevent and plan. So think about, do you need any vaccinations where you're going for going to an exotic destination? Do you have all your medications available on your carry-on, not in your luggage? And prepare for the fact that you might be delayed by several hours. And then you want to think about the fact, as you mentioned, that a lot of people get sick around the actual flight or car ride when you're in a bus terminal or a train station or you're with other passengers. And when you're on the plane, make sure that you're wiping down everything. People often wipe down the tray table, but flight attendants will tell you those instruction cards, which my toddler daughter used to love to like chew what? on, are not always cleaned. And people touch them. And the, and the seat pocket. And the headrest. And you see kids turn around and touch those all the time. Sometimes even nibble on them. They're dirty. So many things make sense now. Um, adjusting kids to different time zones can also be a challenge. Any tips for keeping their sleep on track? I think paying attention to the time zone you're going to, some parents swear by the fact that if you adjust your bedtime by about 30 minutes a few days before, that can also help. It's important to remember that sometimes flying eastbound can be harder for young kids because mm -hmm. the bedtime comes earlier than it normally would. And with young babies under the age of one, they've not, they haven't really established a routine bedtime yet, so you might get away with it. With older kids, you can kind of talk to them about it as well. And also, this is one indication to use melatonin in kids is to help with jet lag. Something tells me that you have some tips as well because you've been through this. I'm literally in the process of doing this right now because we are about to travel overseas, and so I am shifting my kids right now. Working like a charm because they are going to bed earlier and they are waking up earlier. The downside is now when I get ready in the morning, I have a bustling house full of kids who would love for me to play with them instead of getting ready. But there's, there's a cheat code because their mom's a sleep expert. <laughs> but um, but yeah, this is one of the few cases, um, maybe the only case that I will use melatonin for the kids. Tiny doses, tiny doses. So really talk to your pediatrician about the dose um, and bright light in the morning. So when they wake up, you know, at six or, or five a.m. Follow the light. Our bodies are trained yeah, to do that. Trying to expose them to as much light as possible so their brain gets the memo, oh, it's daytime, time to wake up now. Um, what about on the flight itself? Any tips for getting kids to you know, keep their sanity on those long flights? Well, I cannot stress the importance enough, again, of if your kids have any underlying medical conditions, to be prepared for anything that could go wrong on the plane. I will tell you right now, doctors always talk about in-flight emergencies. I've responded to three really? where someone had a seizure and did not have their rescue seizure medications. So this is a situation. So if your kids have asthma, allergies, be prepared. Also, with young kids, I often get asked about ear popping and those eustachian tubes yeah. when kids fly. So remember, kids have those tiny little tubes. They can get, the, the pressure can actually cause discomfort. So encourage young kids to yawn, blow something, suck on something, anything to keep those tubes open. Distraction and reassurance is key. And try to recreate the natural bedtime or the play space on the plane with toddlers. That seems to be the toughest age. We bring a white noise machine, toys, anything we can to keep a occupied toddler happy for six hours. I have these inflatables. They're, they don't fill the entire seat, but they're kind of, they're meant for the trade table for you to sleep this way, but they work great to fill that gap. And it kind of creates the whole area into a play space with no hole for them to fall totally. into. Totally. So that's, that's my little travel hack for you. And snacks, snacks, more and more snacks. snacks. And then your flight could be delayed and you need <laughs> even more snacks and diapers and a change of clothes and all of it. And no screen time rules. There are no screen time rules on the flight. Oh, there's the, the screens, screens and calorie rules don't, don't count <laughs> on planes at all. Dr. Patel, great to have you. Thank you.
And coming up, Dr. Patel will be back for some last minute holiday hacks with our friend Will Gans. Plus, how Apple is working to keep the peace in your group chat. Why green bubble shaming may become a thing of the past. Stay with us. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. We have really good news. <laughs> 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 I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. You're watching America's number one streaming news, ABC News Live. Breaking news, exclusives, live reporting. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, the Catholic Church is entering a new era after Pope Francis approved priests to bless same-sex couples. The decision seems to be causing a split among U.S. Catholics, with some saying it's a landmark moment and others saying it violates church teachings. Let's bring in ABC's Brad Milkey, host of the Start Here podcast, for more on this. Brad, this decision is specific to same-sex unions, not same-sex marriages. How significant is this move and that distinction? Yeah, well, there's still a big difference between these things, right? So the eyes of, in the eyes of the church, a marriage is a vow, it's unbreakable, it's a forever relationship, and it's cemented in this sacrament that, that couples take together in the church, in a mass, with the priest. It's very, very official. A union is different. A union could almost be more akin to dating in the eyes of the church, even though the way that we're talking about this now, you might have a legally married gay couple. However, what the priest is allowed to do is bless them as a union. So all the time, Catholics will, Catholic couples will come up to the priest and say, hey, after mass, would you mind blessing our union? Would you mind you know, asking God to watch over us together? So it's still a, a or maybe like a, you know, at a party, come by and bless us. So it's still a, you know, an inherent recognition of that romantic relationship. And that's what's so different here, is that for a long time, if you were a same-sex couple, a priest could not say, yeah, I bless this union. This is great that you guys are together. Now they can. So they're not taking you into the church. They're not, you know, performing a, a sacrament or anything, but they are basically allowed to go, oh, you're together? Fantastic. That in itself is a big difference. The other difference between marriage and unions is sex is implied in a marriage. It's not necessarily implied in the union, even though if people are legally married, I think everyone, including the priest, knows what's going on here. But there's almost a plausible deniability for the church to say uh, the married the married couple they're definitely having sex. The the union we're, we're not going to get into that. Okay. Now the new approval it doesn't require priests to offer blessings to all same-sex couples. So how does that part work, and is there concern that we could see a split in the Catholic Church into who will and won't do this? Well, this is what's really interesting, is almost in the text of the order here, it basically says priests 
can do this. It doesn't mention priests may ask their bishop for permission. It doesn't mean they have to sort of follow the rules of the rest of their diocese. It really says this is up to priests. So when we talk to Father James Martin, who's also an ABC News contributor, he's a Jesuit priest, he said, I'm thrilled to do this. Don't really need to ask permission from anyone, and so I'm just going to do this next couple that shows up. However, the U.S. Conference of Bishops, which is famously pretty critical of Pope Francis, came out with a pretty terse statement, basically saying, um, nothing, nothing's changed here, really. Nothing fundamentally has changed. But in Europe right now, you've got bishops and priests that are going off and almost creating a rite. It's not quite a sacrament, but like a very official-looking union process for couples. That almost goes beyond what this order is, is okaying mm -hmm. here. So there are priests looking to go much farther than this right now. And this is kind of this half measure. And frankly, some priests are like worried that there could be confusion. What are we allowed to do? What aren't we allowed to do? Who are we allowed to support here? Um, I also, before I let you go, I want to ask you about this big controversy in the world of text messaging and iMessaging. There's a patent dispute, the green bubbles and the blue bubbles, and a lot of back and forth here. So can you break this down for us? Yeah, okay. So, Diane, if you have an Apple phone, right, an Apple device, you know that your text to other Apple users show up blue, Yeah. right? And that is because Apple has this program called iMessage. It's proprietary, it's proprietary to Apple. Basically means you're allowed to you know, send quick reactions and all these little things, send videos and photos very easily. Crucially, it's also more secure, it's more encrypted. And if you've ever been in a group chat with Apple users, but then an Android user joins in, Dun, ruins everything, dun, dun. ruins everything for <laughs> everyone. <laughs> and the reason for that is, it's not just that the Android user's text will show up green, that kind of highlights the distinction that we're talking about, but the difference is it all goes back to this much more basic system called SMS, like what you'd have on your Nokia back in the day. That text messaging, yeah. that is now what your whole group is doing because the Android user is, is out of this loop. Right. So what this company, what this Android company did, and Androids are, are very famous for being a little bit more experimental, very innovative. An Android app uh, came out with a way to almost disguise Android devices as Apple devices. In the, in the software, it almost shows up as an Apple device. So now not only are text showing up blue, but they're all able to be encrypted. They're all able, like everything finally works. So worked. you can like the text yes, you with can put the, the heart instead of it up. saying so-and-so liked the text. That's right, and, and, and you can leave a group chat Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right? a good one. That's the other thing. Like, getting out of the group chats is very difficult when you're just in these SMS chains. So trains. how's Apple reacting to So this? then Apple comes out and makes it harder. All of a sudden, all these users of this Android app are realizing, oh, this isn't working anymore. Oh, Apple no. comes out and admits, yeah, we changed our system so that this app will not work with our system because we don't want third-party apps messing around with our stuff. If they were able to reverse engineer this, Somebody else could reverse engineer a way to get into. This is unsecure all of a sudden, which some tech experts say is a legitimate worry that it's less secure. It's also a branding thing though. For Apple, they know these blue text messages create peer pressure, they create scarcity, they create money. And that is one of the reasons that Apple has not given up these blue versus green debates anytime soon. All right, interesting. So, so far the green bubble will live. We will follow this one Be Brad thank you yeah. <laughs> and to hear Brad dive into more stories like these check out the start here podcast new episodes drop weekday mornings at 6 eastern wherever you get your podcasts coming up last minute holiday hacks how you can make decorations with things you already have in your home whenever wherever news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, wherever you stream your news, only on ABC News Live. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <laughs> Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crufts 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. 
Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Rebecca Jarvis reporting from the New York Stock Exchange. And wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Christmas is now just four days away, and many people are turning to TikTok for some hacks on how to deck the halls before the family gets into town. Well, Gans is here to put together some great last-minute decorating ideas and put them to the test. Take a look. It's not too late to unleash your inner elf this Christmas. Everybody turning to TikTok for some elf-like inspiration, where hashtag holiday hacks has racked up 3.1 billion views. Do you know the painter's tape hack? First up, turning microfiber feather dusters into mini Christmas trees. Step one, detach the duster from the handle and trim the fibers into a tree shape. I feel like I'm giving the Grinch a haircut. 6.30, dinner with me, I can't cancel that again. 6.30, dinner with me, I can't cancel that again. Now add fairy lights to your furry trees, but beware, they're nearly impossible to untangle. Just five minutes of this. Riveting television. Secure your mini Christmas trees into some floral styrofoam and boom, a tiny twinkly merry little masterpiece. Next up, the trendiest way to level up your living room, damage free. No hooks, tacks, or tape needed. Oh my gosh, look how it turned out. All you need is a shower curtain rod, aka a tension rod, and some garland. Some folks use zip ties to attach the garland to the rod, but these branches themselves can secure the strand in place just fine. Voila! Mistletoe is optional. And finally, a holiday hack for achieving that vintage holiday look with more energy efficient lights, a knife, and ping pong balls. And it just adds, like, another layer of dimension to your tree. It has a little equator on it. You're not going to puncture the equator. You're going to go in the North Pole or the South Pole. Slide the ball over a light and repeat until your strand is complete. All right, those are cute. And Will's joining me now for a holiday hack right here on set, along, on set, along with Dr. Patel. I'm already in. The Avengers I have see assembled. Cheesecake. Listen, all-star team aligned. That's right. I don't know if America is ready. Okay, so we uh, have one more hack for you guys, and this is perfect if you're serving up dessert, I think especially at an office party where you don't want other people's fingers kind of getting in your slice of cake. So what you're going to do, you can see there, is you take a knife, you wrap it in parchment paper or wax paper, oh. and you slice like that. So that way, whenever you pull the cheesecake out, it's not sticking to the other slices of cheesecake, you know what I mean? I love so that. So it's like individual serving sizes and a, a very easy way to do that. Um, and because he has a PhD, I brought in my friend Dr. Patel here to pull off the holiday hack. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I approve with not having fingers all over other pieces yes, of t-shirt. Yes, the doctor, the doctor's in the house speaking. Yes, that was that actually looked kind of intimidating because she was doing it very quickly. She was. I think the video's a little bit sped up. Okay, so she was, she <laughs> but we don't, like. We don't have the special effects team here to speed you up, so you're gonna have to do it. All right, let's oh, see I'm it. I'm doing it. Let's you're see it. it, you're doing it. Uh, if it helps, the first slice she did was all the way across. I think we need big, to cut it, right? Yeah. This is way, no, this no, parchment no. paper. You cut it as it's happening. Oh, no, cut but the you need parchment to cut the parchment paper, paper, paper right? Yes. I see what you're saying. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, there you go. I feel like I'm rushing, too. Little strippies. Are you a surgeon? <laughs> I'm not a surgeon. He's not a cheesecake surgeon. But here's the thing: is putting stitches. I think on you a only kid's, need one piece. We don't need you to cut the whole. Putting cake. stitches on a kid's face. I love face how nervous you are right can now. Can be easier than doing this. All right, so here we go. This is way too big. But moment of truth. Just wait for the oh, perfectly cut cheesecake slice for you two. It's honestly quite good. Here, we'll just trim the top. Yeah, I trim the top. There you go. Teamwork. Perfect. Jingle bells, cheesecake slices are going to be perfectly cut. Yes, they are. There you go. No one's fingers will please cut this parchment paper. <laughs> I got you, Dr. Patel. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hyperglycemia has never been so delicious. Are we going to get to eat this cheesecake? <laughs> All right. Dr. Patel is going to keep cutting the cake while, Will, you give us some tea, yeah, apparently. Yeah, I'm here to break down a little bit of tea for you. The tea is hot this morning, and I'm going to spill it. Okay, first up, 
I am going to tell you about our first story, which is prompter roll up. I'm not off book. Uh, the greatest Hollywood duo coming to the big screen in the tradition of Lucy and Ethel, Rachel and Monica, and you could toss in a little bit of Ben Stiller and Stabler. Hannah Waddingham and Octavia Spencer are teaming up for a brand new series about a trained assassin played by Hannah and her best friend, played by Octavia, who has no idea about the secret life of her assassin bestie until a hit goes wrong and the two must go on the run together. The series doesn't have a title yet, but will come to Amazon Prime sometime soon. Fun, I like that team up. Isn't that and who would have thought to put them together, but whoever did, I love it. It's like us. Who would have thought to put us together, Dr. Patel? But here we are. A genius. And all I gotta say is, How's this is looking really, along? really good. Okay. You're impressed now. Love it. Miss Macedo. From one duo to another, Barbie director Greta Gerwig and her writing partner Noah Baumbach have finally tied the knot. The couple have been together for 12 years. They share two sons together, and now they're ca capping off their big Barbie year by quietly getting married, not in Malibu or in a Mojo Dojo Casa house, but in a courthouse <laughs> right here in New York City. But it would have been so cool if it was in the Mojo Dojo Casa house. I would have loved it. He wears a fur coat. She wears a pink dress. I mean... A lot of beers in the mini fridge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Horses coming down the aisle. Speaking Speaking of horses, Ryan Gosling and Mark Ronson releasing a Christmas version of their hit, I'm Just Ken, from the Barbie movie. It's called I'm Just Ken, Merry Christmas, Barbie. Check it out. <laughs> uh, Gosling, who famously played Ken in the popular film, solidified his first ever Billboard Hot 100 with the movie version, which came out at number seven over 87 over the summer. Gosling's longtime love, Eva Mendes, shared some love for the holiday version of the now classic single, writing, Ken, not wait for this. I'm just Ken. Merry Christmas, Barbie is streaming everywhere now. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to anything you were saying because I was too busy watching how focused Dr. Mattel I'm was sorry, let on me this in. cheesecake. The, the people Jingle need to bells, see. Ladies and gentlemen, <gasps> look at that. Wow. I see some perfectly. Cut I mean, cheesecake. that is that is impressive. You're All a right. man of many talents. Can we, Listen. can we eat it now? Yeah, let's pass it out. Can we let's see those perfect slices? Perfect non-germy slices. Come on and get a perfectly cut cheesecake slice, you too. <laughs> Pumpkin. Oh, oh, wow. After everything They're I They're perfectly did, sliced and I'm yeeting them around the maybe studio. Maybe we should let the doctor serve the cheesecake The point cheesecake was for too. it to be a hygienically cut piece. Yeah. And now you're just it You know what? Table. I'm gonna yeah. eat it anyway. Cheers. Here's a fork. All right. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. Pumpkin cheesecake to my two favorite oh, pumpkins. Oh, that's yummy. Oh. Thank you, friends. Cheers. cheers. Cheesecake cheers. Cheesecake cheers. <laughs> cheesecake cheers. And thank you at home for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, analysis. And cheesecake. And cheesecake. We'll be right back. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So many people start their day here. From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. 
America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the FBI, I'm Pierre Thomas. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. We begin with breaking news of a deadly shooting in Prague. Police there say several people are dead and dozens injured in a shooting near Prague University. New images from the scene show people running from the campus. Police now say the gunman is dead. ABC's Lama Hassan is live in London with more. Lama, what do we know at this point? Yeah, hey, Diane. So this inform information is just coming into us. Here's what we know right now. There has been a shooting in the center of Prague at the Charles University in its faculty of philosophy. Police say that there are several dead and dozens injured. We don't have the exact numbers at this point. But what we do know is that the shooter, in the police's words, has been eliminated. But as you can imagine, there is a heavy police presence right now. There is video on, on social media showing people running away from the scene. The staff at the university has been asked to lock themselves in their offices. The U.S. Embassy on X posting that there is an active shooter. The police reportedly have the situation contained, the Post says, but the area remains locked down, advising people to stay away. And just to give you an idea of where it is and how central it is, the shooting took place very close to the famous Charles Bridge, which is a major landmark in the Czech capital. Now, the whole of the square and the entire area surrounding the university is now locked down. We don't have any more information at this point uh, or any more details on the shooter uh, and what the motive could possibly be. It is also important to note at this point that this type of incident is rare in the Czech Republic. Gun crime is generally low. Diane. All right, ABC's Lama Hassan, thank you. And millions of Americans are heading out amid what's expected to be a record-breaking holiday travel season. Major airlines say most passengers will fly today through Saturday with nearly 49,000 flights expected today alone. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us now from Los Angeles International Airport. Uh, Jacqueline, how are the lines looking so far? Hey, Diane, so ultimately what happens is we'll get a big rush that comes through, and then a few minutes later, they seem to be going through TSA pretty quickly. So at the moment, as you can see, there's not too much of a line. You can see some people waiting over here by the clear aisle. Um, but overall, things are going pretty smoothly. We're also seeing not too many delays, 64 and 7 cancellations so far, Diane. Uh, you spoke with officials there at LAX. What are they telling you about how to try to ensure things go smoothly? So the number one thing they say is you just want to be prepared. You want to get here to the airport at least two hours early because there's so many obstacles you can encounter, whether that's weather or traffic or delays or cancellations. So take a listen. Why do you think things have gone so smoothly? Well, we have great professionals that work here. Uh, we do this every day, and we're prepared for, for busier travel periods. And I think that our travelers are also smarter and are using resources that are available to them to help make their journey smoother. And as you just heard, things have gone smoothly so far at LAX throughout this whole Christmas travel season. And so we also spoke with a representative from United, and he explained uh, the biggest thing that people can do is if they are delayed or if they're dealing with cancellations, they upgraded their app so those customers can just hop in the app uh, and, and hop on another flight, or United will do it for them automatically. He also said they are streamlining their boarding process, so you'll be seated based off of if you're in a window, aisle, or the middle, uh, so that way it can actually expedite the process quicker, Diane. All right, good to know, Jacqueline Lee at LAX. Thank you. Meanwhile, a powerful storm is expected to hammer parts of the West Coast for the next 24 to 48 hours before it threatens other areas. ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin is tracking the holiday forecast. Melissa? Hi, Diane. And the good news is the only spot we really see those weather troubles is here in parts of Southern California, where they got nearly a month's worth of rain in just 40 minutes this morning. And here's the current storm. You can see these flood watches continue through today. San Luis Obispo all the way back through Santa Barbara, L.A., back through Phoenix now as the system pushes east over the next 24 hours or so. 
Elevated flood risk, though. Santa Barbara back through Los Angeles. This is for today. This is what we're getting the heaviest rain through tonight. And then it all pushes into parts of San Diego, back through southern Phoenix, southern Arizona into Phoenix and Tucson. And that is for tomorrow. Two to four inches of rain, locally a half a foot. Some spots have already seen a half a foot of rain. The timing for it, you can see there, windy conditions. Santa Barbara to LA, heavy rain through tonight into the overnight hours and tomorrow morning. It all pushes into Arizona. We could see some of that higher elevation snow here back through Phoenix into parts of New Mexico as well. That's into Friday. So the system really in parts of the southern Rockies and parts of the southwest through Friday before it all lifts across the Rockies. Heavy snow there for parts of the northern and central Rockies into the high plains. That's throughout the weekend. You see that Sunday morning time frame. That's new, that's Christmas Eve. So we could see some heavy rain stretching across the plains, even some thunderstorms there in the deep south as we head into the Christmas holiday, Diane. All right, meteorologist Melissa Griffin, thank you. And Texas is now flying migrants from the southern border to Chicago. Authorities say they're overwhelmed by the record numbers of people entering the country. Now, after Chicago cracked down on buses dropping off migrants, Texas Governor Greg Abbott flew over 100 migrants to O'Hare Airport, implying more flights will be incoming. ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kaczerski has the latest. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally, a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their Cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. There are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now also, there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, Diane, of $200 million per day. Diane. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. And ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers joins me now. Karen, how's the White House responding to Governor Abbott now flying migrants to Chicago and saying President Biden needs to step up and secure the border? Diane, the White House is pushing back very strongly on this move by Governor Abbott to fly those migrants from Texas up to Chicago, as we saw yesterday. The White House says in a statement that Abbott is showing how little regard he has for, or respect he has for human beings. They're calling this a political stunt, and they say it's just part of his extreme politics when it comes to the border. The White House also says that Governor Abbott is not interested in solutions. He just wants to use people as political pawns. Now, in terms of what they say the president is doing, of course, they'll talk about the immigration proposals he's put on the table early on in his administration and the funding that he has called for Congress to pass 14 or so billion dollars that would go to more border agents and immigration judges and asylum officials. But right now, the president has said he is willing to compromise on border policy, something Republicans are demanding he do. But the White House is just not giving details of where he might meet them in the middle, where he is willing to compromise and make any concessions. Diane. 
Karen, President Biden also said that he would be willing to compromise on border policy to get more Ukraine aid passed. So what's the latest on those negotiations? That is all punted until after the holidays. And Congress will again take that up in the new year because Senate negotiators were not able to reach an agreement, bipartisan negotiators, on those big changes to border policy. This is because Republicans are saying that has to happen in order to secure their support for Ukraine funding. The White House, of course, is disappointed that this did not get done before the end of the year, saying they can only send one more security assistance package to Ukraine now because Congress did not approve the funding. Diane, this is setting up a very, very busy January for Congress. They're going to have to address the supplemental funding issue, Ukraine aid, border policy, and then fund parts of the government by January 19th. Diane. All right, White House correspondent Karen Travers, thank you. And the White House says serious negotiations are underway for another temporary ceasefire and the release of more hostages in Gaza. This comes as Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry reports the death toll has now surpassed 20,000. Foreign correspondent Britt Clenet joins me now from a hostage protest in Tel Aviv, Israel, with more. Britt, what are you hearing from the families at this protest? Well, Diane, I'm here outside the Israeli Defense Ministry where hostage families have gathered ever since the death of those three hostages killed by the IDF accidentally. Uh, they've been coming out here to demand answers. They're worried, saying, you know, if, if they were killed, perhaps our families could be next. They're very much emphasizing that time is running out. And they're not necessarily, uh, they're walking a very fine line between not necessarily wanting to alienate the government. They want them on their side. They want them to back their corner, but they want them to know that they are still demanding answers and that this should be of the highest order, Diane. Now, Britt, Hamas leader, uh, Hamas leader rejected a proposal for a temporary truce during talks in Cairo yesterday. So what's the latest on those negotiations for a ceasefire and, and to get more hostages home? Well, the White House has been quite optimistic, saying serious negotiations are underway. But uh, Hamas uh, has been telling ABC News that those talks in Egypt, they ended without results. So there is some discrepancy. It doesn't look like there's a lot of progress on that front. But the families are optimistic. They want to see some kind of uh, change. They want to see uh, some kind of information come through. Uh, we have heard from an Israeli official who says uh, they're shaping up a kind of new hostage structure. Uh, we will also hear uh, from the War Cabinet, which is gathering a little bit later, uh, to get some kind of new strategy, new idea on how to bring these guys home. Uh, but, you know, it happens as the death toll in Gaza, as you mentioned, climbs beyond 20,000. Diane, every minute uh, every 10 minutes, one child is killed in there. So the situation growing increasingly dire. As again, we're hearing from this side, people voicing frustration, each side to one extent wanting some kind of pause in the fighting. All right, foreign correspondent Britt Clenet in Tel Aviv, thank you. And 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil after being released in a high-stakes prisoner swap with Venezuela. As part of the deal, the Biden administration agreed to exchange Venezuelan Alex Saab, who's a close ally of Venezuela's president. Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. 10 Americans jailed in Venezuela, back on American soil. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. The safe return home comes after months of secret negotiations. 38-year-old freed American businessman Savoy Wright describing the moment he called his family. I just FaceTimed them and I said, I'm, I'm on the way home, back to the U.S., and I love you, and we cried. Wright, one of six of the 10 Americans considered wrongfully detained, including Avon Hernandez, a Los Angeles public defender who was taken into custody last year near the border, accused of being a spy. All you think about when you're in prison is uh, how you didn't appreciate being free. Hernandez thanking President Biden for what he calls a difficult decision. He got us home and we're with our families and so we're incredibly grateful all of us. Also returned to the U.S., fugitive Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, the mastermind of a $35 million bribery scheme, the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to using prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers to steer lucrative contracts to his companies. Here is Francis on an investigative podcast produced by Project Brazen in 2021. Everybody was in my pocket. 
I had them in my palm. I was just rolling them around. <laughs> and then I could just move the carriers like, you know, uh, paper ships in the, in the water. In exchange, the U.S. granting clemency to Alex Saab, a top ally of Venezuelan's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. Saab greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters, Gracias al pueblo de Venezuela. saying, I thank the people of Venezuela, I'm proud to serve the people of Venezuela and to serve this government. Saab was arrested in 2020 on money laundering charges. Saab was later welcomed at the presidential palace there. This all comes as the Biden administration is trying to improve relations with Venezuela in hopes the country moves towards free and fair elections. Diane? All right, Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz, thank you. And scientists in Iceland are warning of a new danger after a major volcano eruption. They say new vents could open up and release more toxic gas. Adding a change in wind direction could spare the capital from that gas. They also say volcanic activity is slowing down, but that the eruption could re-intensify. Coming up, a family of a nine-year-old kidnapped on a camping trip is speaking out. What they're saying exclusively to ABC News about the moment they found out she was found alive. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. The family of a girl abducted on a camping trip and found days later are sharing their story for the first time. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, her aunt is sharing how she vanished, the moment she learned her niece was alive, and the justice the family wants now. ABC's Ariel Reshef has more. You always say, like, this type of stuff doesn't happen to you, but obviously... It can happen to you. It was a case that gripped the country. A little girl abducted while camping in upstate New York last September. No. Now her aunt what speaking exclusively with ABC story. News about the harrowing ordeal. Um, pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? ABC News is not naming or showing the nine-year-old and blurring her face at the family's request. Her aunt, Janae Senna, speaking for the girl's family, fiercely protective of her as she tries to regain a sense of normalcy. Honestly, it's been a roller coaster. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's trying to resume her, her normal life. During a family camping trip at Moreau Lake State Park, the little girl was riding her bike with other family members around this loop when she decided to do one more lap on her own and then 
vanished. Her sudden disappearance sparking a massive multi-agency manhunt. For two days, her family waiting in agony. Then a bizarre break in the case. Law enforcement says a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox while an officer was watching. Fingerprints leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr., who had been arrested for a DUI in 1999. Authorities tracking him down in a trailer behind his mother's home, 13 miles from the victim's house. Police say the nine-year-old was found alive in a cabinet. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees, screaming. Ross Jr. now charged with nine counts of kidnapping and assault. He's pleaded not guilty. Unfortunately, the world we live in, there are predators out there. And so justice will be not only him being safely away to not do this to anyone else, but also her having, you know, great support system and tools and whatever she needs around her to move forward. What do you want people to know and take away from your family story? This isn't just a headline. This isn't just um, something to get clicks. This is a real person, a real child, a real family. Ariel Rasha, thank you. Janae was adamant about the need for sensitivity with these tra traumatizing cases, especially in the legal system and in the public. The family will be spending Christmas together. Coming up, buyers are saying no to the skyrocketing cost of breakfast cereals. What it says about the economy. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Give it to me. number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. We got really good news. Congratulations, <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Reporting from Des Moines, Iowa, the 2024 campaign trail, I'm Rachel Scott. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Americans are showing they are fed up with the skyrocketing cost of cereal. One of the top cereal makers now says people are not buying as much of the breakfast staple. ABC News' Trevor Alt has the details. Trevor? You know, you've heard of kitchen table issues. Well, these are breakfast table issues. It actually does tell us a lot about the economy. So we're talking about General Mills here, the makers of Cheerios, Lucky Charms, Wheaties, a whole lot more than that. They say sales are down because prices went too far up. They released their quarterly results, and the CEO blamed, quote, stronger than anticipated value-seeking behaviors, which is very heavy corporate speak, for people wanted a deal and we weren't giving them one. So let's step back a few years here. The pandemic turned around what had actually been a steady slide in series. 
cereal sales. Everybody, though, then was eating at home. So sales went up 5% in 2020. That didn't last, though. They fell 8.7% in 2021 and almost 4% in 2022. And over that time, with supply chain issues and inflation, General Mills was raising their prices, but they were raising them higher than the rate of inflation. In fact, too high for a lot of people. And then sales of cheaper store brands spiked 20%. So General Mills now has to figure this out. They predict they might not return to typical sales volume until at least next summer. ABC's Trevor Alt, thank you. And Toyota's recalling a million vehicles worldwide over a potential airbag issue. The automaker says a defect could cause airbags not to deploy, increasing the risk of injury. ABC's Morgan Norwood has what you need to know. Toyota is recalling 1 million cars and SUVs in the U.S. due to a possible defect that could cause the passenger side airbag not to deploy in a crash. That recall involves 15 different 2020 and 2021 Toyota and Lexus models, including the Toyota Camry, RAV4 and Sienna, as well as Lexus RX350 and ES350. Now, Toyota says a short circuit in the vehicle's occupant classification systems could prevent those passenger side airbags from deploying properly, then driving up the risk of injury during a crash. So here's what you need to know. If your car is being recalled, Toyota says they'll notify you sometime in February. The dealers will then examine the recalled vehicles to see if your sensors need to be replaced. And if so, they're free. Diane? ABC's Morgan Norwood, thank you. And thank you for streaming with us. I am Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on various streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live with so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> How cute. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wiener Mobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. You 
your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News, America's number one news source. I'm Diane Macedo. Today on ABC News Live First, the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What you need to know is you head out for Christmas. The major storm slamming the West Coast. It's already bringing record-breaking rain and threats of mudslides. Ginger Z is tracking it all for us, plus your holiday forecast. The crisis at the border. Texas is now flying migrants to Chicago as officials say they're overwhelmed by a record number of people crossing the border. Now the new concerns for the economy. And the new gift card scam warning. Exclusive images from the FBI show how criminals tamper with gift cards, making them worthless. How you can protect your money. We begin with the holiday travel exodus. With just four days until Christmas, millions of Americans are trying to get an early start to what's expected to be the busiest travel season ever. But today is expected to be one of the busiest days among them. ABC News transportation correspondent Gio Benitez has the latest from the tarmac in Houston. The record-breaking holiday travel rush soaring to new heights as the FAA's busiest day in the skies gets underway. Nearly 49,000 planes expected in the air today as passengers make a mad dash home for Christmas. It's like herding cats. Airports packed from Chicago to Seattle to Charlotte. This is ridiculous. Hard to get here. As far as cancellations and delays, largely smooth sailing, with just a few disruptions. At LaGuardia Airport on Wednesday, the TSA says it removed 17 bullets hidden inside a diaper in one traveler's carry-on bag. While at Reagan National outside Washington, agents stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And an unattended bag leading to brief delays at Charlotte's Douglas International. I could miss my flight. Everybody here can miss their flights. Outrageous. Major airlines say most passengers will fly today through Saturday. Delta says it will transport nearly 9 million passengers over the holiday. American expecting more than 12 million. And United Airlines saying this Christmas season will be its busiest on record, transporting around 9 million passengers over the holiday with nearly 4,000 flights each day. Those planes are going to be full. The airports are going to be full. I'm not going to, like, sugarcoat that. What our focus is is making sure that we get those planes out on time and get those planes to their destination on time with their bags. All right, Gio Benitez, thank you. And today is expected to be one of the busiest travel days with nearly 49,000 planes expected to take off. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us now from LAX with more on that. Uh, Jacqueline, things are looking like they're picking up a little bit, but it still seems like it's pretty calm over there. Yeah, that's right, Diane. I mean, it's only been 30 minutes since we last spoke, but you can already see more people starting to line up through the TSA line. Uh, the rain has tapered off for now, so that's good. Um, but for the most part, things are not super chaotic, even though today is expected to be the busiest travel day so far for this holiday season. But as you had mentioned earlier, we are expecting it to pick up a little bit later. Diane. Now, I know you just spoke to some officials from LAX. What advice are they giving to passengers? So the biggest piece of advice is you just want to be prepared and get ahead of things. So, for example, if you know your flight is leaving at a certain time, you want to get to the airport several hours in advance. You have to keep in mind you're going to be dealing with traffic. You're going to be dealing with lots of people who are going to be getting to the airport at the same time. So you don't want to be cutting it too close. So just get here early was the biggest piece of advice, Diane. All right, Jacqueline Lee at LAX Force. Thank you. And a powerful storm is slamming the West Coast, threatening to disrupt all that holiday travel. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow, flash flooding, and mudslides. ABC News Chief National Correspondent Matt Gutman is in a very rainy Oxnard, California with more. Uh, it's been coming down for 
about 12 hours now, Diane. Um, really over the past 48 hours, six inches of rain in Northern California. Uh, this part of Southern California got pummeled a few hours ago. It was actually driving from LA to Santa Barbara uh, through this flooding rain that happened. Uh, we were getting all these uh, alerts on our phone, extremely hazardous flooding, National Weather Service warning that this is a uh, life-threatening situation. Um, and this whole intersection about an hour ago was underwater. I think you can see the cones of Lenny can show over there. Uh, that's how far back it went also. On the other end, trash cans like this were brought in from neighborhoods uh, that we don't know where they are, but they're hundreds of yards away. This trash can uh, is recycling from somewhere. Uh, there are a couple of others down the road over there. Um, this is the kind of weather that LA, that California and Southern California in particular um, have grown accustomed, accustomed to over the past year and a half. These El Ninos bring very powerful uh, atmospheric rivers bring a tremendous amount of moisture to Southern California and Northern California as well. Uh, remember, there's that Lake Lake Tulare that had essentially disappeared for over a century and then reappeared after the atmospheric rivers last year. This one happening a little earlier than the ones last year, which is raising concern for flooding, for mudslides, and other very dangerous, dangerous weather. Um, the bulk of this rainstorm is supposed to hit in the next couple of hours, so it's supposed to get worse. Again, additional flooding watches. There is even a tornado warning earlier this morning, but right now, uh, nobody has been hurt, uh, despite the fact that there have been a number of high water rescues here in Southern California, Diane. All right, Matt Gutman in Oxnard, California, thank you. And Texas is now flying migrants from the southern border to Chicago. Authorities say they're overwhelmed by the record numbers of people entering the country. Now, after Chicago cracked down on buses dropping off migrants, Texas Governor Greg Abbott flew over 100 migrants to O'Hare Airport, implying more flights will be incoming. ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago, 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally, a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. There are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now also there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, Diane, of $200 million per day. Diane. All right. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. And 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil after being released in a high-stakes prisoner swap with Venezuela. As part of the deal, the Biden administration agreed to exchange Venezuelan Alex Saab, who's a close ally of Venezuela's president. Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. 10 Americans jailed in Venezuela, back on American soil. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. The safe return home comes after months of secret negotiations. 38-year-old freed American businessman Savoy Wright describing the moment he called his family. I just FaceTimed them and I said, I'm, I'm on the way home, back to the U.S., and I love you, and 
We cried. Wright, one of six of the 10 Americans considered wrongfully detained, including Avon Hernandez, a Los Angeles public defender who was taken into custody last year near the border, accused of being a spy. All you think about when you're in prison is uh, how you didn't appreciate being free. Hernandez thanking President Biden for what he calls a difficult decision. He got us home and we're with our families and so we're incredibly grateful, all of us. Also returned to the U.S., fugitive Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, the mastermind of a $35 million bribery scheme, the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to using prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers to steer lucrative contracts to his companies. Here is Francis on an investigative podcast produced by Project Brazen in 2021. Everybody was in my pocket. I had them in my palm. I was just rolling them around. <laughs> and then I could just move the carriers like, you know, uh, paper ships in the, in the water. In exchange, the U.S. granting clemency to Alex Saab, a top ally of Venezuelan's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. Saab greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters, Gracias al pueblo de Venezuela. saying, I thank the people of Venezuela, I'm proud to serve the people of Venezuela and to serve this government. Saab was arrested in 2020 on money laundering charges. Saab was later welcomed at the presidential palace there. This all comes as the Biden administration is trying to improve relations with Venezuela in hopes the country moves towards free and fair elections. Diane? All right, Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz, thank you. And the White House says serious negotiations are underway for another temporary ceasefire and the release of more hostages in Gaza. This comes as Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry reports the death toll has now surpassed 20,000. Foreign correspondent Britt Clennett has the latest from Starot, Israel. Oh my God, did you hear that? Yes, yes, we did. Oh, my God. Civilians and journalists caught in an Israeli airstrike. And as the war nears its 12th week, a grim milestone in Gaza, 20,000 killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. We are just collateral damage. Arwa Naif is a mother of two, forced to evacuate five times already since the start of the war. There is no one single place where you can say, here, it's a secure place where I can sleep the night. It is worse every day. It's getting worse every day. But the war unlikely to end soon. In Beirut, a senior Hamas leader saying there's no hostage deal without a ceasefire. One of those released hostages returning to his home on Kibbutz Beri Wednesday, recalling his nightmare. The last thing I remember is being carried away and the my girlfriend say I love you. House by house, charred out. Painful reminders of the horrors committed that day as pressure intensifies on the government to bring the rest of the hostages home. Well, the White House says that serious negotiations are underway, but Hamas telling us that the latest round of talks in Egypt ended without results. Diane? All right, foreign correspondent Britt Clenet in Israel, thank you. And scientists in Iceland are warning of a new danger after a major volcano eruption. They say new vents could open up and release more toxic gas. They also warn while volcanic activity is slowing down, there is potential the eruption could re-intensify. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore is in Iceland with the latest. Hi, Marcus. Hey, Diane, we have been watching this eruption happen in the distance behind us here along the uh, Reykjanes Peninsula, just outside Reykjavik. And the, the activity that we have seen has been along this two and a half mile fissure that opened up on Monday night. And today, uh, there are two vents that remain where that magma and the gases and steam have been rising up. As long as this eruption is happening, there is concern that uh, toxic gases could spread across the region. It's the reason why officials have been, have been paying very close attention to the winds and the weather uh, and, and measuring the air quality. But so far, the winds have been taking the gases uh, towards the sea. And uh, one of the other uh, issues that they were most concerned about was the potential for lava from this eruption uh, to perhaps reach the town of Grindavik, which, as you know, is a town of 4,000 people that was evacuated several weeks ago. 
uh, after a, a series, an outbreak of earthquakes. Um, the lava has not reached that town, but it, of course, is still evacuated as long as this eruption is happening. Uh, the, the big question is how long will this last? And nobody really knows. Despite all of the data and information they're able to gather in real time, there's still a big question of, of how long this will go, and it's a difficult uh, question to answer. Some of these eruptions go on for as long as six months. Um, in the meantime, uh, you have 4,000 people who have been displaced uh, from their homes, hoping to get back a a at some point. Uh, but at this point, um, it's anyone's guess on, on when that will happen. And Diane, just one other note, uh, an official with the meteorological office told me that they're, they're most worried about those, those toxic gases, but also the potential for this eruption uh, to re-intensify, which could happen at any time. All right, foreign correspondent Marcus Moore in Iceland. Thanks, Marcus. Coming up, a new warning about gift card scams with exclusive images from the FBI showing you how to spot them. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Houston police say the 16-year-old shot both of his parents. Now, Friday night, inside the courtroom, and the shocking news evidence that came in just days before the trial began. You gotta be kidding me. Whose blood is this? I couldn't even fathom the idea of killing my parents. Everything, everything points to him! All new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Welcome back. The FBI is issuing a new warning about gift card scams. The FTE says gift card fraud cost Americans more than $160 million in the first nine months of this year, and there's been a sharp spike in scams this holiday season. Now the FBI is showing us how scammers are compromising cards with a simple sticker. ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kaczerski is back with an exclusive look at how to tell if a card has been tampered with before you buy it. Exclusive images of a scam. The FBI showing GMA how criminals tamper with gift cards, shoplifting them from stores and placing a bogus security sticker over the real one. Scammers reseal the packaging. These images show the glue residue left behind and put them back into stores where unsuspecting customers fill these compromised cards with money that is sometimes instantly stolen. So we're seeing this scam across the United States. It's really picked up in the last few weeks. And and, and we see generally a rise in, in scams of this type around the holidays. 
the latest method criminals are using to lift the money out of your pocket this holiday season. You have my $200, the crook has my gift. Suzanne Godovic fell victim when she says she gave a $200 Target gift card as a baby gift. When the new mom went to spend the money, it wasn't there. She was scratching out that silver metallic security lining at the store, at the cash register with all of her baby purchases, and it comes up zero balance. And also there was um, a note that said that this gift card had been assigned to another account. Gift card scams have been around for years, but the FBI says never at the volume they're seeing now. How would a consumer even know that the gift card they're buying actually has no value because it's been siphoned away by some criminal. So the consumer has to be really vigilant. The FBI says look to see if the packaging seems tampered with, if there's a sticker over the scratch-off material, buy gift cards kept behind a counter, and save the receipts, something Suzanne Godovic said kept her from losing money. It was a little while, but then finally I got an email from Target Gift Card Services, and they said that they'd be happy to replace my gift card. So yes, for me, I got the $200 back. Target said in a statement, we are aware of the prevalence of gift card tampering and take this issue very seriously. Now store teams regularly inspect cards for physical signs of tampering. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. And the FBI says individual consumers could lose the entire value of that compromised gift card. Victims can try getting their money back from retailers, but the FBI is also asking anyone affected to file a complaint at ic3.gov. And now it's time for our weekly segment, Ask Alexis, where business reporter Alexis Christophorus shares financial advice on topics that matter most to you. And today she's here to answer your questions on Social Security and buy now, pay later options. So Alexis, let's start with Michael from Pennsylvania. He wants to know, can I still work and get my full Social Security benefit each month? You know what, there's a lot of confusion around this, Diane, and the short answer is yes. You can get Social Security and work at the same time, but your monthly benefit may be reduced. So if you have not reached full retirement age, which is 66 or 67, depending on the year you were born, Social Security will deduct $1 from your benefits for every two or three dollars you earn above a certain amount. So those earnings limits, as they call them, change every year. And they don't include things like pension, annuity, or investment income, that's good news. In 2024, the earnings limit will be $22,320. Now, the good news here is you don't lose the money. After you reach full retirement age, Social Security will increase your benefits to make up for the money it withheld earlier. And once you do reach full retirement age, you can work and earn as much as you want and still get your full monthly benefit. All right, now let's go to Monica from Utah. Monica asks, I've heard a lot of mixed things about buy now, pay later. How can I protect myself when using one of these payment options? Yeah, buy now, pay later has really become a, a pretty popular alternative payment option. Uh, it's offered by companies like Affirm, Klarna, PayPal, there are others. And it lets you pay for a purchase in four equal installments, usually interest-free, but unlike a layaway plan, you get to take the item with you right away. So it sounds attractive, right? But if you don't budget correctly, you could quickly wind up in debt. So you want to limit yourself to one or two buy now, pay later loans at a time. Consumer Reports actually found people who owed four or more loans at once were twice as likely to miss a payment. Some paid later lenders require automatic payments from your debit card or bank account, so you want to make sure the funds are always available to avoid any overdraft or late fees. By the way, those late or missed payments can also ding your credit score. And avoid paying your buy now, pay later bill with a credit card. Don't want to do that. You may end up paying interest on the purchase if you carry a balance on your card. Diane? All right, Alexis Christophorus, thank you. And if you want to ask Alexis any personal finance questions, leave a message on our Instagram feed and she might answer your question right here on Thursday. Coming up, a safer way to pay this holiday season. Becky Worley will take a look at how tapping the digital wallet on your phone might be safer than swiping your credit card. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. 
people need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war for nonstop live coverage. Stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Reporting from the Fulton County Courthouse in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Olivia Rubin. Wherever the story goes, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. You may have noticed an easier way to pay this holiday season. Tap to pay transactions are estimated to be growing by more than 100 or are estimated to grow by more than 150 percent over the next few years. But is it safe? ABC's Becky Worley takes a look. Tap to pay. First, the tech. Two devices, your phone and the payment reader, communicate wirelessly. That transmission is encrypted, meaning it can't be intercepted by a hacker. It's a really great technology that helps reduce a lot of the friction of purchasing. Android, Apple, and Samsung phones all have digital wallets built in. You set them up by adding a credit card or a debit card. You can even use a prepaid card. I have an iPhone, so I just double click on the side and up pops my wallet app. I select the credit card I want to use. I just tap and the purchase is charged just like I used a regular credit card, except it's faster and easier than using plastic. But for a lot of people, the reason they aren't doing this is they worry about safety. Some people are still hesitant on using digital wallets because it's weird to not have that card information directly in front of you. Your plastic credit card, though, has a vulnerability. If someone gets the number and the date and code on the back, they can make charges. But when your phone communicates with an e-reader, it doesn't share that credit card number. It creates a one-time use number that is useless to a thief. It's called tokenization. The reason tokenization is really helpful is that it creates a level of encryption that we just can't get with physical cards. Google says digital wallets provide added security, and Apple adds it's safer than using a physical credit, debit, or prepaid card. Okay, but what if your phone gets stolen? In order to use the digital wallets on watches or phones, your device must have a password. 
Now, we should mention that it's not just Apple, Google, and Samsung that offer these digital wallets. There are third-party apps like Zelle, PayPal, and Venmo, uh, and you can use those services in some stores, though not as widely as the other three. Uh, Apple tells us that Apple Pay is available in about 85% of retailers, but that other 15%, that's something that'll keep you still holding a credit card in your wallet. Diane? All right, ABC's Becky Worley, thank you. And thank you for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on various streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So, what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Trump. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from East Palestine, Ohio, I'm Alex Brashey. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. I'm Diane Macedo. We been, begin with breaking news of a deadly shooting in Prague. Police there say more than 15 people are dead and dozens injured in a shooting near Prague University. New images from the scene show the aftermath. Police also say the gunman is dead. ABC's Lama Hassan is live in London. Lama, what's the latest? Yeah, hey Diane, so we do have an update for you. Police are in Prague are having a press conference. In fact, it's still going on now as we speak. We understand that the gunman was in his mid-30s. We also understand that according to Prague's medical rescue services, 15 people, as you said, have been killed and 24 injured. 11 of them are seriously wounded. Here's what happened according to police. A gunman entered the Charles University in Prague this afternoon around 3.30 p.m. local time, walked Walking through the corridors, shooting people inside the university building, police quickly swooping in and, in their words, eliminating the gunman. They do believe he acted alone and they say at this point there is no imminent danger. The university, of course, was quickly evacuated. There are dramatic images and videos circulating online that show people running away from the scene. And an email was reportedly sent to staff warning them of the shooting, telling them to stay put, telling them not to go anywhere, saying if 
you are in your offices, lock them and place furniture in front of the door, turn off the lights, it said. So essentially barricading themselves in the classrooms. And even though the police eliminated the shooter, the scene is still active with ambulances and police surrounding the university. And just to give you a sense of the location, Diane, it is very central. The university is very close to the iconic Charles Bridge, which is a major landmark in Prague. The area would have been packed with tourists, especially now just before the holidays. Now, we understand that the Prime Minister is saying that in light of this tragic event, he's cancelled all upcoming engagements. And at this point, we don't have any more details about the identity of the shooter or what their motive might be. But as you can imagine, just a frightening ordeal, Diane. All right, ABC's Lama Hassan, thank you. Millions of Americans are heading out amid what's expected to be a record-breaking holiday travel season. Major airlines say most passengers will fly today through Saturday with nearly 49,000 flights expected today alone. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us now from Los Angeles International Airport. Uh, Jacqueline, how are the lines looking so far? Hey, Diane, so ultimately what happens is we'll get a big rush that comes through, and then a few minutes later, they seem to be going through TSA pretty quickly. So at the moment, as you can see, there's not too much of a line. You can see some people waiting over here by the clear aisle. Um, but overall, things are going pretty smoothly. We're also seeing not too many delays, 64 and 7 cancellations so far, Diane. Uh, you spoke with officials there at LAX. What are they telling you about how to try to ensure things go smoothly? So the number one thing they say is you just want to be prepared. You want to get here to the airport at least two hours early because there's so many obstacles you can encounter, whether that's weather or traffic or delays or cancellations. So take a listen. Why do you think things have gone so smoothly? Well, we have great professionals that work here. Uh, we do this every day. And we're prepared for, for busier travel periods. And I think that our travelers are also smarter and are using resources that are available to them to help make their journey smoother. And as you just heard, things have gone smoothly so far at LAX throughout this whole Christmas travel season. And so we also spoke with a representative from United, and he explained uh, the biggest thing that people can do is if they are delayed or if they're dealing with cancellations, they upgraded their app so those customers can just hop in the app uh, and, and hop on another flight, or United will do it for them automatically. He also said they are streamlining their boarding process, so you'll be seated based off of if you're in a window, aisle, or the middle, uh, so that way it can actually expedite the process quicker, Diane. All right, good to know, Jack and Lee at LAX. Thank you. Meanwhile, a powerful storm is expected to hammer parts of the West Coast for the next 24 to 48 hours before it threatens other areas. ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin is tracking the holiday forecast. Melissa? Hi, Diane. And the good news is the only spot we really see those weather troubles is here in parts of Southern California, where they got nearly a month's worth of rain in just 40 minutes this morning. And here's the current storm. You can see these flood watches continue through today. San Luis Obispo, all the way back through Santa Barbara, LA, back through Phoenix now, as the system pushes east over the next 24 hours or so. Elevated flood risk, though. Santa Barbara, back through Los Angeles. This is for today. This is where we're getting the heaviest rain through tonight. And then it all pushes into parts of of San Diego back through southern Phoenix and southern Arizona into Phoenix and Tucson and that is for tomorrow two to four inches of rain locally a half a foot some spots have already seen a half a foot of rain the timing for it you can see there windy conditions Santa Barbara to LA heavy rain through tonight into the overnight hours and tomorrow morning it all pushes into Arizona. We can see some of that higher elevation snow here back through Phoenix into parts of New Mexico as well. That's into Friday. So the system really in parts of the Southern Rockies and parts of the Southwest through Friday before it all lifts across the Rockies. Heavy snow there for parts of the Northern and Central Rockies into the High Plains. That's throughout the weekend. You see that Sunday morning time frame. That's new, that's Christmas Eve. So we could see some heavy rain stretching across the plains, even some thunderstorms there in the deep south as we head into the Christmas holiday, Diane. All right, meteorologist Melissa Griffin, thank you. And Texas is now flying migrants from the southern border to Chicago. Authorities say they're overwhelmed by the record numbers of people entering the country. Now, after Chicago cracked down on buses dropping off migrants, Texas Governor Greg Abbott flew over 100 migrants to O'Hare Airport, implying more flights will be incoming. ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight. 
One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. A record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their Cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. There are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now also there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, Diane, of $200 million per day. Diane. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. And ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers joins me now. Karen, how is the White House responding to Governor Abbott now flying migrants to Chicago and saying President Biden needs to step up and secure the border? Diane, the White House is pushing back very strongly on this move by Governor Abbott to fly those migrants from Texas up to Chicago, as we saw yesterday. The White House says in a statement that Abbott is showing how little regard he has for, or respect he has for human beings. They're calling this a political stunt, and they say it's just part of his extreme politics when it comes to the border. The White House also says that Governor Abbott is not interested in solutions. He just wants to use people as political pawns. Now, in terms of what they say the president is doing, of course, they'll talk about the immigration proposals he's put on the table early on in his administration and the funding that he has called for Congress to pass 14 or so billion dollars that would go to more border agents and immigration judges and asylum officials. But right now, the president has said he is willing to compromise on border policy, something Republicans are demanding he do. But the White House is just not giving details of where he might meet them in the middle, where he is willing to compromise and make any concessions. Diane. Karen, President Biden also said that he would be willing to compromise on border policy to get more Ukraine aid passed. So what's the latest on those negotiations? That is all punted until after the holidays. And Congress will again take that up in the new year because Senate negotiators were not able to reach an agreement, bipartisan negotiators, on those big changes to border policy. This is because Republicans are saying that has to happen in order to secure their support for Ukraine funding. The White House, of course, is disappointed that this did not get done before the end of the year, saying they can only send one more security assistance package to Ukraine now because Congress did not approve the funding. Diane, this is setting up a very, very busy January for Congress. They're going to have to address the supplemental funding issue, Ukraine aid, border policy, and then fund parts of the government by January 19th. Diane. All right, White House correspondent Karen Travers, thank you. And the White House says serious negotiations are underway for another temporary ceasefire and the release of more hostages in Gaza. This comes as Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry reports the death toll has now surpassed 20,000. Foreign correspondent Britt Clenet joins me now from a hostage protest in Tel Aviv, Israel with more. Britt, what are you hearing from the families at this protest? Well, Diane, I'm here outside the Israeli Defense Ministry where hostage families have gathered ever since the death of those three hostages killed by the IDF accidentally. Uh, they've been coming out here to demand answers. They're worried, saying, you know, if, if they were killed, perhaps our families could be next. They're very much emphasizing that time is running out. And they're not necessarily, uh, they're walking a very fine line between not necessarily wanting to alienate the government. They want them on their side. They want them to back their corner, but they want them to know that they are still demanding answers and that this should be of the highest order, Diane. 
Now, Britt, Hamas leader, uh, Hamas leader rejected a proposal for a temporary truce during talks in Cairo yesterday. So what's the latest on those negotiations for a ceasefire and, and to get more hostages home? Well, the White House has been quite optimistic, saying serious negotiations are underway. But uh, Hamas uh, has been telling ABC News that those talks in Egypt, they ended without results. So there is some discrepancy. It doesn't look like there's a lot of progress on that front. But the families are optimistic. They want to see some kind of a change. They want to see uh, some kind of information come through. Uh, we have heard from an Israeli official who says uh, they're shaping up a kind of new hostage structure. Uh, we will also hear uh, from the War Cabinet, which is gathering a little bit later, uh, to get some kind of new strategy, new idea on how to bring these guys home. Uh, but, you know, it happens as the death toll in Gaza, as you mentioned, climbs beyond 20,000. Diane, every minute uh, every 10 minutes, one child is killed in there. So the situation growing increasingly dire. As again, we're hearing from this side, people voicing frustration, each side to one extent wanting some kind of pause in the fighting. All right, foreign correspondent Britt Clenet in Tel Aviv, thank you. And 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil after being released in a high-stakes prisoner swap with Venezuela. As part of the deal, the Biden administration agreed to exchange Venezuelan Alex Saab, who's a close ally of Venezuela's president. Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. 10 Americans jailed in Venezuela, back on American soil. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. The safe return home comes after months of secret negotiations. 38-year-old freed American businessman Savoy Wright describing the moment he called his family. I just FaceTimed them and I said, I'm, I'm on the way home, back to the U.S., and I love you, and we cried. Wright, one of six of the 10 Americans considered wrongfully detained, including Avon Hernandez, a Los Angeles public defender who was taken into custody last year near the border, accused of being a spy. All you think about when you're in prison is uh, how you didn't appreciate being free. Hernandez thanking President Biden for what he calls a difficult decision. He got us home and we're with our families and so we're incredibly grateful, all of us. Also returned to the U.S., fugitive Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, the mastermind of a $35 million bribery scheme, the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to using prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers to steer lucrative contracts to his companies. Here is Francis on an investigative podcast produced by Project Brazen in 2021. Everybody was in my pocket. I had them in my palm. I was just rolling them around. <laughs> and then I could just move the carriers like, you know, uh, paper ships in the, in the water. In exchange, the U.S. granting clemency to Alex Saab, a top ally of Venezuelan's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. Saab greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters, Gracias al pueblo de Venezuela. saying, I thank the people of Venezuela. I'm proud to serve the people of Venezuela and to serve this government. Saab was arrested in 2020 on money laundering charges. Saab was later welcomed at the presidential palace there. This all comes as the Biden administration is trying to improve relations with Venezuela in hopes the country moves towards free and fair elections. Diane? All right, Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz, thank you. And scientists in Iceland are warning of a new danger after a major volcano eruption. They say new vents could open up and release more toxic gas. Adding a change in wind direction could spare the capital from that gas. They also say volcanic activity is slowing down, but that the eruption could re-intensify. Coming up, a family of a nine-year-old kidnapped on a camping trip is speaking out. What they're saying exclusively to ABC News about the moment they found out she was found alive. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. 
reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner Oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. The family of a girl abducted on a camping trip and found days later are sharing their story for the first time. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, her aunt is sharing how she vanished, the moment she learned her niece was alive, and the justice the family wants now. ABC's Ariel Reshef has more. You always say, like, this type of stuff doesn't happen to you, but obviously... It can happen to you. It was a case that gripped the country. A little girl abducted while camping in upstate New York last September. No. Now her aunt what speaking exclusively with ABC torture. News about the harrowing ordeal. Um, pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? ABC News is not naming or showing the nine-year-old and blurring her face at the family's request. Her aunt, Janae Senna, speaking for the girl's family, fiercely protective of her as she tries to regain a sense of normalcy. Honestly, it's been a roller coaster. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's trying to resume her, her normal life. During a family camping trip at Moreau Lake State Park, the little girl was riding her bike with other family members around this loop when she decided to do one more lap on her own and then vanished. Her sudden disappearance sparking a massive multi-agency manhunt. For two days, her family waiting in agony. Then a bizarre break in the case. Law enforcement says a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox while an officer was watching. Fingerprints leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr., who had been arrested for a DUI in 1999. Authorities tracking him down in a trailer behind his mother's home, 13 miles from the victim's house. Police say the nine-year-old was found alive in a cabinet. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees, screaming. Ross Jr. now charged with nine counts of kidnapping and assault. He's pleaded not guilty. Unfortunately, the world we live in, there are predators out there. And so justice will be not only him being safely away to not do this to anyone else, but also her having, you know, great support system and tools and whatever she needs around her to move forward. What do you want people to know and take away from your family story? This isn't just a headline. This isn't just um, something to get clicks. This is a real person, a real child, a real family. Ariel Rasha, thank you. Janae was adamant about the need for sensitivity with these tra traumatizing cases, especially in the legal system and in the public. The family will be spending Christmas together. Coming up, buyers are saying no to the skyrocketing cost of breakfast cereals. What it says about the economy.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So many people start their day here. From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> you look cute. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Americans are showing they are fed up with the skyrocketing cost of cereal. One of the top cereal makers now says people are not buying as much of the breakfast staple. ABC News' Trevor Alt has the details. Trevor? You know, you've heard of kitchen table issues. Well, these are breakfast table issues. It actually does tell us a lot about the economy. So we're talking about General Mills here, the makers of Cheerios, Lucky Charms, Wheaties, a whole lot more than that. They say sales are down because prices went too far up. They released their quarterly results, and the CEO blamed, quote, stronger than anticipated value-seeking behaviors, which is very heavy corporate speak, for people wanted a deal and we weren't giving them one. So let's step back a few years here. The pandemic turned around what had actually been a steady slide in Syria sales. Everybody, though, then was eating at home. So sales went up 5% in 2020. That didn't last, though. They fell 8.7% in 2021 and almost 4% in 2022. And over that time, with supply chain issues and inflation, General Mills was raising their prices, but they were raising them higher than the rate of inflation. In fact, too high for a lot of people. And then sales of cheaper store brands spiked 20%. So General Mills now has to figure this out. They predict they might not return to typical sales volume until at least next summer. ABC's Trevor Alt, thank you. And Toyota is recalling a million vehicles worldwide over a potential airbag issue. The automaker says a defect could cause airbags not to deploy, increasing the risk of injury. ABC's Morgan Norwood has what you need to know. Toyota is recalling 1 million cars and SUVs in the U.S. due to a possible defect that could cause the passenger side airbag not to deploy in a crash. That recall involves 15 different 2020 and 2021 Toyota and Lexus models, including the Toyota Camry, RAV4, and Sienna, as well as Lexus RX350 and ES350. Now, Toyota says a short circuit in the vehicle's occupant classification systems could prevent those passenger side airbags from deploying properly, then driving up the risk of injury during a crash. So here's what you need to know. If your car is being recalled, Toyota says they'll notify you sometime in February. The dealers will then examine the recalled vehicles to see if your sensors need to be replaced. And if so, they're free. Diane? 
ABC's Morgan Norwood, thank you. And thank you for streaming with us. I am Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on various streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. America's number one news source. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. Thanks for streaming with us. You are looking at New York's Penn Station on this Thursday, and we have a lot of news to get to. Here's the rundown right now. Texas is now flying migrants out of the state. A plane chartered by Texas Governor Greg Abbott has landed in Chicago with more than 100 migrants on board. Abbott says until President Biden steps up to secure the border, Texas will continue to provide overwhelmed border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a bill into law this week authorizing local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. Toyota is recalling around a million vehicles due to a possible airbag sensor defect. The company says the issue could cause the passenger side airbag not to deploy in a crash. The recall involves 15 different 2020 and 2021 Toyota and Lexus models, including the Toyota Camry, RAV4, and Sienna, as well as the Lexus RX350 and ES350. Toyota says it will notify you in February if your car is on the list. And a UPS driver is being praised for one of the most dramatic package deliveries in recent memory. Ryan Long was carrying Christmas gifts in Mercer, Maine, and wasn't about to let this major flood stop him from completing his mission. A passerby says he spotted Long on the other side of a washed out and damaged road. He says instead of turning around, Long grabbed a small boat nearby, jumped in, and got those packages across intact. Now the waters have receded, and the road is now scheduled to be repaired, so hopefully no more dramatic deliveries needed. 
Meanwhile, millions of Americans are heading out amid what's expected to be a record-breaking holiday travel season. Nearly 49,000 planes are expected today in the air alone. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us now from Los Angeles International Airport with the latest. Jacqueline, what's it like there right now? It looks actually pretty calm behind you. Hey, Diane, good morning. You know what surprisingly it is? We weren't really sure what to expect when we got here, but as you can see, the security line, there's barely a line. Things are moving. People are starting to descend to TSA. And I got to say, when it came to the roads, it was absolutely pouring coming in. But as you had mentioned, today is expected to be the busiest travel day with nearly 49,000 flights. And LAX is considered, uh, according to Hopper, it is number four uh, in terms of what will be the busiest airport across the country for Christmas week travel, Diane. So what's the latest on delays and cancellations, Jacqueline? Miraculously, at the moment, it's not too bad. We have 54 delays here at LAX and seven cancellations. But as we look uh, for the week ahead, the several weeks ahead, you can't help but think about the Southwest meltdown that we had last year. Uh, Southwest just was given a $140 million fine by the DOT um, and is required to be giving passengers um, $75 in refunds if they're dealing with delays of three hours and longer. Southwest say uh, they are prepared for this holiday season, they have made several changes to their operations, for example, uh, not letting crews be dependent on other crews, so therefore flights will not be as delayed or canceled as last year. So we know a lot of passengers are praying and hoping that things will go smoothly over the next few days, Diane. Uh, Jacqueline, this is expected to be a record travel season, so any tips to help ensure your trip goes smoothly? You know, aside from praying to the airline gods, I mean, the best thing you can do is really be prepared and also know your rights. So for example, if you are delayed or canceled knowing you know who to call you want to call the customer service with the airline but airlines are also saying that they have updated their technology so for example united uh, to, to help prevent um, any massive hiccups when it comes to customer service because they have so many passengers coming in they say they've, they've worked on their app so then if you are delayed or you're canceled you can go right into it and hopefully reschedule and hopefully things can go smoothly from there diane all right jacqueline lee at lax jacqueline thank you and a powerful storm is expected to hammer parts of the West Coast for the next 24 to 48 hours before threatening other areas. So that could cause some travel hiccups as well. Meteorologist Ginger Z is tracking the holiday forecast for us. Let's go ahead and start with that forecast. And the western storm that's already been drenching parts of Southern California, Oxnard had about a month's worth of rain and 40 minutes earlier this morning. So that elevated risk now includes Redondo, Santa Monica, but it will extend through the deserts and into Arizona, Phoenix, and Tucson tomorrow. So the heavy rain's gonna come in those bands and that's why when they do set up, you could end up seeing mudslides or landslides, certainly flash flooding. We're gonna take that same storm right on through the desert by Friday, Friday night, and then it will join up with some other energy as it mixes through you could wake up with some thunderstorms Dallas up to say Kansas City on Christmas Eve that warm front is bringing with it record warmth possible going into Christmas uh, from Iowa up through uh, South Dakota but no no real surprise that we're gonna be warm and wet because we're on track for the warmest year on record for all of those cities that you see highlighted top five warmest years on record includes much more of the Great Lakes and currently in the 20 years of snow cover that we have been watching this is the lowest to date just over 14%. Diane? All right, meteorologist Ginger Z, thank you. And even if the weather plays nice, your kids might not. Traveling with little ones can be a big challenge, especially if they're sick. So let's bring in our ABC News medical contributor, physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Lok Patel, for some tips on how we can help ensure the kids cooperate, if that's even a thing. Um, so Dr. Patel, I know my kids have a knack for getting sick when we're traveling. It's like they catch something on the plane or maybe they catch something when we arrive. I don't know, but it happens almost every time. So what are your tips for keeping kids healthy and how to be prepared just in case? I feel this topic in my bones, Diane, because <laughs> we're all crammed in a metal tube flying across the country to different states. People are touching everything. There's less hydration on planes. If we're dehydrated, you're in a state where you're gonna get sick. One important thing for parents to do is prevent and plan. So think about, do you need any vaccinations where you're going for going to an exotic destination? Do you have all your medications available on your carry-on, not in your luggage? And prepare for the fact that you might be delayed by several hours. And then you want to think about the fact, as you mentioned, that a lot of people get sick around the actual flight 
or car ride when you're in a bus terminal or a train station or you're with other passengers. And when you're on the plane, make sure that you're wiping down everything. People often wipe down the tray table, but flight attendants will tell you those instruction cards, which my toddler daughter used to love to like chew what? on, are not always cleaned. And people touch them. And the, and the seat pocket and the headrest, and you see kids turn around and touch those all the time, sometimes even nibble on them, they're dirty. So many things make sense now. Um, adjusting kids to different time zones can also be a challenge. Any tips for keeping their sleep on track? I think paying attention to the time zone you're going to. Some parents swear by the fact that if you adjust your bedtime by about 30 minutes a few days before, that can also help. It's important to remember that sometimes flying eastbound can be harder for young kids because mm -hmm. the bedtime comes earlier than it normally would. And with young babies under the age of one, they've not, they haven't really established a routine bedtime yet, so you might get away with it. With older kids, you can kind of talk to them about it as well. And also, this is one indication to use melatonin in kids is to help with jet lag. Something tells me that you have some tips as well because you've been through this. I'm literally in the process of doing this right now because we are about to travel overseas, and so I am shifting my kids right now. Working like a charm because they are going to bed earlier and they are waking up earlier. The downside is now when I get ready in the morning, I have a bustling house full of kids who would love for me to play with them instead of getting ready. But There's, there's a cheat code because their mom's a sleep <laughs> expert. But, um, but yeah, this is one of the few cases, um, or maybe the only case, that I will use melatonin for the kids. Tiny doses, tiny doses. So really talk to your pediatrician about the dose um, and bright light in the morning. So when they wake up, you know, at 6 or, or 5 a.m. Follow the light. Our bodies are trained yeah, to do that. Yeah, trying to expose them to as much light as possible so their brain gets the memo, oh, it's daytime, time to wake up now. Um, what about on the flight itself? Any tips for getting kids to, you know, keep their sanity on those long flights? Well, I cannot stress the importance enough, again, of if your kids have any underlying medical conditions, to be prepared for anything that could go wrong on the plane. I will tell you right now, doctors always talk about in-flight emergencies. I've responded to three really? where someone had a seizure and did not have their rescue seizure medications. So this is a situation. So if your kids have asthma, allergies, be prepared. Also, with young kids, I often get asked about ear popping and those eustachian tubes yeah. when kids fly. So remember, kids have those tiny little tubes. They can get, the, the pressure can actually cause discomfort. So encourage young kids to yawn, blow something, suck on something, anything to keep those tubes open. Distraction and reassurance is key. And try to recreate the natural bedtime or the play space on the plane with toddlers. That seems to be the toughest age. We bring a white noise machine, toys, anything we can to keep a occupied toddler happy for six hours. I have these inflatables. They're, they don't fill the entire seat, but they're kind of, they're meant for the tray table for you to sleep this way, but they work great to fill that gap, and it kind of creates the whole area into a play space with no hole for them to fall totally. into. Totally. So that's, that's my little travel hack for you. And snacks, snacks, more and more snacks. snacks. And then your flight could be delayed and you need <laughs> even more snacks and diapers and a change of clothes and all of it. And no screen time rules. There are no screen time rules on the flight. Oh, there's the, the screens, screens and calorie rules don't, uh, don't count <laughs> on planes at all. Dr. Patel, great to have you. Thank you. And coming up, Dr. Patel will be back for some last minute holiday hacks with our friend Will Gans. Plus, how Apple is working to keep the peace in your group chat. Why green bubble shaming may become a thing of the past. Stay with us. So much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television.
America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. You're watching America's number one streaming news, ABC News Live. Breaking news, exclusives, live reporting. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, the Catholic Church is entering a new era after Pope Francis approved priests to bless same-sex couples. The decision seems to be causing a split among U.S. Catholics, with some saying it's a landmark moment and others saying it violates church teachings. Let's bring in ABC's Brad Milkey, host of the Start Here podcast, for more on this. Brad, this decision is specific to same-sex unions, not same-sex marriages. How significant is this move and that distinction? Yeah, well, there's still a big difference between these things, right? So the eyes of, in the eyes of the church, a marriage is a vow, it's unbreakable, it's a forever relationship, and it's cemented in this sacrament that, that couples take together in the church, in a mass, with the priest. It's very, very official. A union is different. A union could almost be more akin to dating in the eyes of the church, even though the way that we're talking about this now, you might have a legally married gay couple. However, what the priest is allowed to do is bless them as a union. So all the time, Catholics will, Catholic couples will come up to the priest and say, hey, after mass, would you mind blessing our union? Would you mind you know, asking God to watch over us together? So it's still a, a or maybe like a, you know, at a party, come by and bless us. So it's still a, you know, an inherent recognition of that romantic relationship. And that's what's so different here, is that for a long time, if you were a same-sex couple, a priest could not say, yeah, I bless this union. This is great that you guys are together. Now they can. So they're not taking you into the church. They're not, you know, performing a, a sacrament or anything, but they are basically allowed to go, oh, you're together? Fantastic. That in itself is a big difference. The other difference between marriage and unions is sex is implied in a marriage. It's not necessarily implied in the union, even though if people are legally married, I think everyone, including the priest, knows what's going on here. But there's almost a plausible deniability for the church to say uh, the married the married couple they're definitely having sex. The the union we're, we're not going to get into that. Okay. Now the new approval it doesn't require priests to offer blessings to all same-sex couples. So how does that part work, and is there concern that we could see a split in the Catholic Church into who will and won't do this? Well, this is what's really interesting, is almost in the text of the order here, it basically says priests can do this. It doesn't mention priests may ask their bishop for permission, doesn't mean they have to sort of follow the rules of the rest of their diocese. It really says this is up to priests. So when we talk to Father James Martin, who's also an ABC News contributor, he's a Jesuit priest, he said, I'm thrilled to do this, don't really need to ask permission from anyone, and so I'm just gonna do this to the next couple that shows up. However, the US Conference of Bishops, which is famously pretty critical of Pope Francis, came out with a pretty terse statement, basically saying, um, nothing, nothing's changed here, really, nothing fundamentally has changed. But in Europe right now, you've got bishops and priests that are going off and almost creating a rite. It's not quite a sacrament, but like a very official looking union process for couples. That almost goes beyond what this order is, is okaying mm -hmm. here. So there are priests looking to go much farther than this right now. And this is kind of this half measure. And frankly, some priests are like worried that there could be confusion. What are we allowed to do? What aren't we allowed to do? Who are we allowed to support here? Um, I also, before I let you go, I wanna ask you about this Big controversy in the world of text messaging and iMessaging. There's a patent dispute, the green bubbles and the blue bubbles, and a lot of back and forth here. So can you break this down for us? Yeah, okay. So, Diane, if you have an Apple phone, right, an Apple device, you know that your text to other Apple users show up blue, yeah. right? And that is because Apple has this program called iMessage. It's proprietary, it's proprietary to Apple. Basically means you're allowed to you know, send quick reactions and all these little things, send videos and photos very easily. Crucially, it's also more secure, it's more encrypted. 
And if you've ever been in a group chat with Apple users, but then an Android user joins in, dun, ruins dun, everything. Dun. Ruins everything for <laughs> everyone. <laughs> and the reason for that is, it's not just that the Android user's text will show up green, that kind of highlights the distinction that we're talking about, but the difference is it all goes back to this much more basic system called SMS, like what you'd have on your Nokia back in the day. That text messaging, yeah. that is now what your whole group is doing because the Android user is, is out of this loop. Right. So what this company, what this Android company did, and Androids are, are very famous for being a little bit more experimental, very innovative. An Android app uh, came out with a way to almost disguise Android devices as Apple devices. In the, in the software, it almost shows up as an Apple device. So now not only are text showing up blue, but they're all able to be encrypted. They're all able, like everything finally works. So worked. you can like the text yes, you with can put the, the heart instead of it up. saying so-and-so likes the text. That's and right, and, and, and you can leave a group chat Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right? a good one. That's the other thing. Like, getting out of the group chats is very difficult when you're just in these SMS chains. So chains. how's Apple reacting to So this? then Apple comes out and makes it harder. All of a sudden, all these users of this Android app are realizing, oh, this isn't working anymore. Oh, Apple no. comes out and admits, yeah, we changed our system so that this app will not work with our system because we don't want third-party apps messing around with our stuff. If they were able to reverse engineer this, Somebody else could reverse engineer a way to get into. This is unsecure all of a sudden, which some tech experts say is a legitimate worry that it's less secure. It's also a branding thing though. For Apple, they know these blue text messages create peer pressure, they create scarcity, they create money. And that is one of the reasons that Apple has not given up these blue versus green debates anytime soon. All right, interesting. So, so far the green bubble will live. We will follow this one Be Brad thank you yeah. <laughs> and to hear Brad dive into more stories like these check out the start here podcast new episodes drop weekday mornings at 6 eastern wherever you get your podcasts coming up last minute holiday hacks how you can make decorations with things you already have in your home Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Reporting from the Federal Reserve, I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. Christmas is now just four days away, and many people are turning to TikTok for some hacks on how to deck the halls before the family gets into town. Well, Gans is here to put together some great last-minute decorating ideas and put them to the test. Take a look. It's not too late to unleash your inner elf this Christmas.
everybody turning to TikTok for some elf-like inspiration, where hashtag holiday hacks has racked up 3.1 billion views. Do you know the painter's tape hack? First up, turning microfiber feather dusters into mini Christmas trees. Step one, detach the duster from the handle and trim the fibers into a tree shape. I feel like I'm giving the Grinch a haircut. 6.30, dinner with me, I can't cancel that again. 6.30, dinner with me, I can't cancel that again. Now add fairy lights to your furry trees, but beware, they are nearly impossible to untangle. Just five minutes of this. Riveting television. Secure your mini Christmas trees into some floral styrofoam and boom, a tiny twinkly merry little masterpiece. Next up, the trendiest way to level up your living room, damage free, no hooks, tacks, or tape needed. Oh my gosh, look how it turned out. All you need is a shower curtain rod, AKA a tension rod and some garland. Some folks use zip ties to attach the garland to the rod, but these branches themselves can secure the strand in place just fine. Voila, mistletoe is optional. And finally, a holiday hack for achieving that vintage holiday look with more energy efficient lights, a knife, and ping pong balls. And it just adds like another layer of dimension to your tree. It has a little equator on it. You're not gonna puncture the equator. You're gonna go in the North Pole or the South Pole. Slide the ball over a light and repeat until your strand is complete. All right, those are cute. And Will's joining me now for a holiday hack right here on set along, on set, along with Dr. Patel. I'm already in. The Avengers I have see assembled. Cheesecake. Listen, all-star team aligned. That's right. I don't know if America is ready. Okay, so we uh, have one more hack for you guys, and this is perfect if you're serving up dessert. I think especially at an office party where you don't want other people's fingers kind of getting in your slice of cake. So what you're going to do, you can see there, is you take a knife, you wrap it in parchment paper or wax paper, uh -huh. and you slice like that. So that way, whenever you pull the cheesecake out, it's not sticking to the other slices of cheesecake, you know what I mean? I love so that. So it's like individual serving sizes and a, a very easy way to do that. Um, and because he has a PhD, I brought in my friend Dr. Patel here to pull off the holiday hack. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I approve with not having fingers all over other pieces yes, of the Yes, the doctor, the doctor's in the house, basically. Yes, that was that actually looked kind of intimidating because she was doing it very quickly. She was. I think the video's a little bit sped up. Okay, so she was, she <laughs> but we don't like. like. We don't have the special effects team here to speed you up, so you're gonna have to do it. All right, let's see it. Oh, I'm it. doing it. Let's you're see it. it, you're doing it. Uh, if it helps, the first slice she did was all the way across. I think One we need big, to cut it, right? Yeah. This is way, no, this no, parchment paper. You cut it as it's happening. Oh, no, cut but you need to cut the parchment paper, right? I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, so, uh, there you go. I feel like I'm rushing, too. Little strippies. Are you a surgeon? <laughs> I'm not a surgeon. <laughs> He's not a cheesecake surgeon. But, but here's the thing, is putting stitches on a I think you only need one piece. We don't need you to cut the whole putting cake. Putting stitches on a kid's I love face how nervous you are right can now. can be easier than doing this, right? So here we go. This is way too big, but. Moment of truth. Just wait for the. Oh! Perfectly cut Look cheesecake slice for you two. It's honestly quite good. Here, we'll just trim the top. Yeah, I trim the top. There you go. Teamwork. Perfect. Jingle bells, cheesecake slices are going to be perfectly cut. Yes, they are. There you go. No one's fingers will please cut this parchment paper. <laughs> I got you, Dr. Patel. Hey. Hey. Hyperglycemia to, has never been so delicious. Are we going to get to eat this cheesecake? <laughs> All right, Dr. Patel is going to keep cutting the cake while... Will, you give us some tea, yeah, apparently. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to break down a little bit of tea for you. The tea is hot this morning, and I'm going to spill it. Okay, first up, I'm going to tell you about our first story, which is prompter roll up, I'm not off book. Uh, the greatest Hollywood duo coming to the big screen in the tradition of Lucy and Ethel, Rachel and Monica, and you could toss in a little bit of Benster and Stabler. Hannah Waddingham and Octavia Spencer are teaming up for a brand new series about a trained assassin played by Hannah and her best friend, played by Octavia, who has no idea about the secret life of her assassin bestie until a hit goes wrong and the two must go on the run together. The series doesn't have a title yet, but will come to Amazon Prime sometime soon. Fun! I like that team up. Isn't that exciting? Who would have thought to put them together? But whoever did, I love it. It's like us. Who would have thought to put us together, Dr. <laughs> Patel? But here we are. A genius. And all I gotta say is, How's this that is looking really, really good. Okay. You're impressed now. Love I am. it. Miss Macedo, 
from one duo to another. Barbie director Greta Gerwig and her writing partner Noah Baumbach have finally tied the knot. The couple have been together for 12 years. They share two sons together, and now they're ca capping off their big Barbie year by quietly getting married, not in Malibu or in a Mojo Dojo Casa house, but in a courthouse <laughs> right here in New York City. But it would have been so cool if it was in the Mojo Dojo Casa house. I would have loved it. He wears a fur coat. She wears a pink dress. I mean... A lot of beers in the mini fridge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Horses coming down the aisle. Speaking of horses, Ryan Gosling and Mark Ronson releasing a Christmas version of their hit, I'm Just Ken, from the Barbie movie. It's called I'm Just Ken, Merry Christmas, Barbie. Check it out. <laughs> uh, Gosling, who famously played Ken in the popular film, solidified his first ever Billboard Hot 100 with the movie version, which came out at number seven over 87 over the summer. Gosling's longtime love, Eva Mendes, shared some love for the holiday version of the now classic single, writing, Ken, not wait for this. I'm just Ken. Merry Christmas, Barbie is streaming everywhere now. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to anything you were saying because I was too busy watching how focused Dr. Mattel was sorry, let on me this in. cheesecake. The, the people Jingle need to bells, see. Ladies and gentlemen, <gasps> look at that. Wow. I see some perfectly cut I mean, cheesecake. that is that is impressive. You're All a right. man of many talents. Can we, Listen. can we eat it now? Yeah, let's pass it out. Can we, let's see those perfect slices. Perfect non-germy slices. Come on and get a perfectly cut cheesesteak slice, you too. <laughs> Pumpkin. Oh, okay. wow. what you, after everything They're I did. They're perfectly sliced and I'm yeating them around the maybe studio. Maybe we should let the doctor serve the cheesecake The point cheesecake was for too. it to be a hygienically cut piece yeah. and now <laughs> you're just You know what? Table. I'm going to yeah. eat it anyway. Cheers. Here's a fork. All right. Happy Blue holidays. Bands. Thank you. Happy holidays, pumpkin cheesecake to my two favorite oh, pumpkins. Oh, that's yummy. Oh. Thank you, friends. Cheers. cheers. Cheesecake cheers. Cheesecake cheers. <laughs> cheesecake cheers. And thank you at home for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, analysis. And cheesecake. And cheesecake. We'll be right back. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So many people start their day here. From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Boston, I'm Whit Johnson. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Today on ABC News Live, the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What do you need to know as you head out for Christmas? A deadly shooting in Prague. What police are saying after a gunman opened fire at a university near the Czech capital. And the staggering death toll in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry there says 20,000 people 
are now dead, 20,000, as negotiations continue for a ceasefire and for the release of more hostages. We're in Tel Aviv with the latest. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Moran, and our top story this hour, the holiday travel rush. It's underway. Just four days until Christmas now, millions of Americans are getting an early start to what's expected to be the busiest travel season ever. ABC's Jacqueline Lee is live at Los Angeles LAX airport. Hey, Jacqueline, what, what does LAX look like to you right now? Terry, great to be with you. We gotta say, we're all a little bit surprised because look at the non-existent lines over here. I mean, this is considered the busiest travel day for the Christmas season. And as you can see, there's really nothing over here, at least in the United Terminal. I can say though, when we were walking around a little bit earlier through baggage claim, that is where we saw the really long lines of people that were just waiting to get their bags checked. But at the moment, things are going pretty smoothly here at LAX, Terry. That's a good sign. So uh, what have you heard? Uh, any delays and cancellations across the country? What does it look like? Yep, so at the moment, I mean, we only have seven cancellations here at LAX. Things have gone really smoothly, but we did speak with a United representative about some of the concerns that they are worried about for this travel season. We do expect with the weather here in Los Angeles to matriculate into uh, the Midwest and also on the eastern seaboard. So we are monitoring that closely. Um, but again, we are shooting for those on-time departures and getting folks to their final destination. And Terry, just to add on to that, something interesting that United is doing to work on cancellations and delays, something that they have changed from last year, is they are expediting the boarding process. So you will be seated based off of if you're sitting in the window, the middle, or the aisle seat. So that way they can get the planes going off on time. It's something that they're just trying to improve, uh, hopefully, so you don't have any sort of meltdown like Southwest and other airlines dealt with last year. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it, but it sounds like a plan. Anyway, so... Uh, over the next few days, as Christmas arrives, what can we expect? You know, what experts are saying is that this is going to be the busiest um, Christmas travel season that they've seen in a really long time. I mean, we have about 49,000 flights that are expected to be leaving just today, um, with millions of people traveling throughout the entire country. And this is people really just getting back to normal um, who have not fully resumed since the pandemic hit. Um, so ultimately, we're going to see a lot of people crowding airports. And ultimately, as you said, we'll see how it all shakes out in the next few days and weeks ahead, Terry. All right, Jacqueline Lee, you're on the spot there. Thanks very much, LAX. Thanks very much. Now let's talk about the weather. Powerful storm is slamming the West Coast, threatening to disrupt holiday travel there where Jacqueline was. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow and flash flooding and mudslides as well. ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin, she's tracking the holiday forecast. So, Melissa, let's begin out there in the western half of the country. What do they have in store for this holiday weekend? Well, Tara, I want to start off with Southern California, specifically Santa Barbara. We have a flash flood warning there right now. Already four inches of rain has fallen. An additional four inches on top of that is expected this afternoon. That can bring mudslides, debris flow, and that elevated flood risk extends back through just north of L.A. through today. And then the flood threat extends all the way into southern Arizona. So let me time it out for you. Over the next 24 to 48 hours or so, you can see here by later tonight, L.A. stretching down to San Diego. That's where it's going to be the heaviest rain through tomorrow morning. That low pushes into southern Arizona, places like Phoenix, back through Tucson, getting in on that heavy rain, even some elevated mountain snow there. And that's why we have these flood watches in effect from L.A. back through San Diego all the way through Phoenix. Now, where is the storm going after it's done with the southwest? Well, it moves right over the Rockies. Heavy snow expected for places like Denver up through Rapid City as we head into Sunday morning. Lots of heavy rain stretching up and down the plains, though, anywhere from places like up into the upper Mississippi River Valley, Kansas City, back through parts of Oklahoma City, Dallas to Houston could see some severe thunderstorms. And look at this timestamp. Terry, that's Christmas Eve. We'll be watching the storm right through the Christmas holiday. All right, there's a lot of moisture there. Cold weather here. Is it possible we're going to get a white Christmas out on the East Coast? Well, that's what everyone's asking. And for all of you snow lovers, I really don't have much good news. But like you said, it's cold now. You can see that dip in the jet stream here for the east. It's chilly, but that unseasonably mild air is heading straight for the east coast for Christmas. Look at this. By Monday in New York City, a high of 50 degrees and sunshine. It's very warm ahead of that system. So we're looking at a high of 57, near 60 degrees there in D.C. 
with, again, sunny skies on Christmas. So anyone that likes that mild, almost spring-like weather is really going to enjoy this uh, Christmas forecast. Where can we see some light snow potentially for that morning of Christmas? You can wake up and you could see some of that white Christmas there anywhere up into parts of the northern Dakotas into northern Minnesota. I think that's the only spot they're going to see anything close to a white Christmas, Terry. All right, well, good for them. We'll all have Christmas, uh, whatever the weather. Thanks very much, Melissa Griffin. Appreciate it. Well, now we turn overseas in a disturbing story. We're following the latest developments in a mass shooting in the Czech Republic. Police say a man opened fire at Charles University in Prague. Authorities say at least 15 people are dead there, dozens wounded from the shooting at one of the school's academic buildings. We're now hearing from the police. The gunman who was shot dead on the scene was a 24-year-old man from a village just outside Prague and was a student at the university. Let's bring in uh, Lama Hassan for more on this from London. Uh, Lama, uh, you know, what can you tell us about this uh, yeah, shocking, Terry, as you... Yeah, incident. absolutely. And I think the nation is coming to terms with this shocking incident. You know, the head of police in Prague just gave a press conference. Uh, he said that the gunman, as you rightly said, was a 24-year-old student at the Charles University. He entered the building around 3.30 p.m. local time, shooting and killing 15 people and injuring 25 others. We understand at least 11 of them were seriously wounded. Witnesses said that the gunman was walking through the corridors, shooting people inside the university building. Staff inside the classrooms were told to stay put, to use the furniture in the rooms and put uh, put them in front of the door. So essentially barricading themselves in. The rest of the university was evacuated and you can see people running, uh, trying to run away, to get away from the university, running across the iconic Charles Bridge. The police were on the scene quickly eliminating the gunman in their words. That's what they said. Uh, they do believe that he acted alone and at this point they say there is no imminent danger terry yeah it's just it's a horrific scene there and one alas that in america we're very much used to but in europe and prague and yeah, this is obviously extremely rare is there any sense of of any kind of motive at this point you're absolutely right. It is rare. At this point, we don't have any more details on a possible motive. But what we do know, and again, this is coming from the head of police, they believe the shooter was inspired by similar mass shootings that have happened in other countries abroad. And I'm sure we'll get more information as the police investigate this incident, which has become the worst deadly shooting since its independence about 30 years ago, since the country's independence. Terry. It, al it almost sounds like, a, like an American contagion has caught uh, their let's hope doesn't spread. Lama Hassan in London, thank you very much for that. No problem. Now to the war between Israel and Hamas. A new report from the United Nations says more than half a million people in Gaza are now, quote, starving because of the lack of food and aid that is getting into that territory. This comes as the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says the death toll there has topped 20,000, 20,000 dead. This makes for negotiations for another temporary ceasefire and the release of even more hostages even more critical. And ABC News foreign correspondent Britt Clement is in Israel with more. Oh my God, did you hear that? Yes, yes, we did. Oh my God. Civilians and journalists caught in an Israeli airstrike. And as the war nears its 12th week, a grim milestone in Gaza, 20,000 killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. We are just collateral damage. Arwa Naif is a mother of two, forced to evacuate five times already since the start of the war. There is no one single place where you can say, here it's a secure place where I can sleep the night. It is worse every day. It's getting worse every day. But the war unlikely to end soon in Beirut. <laughs> a senior Hamas leader saying there's no hostage deal without a ceasefire. One of those released hostages returning to his home on Kibbutz Beri Wednesday, recalling his nightmare. The last thing I remember is being carried away and the my girlfriend say I love you. House by house, charred out. Painful reminders of the horrors committed that day as pressure intensifies on the government to bring the rest of the hostages home. And Britt Clinette is with us in Israel right now. Britt, tell us what's, what's happening there. You had some kind of protest? 
Yeah, so I'm outside the Defence Ministry and I think you can kind of sense the frustration here, Terry. Hostage families really are calling on the government to get their loved ones home. The War Cabinet will meet shortly and they want a deal, Terry. They want some answers and they want the, the fate of their loved ones to be the top priority. They've been gathering here every single day. I'm going to move through here so you kind of get a sense of, of, the, of the frustration, of the anger, of the intensity here, the desire to get them home. They've been meeting here every single night since those three hostages were accidentally killed by the IDF. They're saying time is running out, that they don't want their families to be next to be killed. Uh, but, you know, we've heard from the White House saying that serious negotiations are underway. Israel striking a less kind of optimistic tone, saying uh, that there are no direct negotiations with Hamas out currently. Hamas, though, telling ABC News that in the latest round of talks in Egypt, no uh, deal was reached. So there's some discrepancy there. Uh, but an Israeli official also saying that uh, they're shaping up a new hostage strategy. That's one we're going to watch as this war cabinet meets. And hopefully uh, we'll get some answers. These guys certainly want to see uh, negotiations take place as soon as possible. You can hear them yell, now, deal, now. And, and what you've just told us uh, is is bad news for that wish because it, it sounds like the Israelis are determined to continue this phase of the war and to turn to the other side of the border. According to the World Health Organization, there are no fully functioning hospitals left in Gaza. So that just deepens the humanitarian crisis there. The, uh, a child actually dies every 10 minutes in Gaza, according to the World Health Organization. So what is the, we hear the negotiations around the hostages. How are they addressing what is right now the world's worst humanitarian crisis? Terry, the situation in Gaza, I mean, it's growing more bleak by the day, by the hour. I want to give you another stat by the WHO, which said 93% of the population in Gaza is facing crisis levels of hunger. At least one in four households facing catastrophic conditions. Now, I spoke to one woman, Ara Naive. She, with her family, has, has moved five times, evacuated moved with the family, evacuated again. She says, you know, you can't imagine the conditions we're under. No electricity, uh, barely any water, uh, food. She showed me a, a, a kind of pile of vegetables and said, this is supposed to feed 23 people uh, for a few days. So again, the situation increasingly dire. I want to actually uh, cut to a little bit of sound from Ara because I think you really you get a sense of, of what's happening there. This is shot from our producer inside Gaza right now. Let's take a listen. Even though you have nothing, completely nothing to do with all this fight, you can still be one of the death tolls or the injured or the casualties because we believe totally that no matter, no, no matter what's the number, we are just collateral damage. We've had our communications cut off. Okay, we see we see that, and and Brit, you know that that catastrophe, humanitarian ca catastrophe. The Israelis obviously motivated by the horror that was visited on their country on October the seventh. And now I understand there's a video from Hamas showing the three bodies, of the hostages, a accidentally killed by the IDF, being taken back to Israel. What what can you tell us about that? Okay, so we've lost uh, Brit Clinton uh, in the middle of that. Protest families demanding the, re uh, the release of their hostages, demanding their government, the Israeli government, do more. And we thank her for that report from Israel in this war. We're going to take a break. Coming up, the battle over the border. Texas Governor Greg Abbott flying over 100 migrants to Chicago now as border facilities fill up. And agents say they are overwhelmed and overworked. we got the latest on the crisis at this border and what it means for the election coming up. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah! 
traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting with the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoon. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wiener Mobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Well, welcome back. As the crisis at the southern border grows, Texas Governor Greg Abbott says his state is overwhelmed and has now begun to fly migrants from Texas to Chicago, dump them there. New video shows more than 100 migrants arriving at Chicago's O'Hare Airport after taking a chartered plane courtesy of the Texas government. Chicago officials say they urgently need more help from the government as Abbott vows to send even more asylum seeker seekers up north. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the details. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission. Adding, until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much-needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. A record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today. And New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their Cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. Terry, there are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, of $200 million per day. Terry? Uh, the cost of dollars and humanitarian. Thank you. We thank you. I want to thank Aaron for that report. Let's talk about the crisis at the southern border. It's proven to be a major issue on the campaign trail just a few weeks away now from the Iowa caucuses on January 15th. ABC News political director Rick Klein joins us now to talk about this. Rick, the White House predictably slamming this move by Governor Abbott to fly migrants north and dump them there. He's saying he's, quote, showing how little regard for or respect he has for human beings, as the White House says and calling the flight to Chicago a, quote, political stunt. Well, 
it may or may not be. It's a political problem for the president, isn't it? How big do you think? Oh, no question. And I think it's something the White House is attuned to. And, Perry, I think it also uh, f it feeds into the negotiations that have been going right through the holiday season around potential border security. A lot of people on President Biden's left are, frankly, angry that the White House would engage in, in the kind of negotiations they are with Republicans. Republicans looking for some uh, harsh border, harsher border sanctions and, and security precautions. But the fact that the White House and Democrats are engaging, I think, rec is a recognition of the reality, the images. And the, and the humanity that, um, that, that, that is the reality of the situation on the border right now, it's a big problem because I think it also feeds a perception that's out there in the, in the populace among, among voters that things are just out of control. Yeah, that Biden, he's been president now three years, and, and this is the, as bad as it's ever been. There are many factors, of course, but the buck stops in the office with no corners, and so he's going to have to own it. Uh, so, Rick, since we have you, I want to talk about these these legal cases in so many states, like Maine now, in light of the decision by the Colorado Supreme Court to disqualify Donald Trump from that state's 2024 primary ballot due to his role in January 6th. And I've seen some calls from Democrats and articles in, uh, in liberal publications saying, why stop with Trump? There were members of Congress, there were state officials who were involved, they believe, in the effort to overturn the country, uh, the, the election the country had. So. How, how big an issue is this going to be, and which way will it cut? Well, I, I think politically, it probably only helps Donald Trump. Um, as we've discussed, this is part of his core messaging, and he's incorporated in it, and even his fellow Republicans, the people that are running against him in the primaries, are buying into the notion this is somehow weaponized justice departments or uh, or legal efforts that, that were launched by Democrats. Uh, look, I think some of this was litigated in the midterm elections. We had a couple of court challenges trying to get people off of ballots at the congressional level. None of them ultimately succeeded or ended up making a difference. This Colorado one is very significant, though, because it opens the door for other states to do the same. You mentioned Maine. We're expecting a decision there by close of business tomorrow, right before Christmas. The, the lieutenant governor of California has raised the possibility of excluding Trump from the ballot there, and the nation's largest state has the largest number of delegates to the Republican convention. So we could see sort of a patchwork of different states coming down in different directions, places where Trump's on the ballot, places where he's off. As you said, maybe lower candidate, uh, lower ranking candidates for office could also be impacted. Ultimately, I don't see how the Supreme Court doesn't weigh in on this, just given the contradiction we're seeing from these different courts. Colorado changed the game. It was the first time any court had felt uh, had felt that it was appropriate to rule that Trump cannot be on the ballot uh, for president. Uh, and I think that just requires now a uh, word from the nation's highest court. Right, because it looks like the courts are basically deciding, you know, primary by primary around the country who's going to be on the ballot, who isn't, and the Supreme Court is probably going to want to sort that out. Good luck to them. Rick Klein, thanks very much, as always. You bet. Thanks, Terry. Well, coming up... Just days after Rudy Giuliani suffered a major legal loss, the former Trump attorney seems to be facing another financial blow. We'll have more details right after this break. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Give it to me. Hit me with them good vibes. Pictures on my phone lights. Everything is so fine. Little bit of sunshine. Dance some more, just a little bit. Breathe more, just a little bit. Smile a little more in a minute. Ah, 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 ah. number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted. 
babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Do you remember the moment you saw that gun? How could I forget? Come to County 911. Please hurry up. Somebody fire your shot. I just kept hearing bullets. Bang, bang. Pow, 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 pow. There's a crazy man out on a shooting spree. This is an Uber driver who's already shot someone. And then he just continues to pick up people. It was cold-blooded. People were panicked. He says, well, if I told you, it would blow your mind. The devil is a lie. The Deadly Ride, the 2020 event special, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Reporting from Ciudad Juarez on the U.S.-Mexico border, I'm Matt Rivers. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And welcome back to ABC News Live. Here's some of the other top headlines we're following at this hour. Rudy Giuliani has now filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Just days after a jury ordered them to pay nearly $150 million to two former Georgia election workers for defaming them with false accusations of election fraud. The ex-Trump attorney claims he owes between $100 to $500 million on his bankruptcy petition. This comes just a day after a judge ordered Giuliani to pay damages to the election workers immediately. A federal court is rejecting claims linking Tylenol to autism and ADHD, ruling research can't be used to prove that prenatal exposure to sedimentophen can lead to those disorders. 440 lawsuits have been brought against the makers of Tylenol and generic versions of the drug. Spokesperson for the makers of Tylenol say the court's ruling, quote, aligns with the position of the Food and Drug Administration. And Honda is recalling about two and a half million cars in the U.S. over risks of a fuel pump failure that can cause an engine to stall while driving increasing chances of crash. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration is urging drivers to visit their local dealership to replace the fuel pump free of charge. Well, thanks for streaming with us. I'm Terry Moran. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on various streaming services on the ABC News app and, of course, on abcnews.com, too. The news never stops. We'll be right back. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching? Watching Saturdays on ABC News Live. What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. What 
What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. ABC News, America's number one news source. Today on ABC News Live, the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What do you need to know as you head out for Christmas? A deadly shooting in Prague. What police are saying after a gunman opened fire at a university near the Czech capital. And the staggering death toll in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry there says 20,000 people are now dead, 20,000, as negotiations continue for a ceasefire and for the release of more hostages. We're in Tel Aviv with the latest. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Moran, and our top story this hour, the holiday travel rush. It's underway. Just four days until Christmas now, millions of Americans are getting an early start to what's expected to be the busiest travel season ever. ABC's Jacqueline Lee is live at Los Angeles LAX Airport. Hey, Jacqueline, what, what does LAX look like to you right now? Terry, great to be with you. We got to say, we're all a little bit surprised because look at the non-existent lines over here. I mean, this is considered the busiest travel day for the Christmas season. And as you can see, there's really nothing over here, at least in the United Terminal. I can say, though, when we were walking around a little bit earlier through baggage claim, that is where we saw the really long lines of people that were just waiting to get their bags checked. But at the moment, things are going pretty smoothly here at LAX, Terry. That's a good sign. So uh, what have you heard? Uh, any delays and cancellations across the country? What does it look like? Yep, so at the moment, I mean, we only have seven cancellations here at LAX. Things have gone really smoothly, but we did speak with a United representative about some of the concerns that they are worried about for this travel season. We do expect with the weather here in Los Angeles to matriculate into uh, the Midwest and also on the eastern seaboard. So we are monitoring that closely. Uh, but again, we are shooting for those on-time departures and getting folks to their final destination. Just to add on to that, something interesting that United is doing to work on cancellations and delays, something that they have changed from last year, is they are expediting the boarding process. So you will be seated based off of if you're sitting in the window, the middle, or the aisle seat. So that way they can get the planes going off on time. It's something that they're just trying to improve, uh, hopefully, so you don't have any sort of meltdown like Southwest and other airlines dealt with last year. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it, but it sounds like a plan. Anyway, so... Uh, over the next few days, as Christmas arrives, what can we expect? You know, what experts are saying is that this is going to be the busiest um, Christmas travel season that they've seen in a really long time. I mean, we have about 49,000 flights that are expected to be leaving just today, um, with millions of people traveling throughout the entire country. And this is people really just getting back to normal um, who have not fully resumed since the pandemic hit. Um, so ultimately, we're going to see a lot of people crowding airports. And ultimately, as you said, we'll see how it all shakes out in the next few days and weeks ahead, Terry. All right, Jacqueline Lee, you're on the spot there. Thanks very much, LAX. Thanks very much. Now let's talk about the weather. Powerful storm is slamming the West Coast, threatening to disrupt holiday travel there where Jacqueline was. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow and flash flooding and mudslides as well. ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin, she's tracking the holiday forecast. So, Melissa, let's begin out there in the western half of the country. What do they have in store for this holiday weekend? Well, Tara, I want to start off with Southern California, specifically Santa Barbara. We have a flash flood warning there right now. Already four inches of rain has fallen. An additional four inches on top of that is expected this afternoon. That can bring mudslides, debris flow, and that elevated flood risk extends back through just north of L.A. through today. And then the flood threat extends all the way into Southern Arizona. So let me time it out for you. Over the next 24 to 48 hours or so, you can see here by later tonight, L.A. stretching down to San Diego. That's where it's going to be the heaviest 
heaviest rain through tomorrow morning. That low pushes into southern Arizona, places like Phoenix, back through Tucson, getting in on that heavy rain, even some elevated mountain snow there. And that's why we have these flood watches in effect from L.A. back through San Diego all the way through Phoenix. Now, where is the storm going after it's done with the southwest? Well, it moves right over the Rockies. Heavy snow expected for places like Denver up through Rapid City as we head into Sunday morning. Lots of heavy rain stretching up and down the plains, though, anywhere from places like up into the upper Mississippi River Valley, Kansas City, back through parts of Oklahoma City. Dallas to Houston could see some severe thunderstorms. And look at this timestamp. Terry, that's Christmas Eve. We'll be watching the storm right through the Christmas holiday. All right, there's a lot of moisture there. Cold weather here. Is it possible we're going to get a white Christmas out on the East Coast? Well, that's what everyone's asking. And for all of you snow lovers, I really don't have much good news. But like you said, it's cold now. You can see that dip in the jet stream here for the east. It's chilly, but that unseasonably mild air is heading straight for the East Coast for Christmas. Look at this. By Monday in New York City, a high of 50 degrees and sunshine. It's very warm ahead of that system. So we're looking at a high of 57, near 60 degrees there in D.C. with, again, sunny skies on Christmas. So anyone that likes that mild, almost spring-like weather is really going to enjoy this Christmas. Uh, Christmas forecast. Where can we see some light snow potentially for that morning of Christmas? You can wake up and you could see some of that white Christmas there anywhere up into parts of the northern Dakotas into northern Minnesota. I think that's the only spot they're going to see anything close to a white Christmas, Terry. All right. Well, good for them. We'll all have Christmas, uh, whatever the weather. Thanks very much, Melissa Griffin. Appreciate it. Well, now we turn overseas in a disturbing story. We're following the latest developments in a mass shooting in the Czech Republic. Police say a man opened fire at Charles University in Prague. Authorities say at least 15 people are dead there, dozens wounded from the shooting at one of the school's academic buildings. We're now hearing from the police. The gunman who was shot dead on the scene was a 24-year-old man from a village just outside Prague and was a student at the university. Let's bring in... Uh, Lama Hassan, for more on this from London. Uh, Lama, uh, you know, what can you tell us about this? Uh yeah, shocking, Terry, as you, yeah, person. absolutely. And I think the nation is coming to terms with this shocking incident. You know, the head of police in Prague just gave a press conference. Uh, he said that the gunman, as you rightly said, was a 24 year old student at the Charles University. He entered the building around 3.30 p.m. local time, shooting and killing 15 people and injuring 25 others. We understand at least 11 of them were seriously wounded. Witnesses said that the gunman was walking through the corridors, shooting people inside the university building. Staff inside the classrooms were told to stay put, to use the furniture in the rooms and put uh, put them in front of the door. So essentially barricading themselves in. The rest of the university was evacuated and you can see people running, uh, trying to run away, to get away from the university, running across the iconic Charles Bridge. The police were on the scene quickly, eliminating the gunman in their words. That's what they said. Uh, they do believe that he acted alone and at this point they say there is no imminent danger, Terry. Yeah, it's just, it's a horrific scene there, and one, alas, that in America we're very much used to, but in Europe, in Prague, and this is obviously extremely rare, is there any sense of, of any kind of motive at this point? You're absolutely right. It is rare. At this point, we don't have any more details on a possible motive. But what we do know, and again, this is coming from the head of police, they believe the shooter was inspired by similar mass shootings that have happened in other countries abroad. And I'm sure we'll get more information as the police investigate this incident, which has become the worst deadly shooting since its independence about 30 years ago, since the country's independence. Terry. It, al it almost sounds like, a, like an American contagion has caught uh, there, let's hope it doesn't spread. Lama Hassan in London, thank you very much for that. No problem. Now to the war between Israel and Hamas, a new report from the United Nations says more than half a million people in Gaza are now, quote, starving because of the lack of food and aid that is getting into that territory. This comes as the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says the death toll there has topped 20,000, 20,000 dead. This makes for negotiations for another temporary ceasefire and the release of even more hostages even more critical. And ABC News foreign correspondent Britt Clement is in Israel with more. My God, did you hear that? Yes, yes, we did. Oh, my God. 
Civilians and journalists caught in an Israeli airstrike. And as the war nears its 12th week, a grim milestone in Gaza, 20,000 killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. We are just collateral damage. Arwa Naif is a mother of two, forced to evacuate five times already since the start of the war. There is no one single place where you can say, here it's a secure place where I can sleep the night. It is worse every day. It's getting worse every day. But the war unlikely to end soon. In Beirut, a senior Hamas leader saying there's no hostage deal without a ceasefire. One of those released hostages returning to his home on Kibbutz Beri Wednesday, recalling his nightmare. The last thing I remember is being carried away and the while my girlfriend say I love you. House by house, charred out. Painful reminders of the horrors committed that day as pressure intensifies on the government to bring the rest of the hostages home. And Britt Clinette is with us in Israel right now. Britt, tell us what's, what's happening there. You had some kind of protest? Yeah, so I'm outside the Defence Ministry and I think you can kind of sense the frustration here, Terry. Hostage families really are calling on the government to get their loved ones home. The War Cabinet will meet shortly and they want a deal, Terry. They want some answers and they want the, the fate of their loved ones to be the top priority. They've been gathering here every single day. I'm going to move through here so you kind of get a sense of, of, the, of the frustration, of the anger, of the intensity here, the desire to get them home. Home. They've been meeting here every single night since those three hostages were accidentally killed by the IDF. They're saying time is running out, that they don't want their families to be next to be killed. Uh, but, you know, we've heard from the White House saying that serious negotiations are underway. Israel's striking a less kind of optimistic tone, saying uh, that there are no direct negotiations with Hamas out currently. Hamas, though, telling ABC News that in the latest round of talks in Egypt, no uh, deal was reached. So there's some discrepancy there. Uh, but an Israeli official also saying that uh, they're shaping up a new hostage strategy. That's one we're going to watch as this war cabinet meets. And we'll hopefully, uh, we'll get some answers. These guys certainly want to see uh, negotiations take place as soon as possible. You can hear them yell, now, deal, now. And then what you've just told us uh, is is bad news for that wish because it, it sounds like the Israelis are determined to continue this phase of the war and to turn to the other side of the border. According to the World Health Organization, there are no fully functioning hospitals left in Gaza. So that just deepens the humanitarian crisis there. The, uh, a child actually dies every 10 minutes in Gaza, according to the World Health Organization. So what is the, we hear the negotiations around the hostages. How are they addressing what is right now the world's worst humanitarian crisis? Terry, the situation in Gaza, I mean, it's growing more bleak by the day, by the hour. I want to give you another stat by the WHO, which said 93% of the population in Gaza is facing crisis levels of hunger. At least one in four households facing catastrophic conditions. Now, I spoke to one woman, Ara Naif. She, with her family, has, has moved five times, evacuated moved with the family, evacuated again. She says, you know, you can't imagine the conditions we're under. No electricity, uh, barely any water, uh, food. She showed me a, a, a kind of pile of vegetables and said, this is supposed to feed 23 people uh, for a few days. So again, the situation increasingly dire. I want to actually uh, cut to a little bit of sound from Ara because I think you really you get a sense of, of what's happening there. This is shot from our producer inside Gaza right now. Let's take a listen. Even though you have nothing, completely nothing to do with all this fight, you can still be one of the death tolls or the injured or the casualties because we believe totally that no matter, no, no matter what's the number, we are just collateral damage. Uh, Britt Clinton, uh, in the middle of that protest, families demanding the, re uh, the release of their hostage, demanding their government, the Israeli government, do more. And we thank her for that report from Israel in this war. We're going to take a break. Coming up, the battle over the border. Texas Governor Greg Abbott flying over 100 migrants to Chicago now as border facilities fill up. And agents say they are overwhelmed and overworked. we got the latest on the crisis at this border and what it means for the election coming up.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families front. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So many people start their day here. From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Do you remember the moment you saw that gun? How could I forget? Come to County 911. Please hurry up. Somebody fire your shot. I just kept hearing bullets. Bang, bang. Pow, 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 pow. There's a crazy man out on a shooting spree. This is an Uber driver who's already shot someone. And then he just continues to pick up people. It was cold-blooded. People were panicked. He says, well, if I told you, it would blow your mind. The devil is a lie. The Deadly Ride, the 2020 event special, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. ABC News, America's number one news source. Welcome back. As the crisis at the southern border grows, Texas Governor Craig says his state is overwhelmed and has now begun to fly migrants from Texas to Chicago, dump them there. New video shows more than 100 migrants arriving at Chicago's O'Hare Airport after taking a chartered plane courtesy of the Texas government. Chicago officials say they urgently need more help from the government as Abbott vows to send even more asylum seeker seekers up north. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the details. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. A record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. 
There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. Terry, there are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, of $200 million per day. Terry? I want to thank Aaron for that report. Let's talk about the crisis at the southern border. It's proven to be a major issue on the campaign trail just a few weeks away now from the Iowa caucuses on January 15th. ABC News political director Rick Klein joins us now to talk about this. Rick, the White House predictably slamming this move by Governor Abbott to fly migrants north. Director Rick Klein joins us now to talk about this. Rick, the White House predictably slamming this move by Governor Abbott to fly migrants north and dump them there. He's saying he's, quote, showing how little regard for or respect he has for human beings, as the White House says, and calling the flight to Chicago a, quote, political stunt. Well, it may or may not be. It's a political problem for the president, isn't it? How big do you think? Oh, no question. And I think it's something the White House is attuned to. And, Terry, I think it also uh, f feeds into the negotiations that have been going right through the holiday season around potential border security. A lot of people on President Biden's left are, frankly, angry that the White House would engage in, in the kind of negotiations they are with Republicans. Republicans looking for some uh, harsh border, harsher border sanctions and, and security precautions. But the fact that the White House and Democrats are engaging, I think, rec is a recognition of the reality, the images. And the, and the humanity that, um, that, that that is the reality of the situation on the border right now, it's a big problem because I think it also feeds a perception that's out there in the in the populace among among voters that things are just out of control. Yeah, that Biden, he's been president now three years, and and this is the, as bad as it's ever been. There are many factors, of course, but the buck stops in the office with no corners, and so he's going to have to own it. Uh, so, Rick, since we have you, I want to talk about these these legal cases in so many states, like Maine now, in light of the decision by the Colorado Supreme Court to disqualify Donald Trump from that state's 2024 primary ballot due to his role in January 6th. And I've seen some calls from Democrats and articles in, uh, in liberal publications saying, why stop with Trump? There were members of Congress, there were state officials who were involved, they believe, in the effort to overturn the country, uh, the, the election the country had. So. How, how big an issue is this going to be, and which way will it cut? Well, I, I think politically, it probably only helps Donald Trump. Um, as we've discussed, this is part of his core messaging, and he's incorporated in it, and even his fellow Republicans, the people that are running against him in the primaries, are buying into the notion this is somehow weaponized justice departments or uh, or legal efforts that, that were launched by Democrats. Uh, look, I think some of this was litigated in the midterm elections. We had a couple of court challenges trying to get people off of ballots at the congressional level. None of them ultimately succeeded or ended up making a difference. This Colorado one is very significant, though, because it opens the door for other states to do the same. You mentioned Maine. We're expecting a decision there by close of business tomorrow, right before Christmas. The, the lieutenant governor of California has raised the possibility of excluding Trump from the ballot there, and the nation's largest state has the largest number of delegates to the Republican convention. So we could see sort of a patchwork of different states coming down in different directions, places where Trump's on the ballot, places where he's off. As you said, maybe lower candidate, uh, lower ranking candidates for office could also be impacted. Ultimately, I don't see how the Supreme Court doesn't weigh in on this, just given the contradiction we're seeing from these different courts. Colorado changed the game. It was the first time any court had felt uh, had felt that it was appropriate to rule that Trump cannot be on the ballot uh, for president. Uh, and I think that just requires now a uh, word from the nation's highest court. Right, because it looks like the courts are basically deciding, you know, primary by primary around the country who's going to be on the ballot, who isn't, and the Supreme Court is probably going to want to sort that out. Good luck to them. Rick Klein, thanks very much, as always. You bet. Thanks, Terry. Well, coming up... Just days after Rudy Giuliani suffered a major legal loss, the former Trump attorney seems to be facing another financial blow. We'll have more details right after this break. We have really good news. <laughs> oh I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted 
babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. Reporting from Bedminster, New Jersey, I'm Mary Bruce. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And welcome back to ABC News Live. Here's some of the other top headlines we're following at this hour. Rudy Giuliani has now filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, just days after a jury ordered them to pay nearly $150 million to two former Georgia election workers for defaming them with false accusations of election fraud. The ex-Trump attorney claims he owes between $100 to $500 million on his bankruptcy petition. This comes just a day after a judge ordered Giuliani to pay damages to the election workers immediately. A federal court is rejecting claims linking Tylenol to autism and ADHD, ruling research can't be used to prove that prenatal exposure to sedimentophen can lead to those disorders. 440 lawsuits have been brought against the makers of Tylenol and generic versions of the drug. Spokesperson for the makers of Tylenol say the court's ruling, quote, aligns with the position of the Food and Drug Administration. And Honda is recalling about 2.5 million cars in the U.S. over risks of a fuel pump failure that can cause an engine to stall while driving, increasing chances of crash. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration is urging drivers to visit their local dealership to replace the fuel pump free of charge. Well, thanks for streaming with us. I'm Terry Moran. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on various streaming services on the ABC News app and, of course, on abcnews.com, too. The news never stops. We'll be right back. So much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Give it to me. 
It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Memphis, I'm Steve Losanzani. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Today on ABC News Live, the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What you need to know as you head out for Christmas. The staggering death toll in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry there says 20,000 people are now dead as negotiations continue for a ceasefire and for the release of more hostages. We're in Tel Aviv with the latest. And the crisis at the border. Texas is now flying migrants to Chicago. As officials say, they are overwhelmed by a record number of people crossing the border. Those affected and how it could impact the 2024 election. We'll have that coming up. Hi, everyone. I'm Terry Moran, but we're going to begin our top story this hour. It's the holiday travel rush, and it is in full force right now. It's just four days until Christmas. Millions of Americans are getting an early start to what's expected to be the busiest travel season ever. ABC's Jacqueline Lee is live at Los Angeles' LAX airport. Jacqueline, looks kind of mellow there for it being the Christmas rush at <laughs> the scene for us. What is it, what is it like there? You know, Terry, what's interesting is for the several hours that we've been here, we've actually seen quite a few dogs. You know, a lot of people bring in their furry friends with them and all their flights to go to where they need to go for the Christmas holiday season. As you can see, the lines, there really aren't much at the moment. It's, it's very smooth. What we've been seeing is we'll see an influx of people come in, then we'll see longer lines, but they move through the TSA pretty quickly. I'll say the biggest jams that we've been seeing have been a baggage claim. Um, or baggage check, as I should say, is people who are trying to get their tickets, check their bags, and then go to their destination, Terry. All right, so uh, you're at LAX, one of the largest airports in the country and the world. Looks pretty smooth there. Record travel rush, however, expected at airports across the nation. What have you heard about any delays and cancellations? So at the moment, we're seeing about 1,700 um, 1700 delays across the country and only 75 cancellations. Overall, if you're looking at today's considered to be one of the the busiest travel day for, for the Christmas season, that's a pretty good deal, I'd say. Here at LAX, we're dealing with 114 delays and seven cancellations. Um, but take a listen to the representative from United that we spoke with earlier. One thing that we've done this year, we try and improve our boarding process. We've noticed a bit of an uptick in how long we're taking the board flight, so we reintroduced a program we call Wilma. Uh, Wilma essentially means that after our pre-board and first and second groups, uh, starting with group three, we have a window uh, seating passengers in group three. Group four is our metal seat passengers, and then group five are aisle seat passengers. <laughs> And Terry, what you listened from that is ultimately United trying to streamline that process to prevent any meltdowns that we saw last year with Southwest Airlines learning from those experiences and from what they observed. So United is a trust trying to make this as smooth as possible, Terry. Well, that's what we all hope for. So what do you think now that Christmas is just a few days away? So far, so good, as you're telling us. What can we expect to see? 
So according to industry experts, today is the busiest day, but tomorrow will be the second busiest day. There's going to be about 39 million people traveling via air for the next two weeks. But tomorrow we're expected to see about 44,000 flights uh, departing across the country. So it'll be it'll be pretty busy, Terry. All right. It's Christmas time. Jacqueline Lee, thanks very much. Turn to the weather now uh, that the, all these people are going to have to travel through. I'm staying home, but there's a powerful storm slamming the West Coast right now. And it is threatening to disrupt holiday travel. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow and flash flooding and mudslides. Avis News meteorologist Melissa Griffin's tracking the holiday forecast across the country. But Melissa, begin on the western half of the country with that big system. What are you looking at there? Well, Terry, we just saw Jacqueline at LAX. It looked super quiet there, and it's because the timing of this storm is actually bringing good news. The timing is on our side for these travelers. You can see here the heaviest rain is to the north of LA. So places like Santa Barbara, that's where they're getting slammed right now. So the timing for the heaviest rain for Los Angeles and the city itself looks like it's going to be more so into the overnight hour. So hopefully by tomorrow morning, it starts to shift south. San Diego getting it tomorrow morning. Then it pushes into southern Arizona. Phoenix back through Tucson getting in on that heavy rain, even potentially some scattered thunderstorms there as well. Mountain snow in these elevated mountains here in parts of New Mexico and Arizona. And you can see that flood watch that really extends from Santa Barbara to L.A. back down to San Diego all the way to Phoenix. And that goes into effect through tomorrow afternoon. So we're really dealing with this storm right through Friday. You can see there Santa Barbara to L.A. That's through the overnight hours tonight. That's where we have that elevated flood risk. Mudslides and debris flow possible there. But we could see flooding all the way back through Arizona, and that's through the day tomorrow. Now, where does the storm go as we head into the holiday weekend? Right over the Rockies and places like Denver, back through Rapid City. If you're traveling on Christmas Eve, this is at 7 a.m. on Sunday. You're going to want to be careful anywhere from the northern to central Rockies back through the northern plains. That's where we could see some snow. Then it's all about the heavy rain on the, on the warm side of the system. Dallas back through Houston could see some thunderstorms with this. So really could be a little bit of a mess in the center of the country, Terry, on Christmas Eve. All right, how about the East Coast? Look, I've, I've always felt that, that people who are experts in the weather and broadcast as you do tell us, they're, they're kind of against cold weather. I, I've never understood that. Like, oh, good, it's going to warm up. But for Christmas, we want cold weather, right? A white Christmas. What, is, what are we looking at? We do, Terry. A lot of people do. Although some people I talked to today were actually begging me for a warm Christmas. So, so it could be split up a little bit, but... It's for the warm weather lovers this year, 2023 for Christmas. This chilly air in place now, we're seeing it as we head into the weekend, but that's going to be pushed off. And now we have what we'd like to call a warm blast for Christmas, a mild Christmas from Chicago. Look at this, in the 50s, right through the holiday weekend, all the way to New York, back through D.C. in the mid-50s, with lots of sunshine on the East Coast. So again, if you're wishing for that white Christmas, you're really not going to get it unless you're up in the Northern Plains in the upper Midwest. Could see some light snow, those light flurries on Christmas morning, but anywhere else, you're going to see sunshine and warmth on the East Coast and maybe some rain possible for parts of the Mississippi River Valley, Terry. All right. All right. We'll take it. Still Christmas. Melissa Griffin, thanks very much. All right. We're going to go overseas now. This disturbing story out of the Czech Republic. We are following the latest developments in a mass shooting there, which has become one of the country's worst mass shootings in history. In Prague, downtown Prague, police opened fire at Charles University. Authorities say at least... 15 people are dead from a shooter there and dozens wounded from the shooting scene at one of the school's academic buildings. For more on this, let's bring in ABC News Lama Hassan. Lama, well, what can you tell us right now about this incident? Yeah, hey, Terry. So we have more details on this horrific attack. Just a short while ago, the head of the police in Prague gave a press conference saying that the gunman was a 24-year-old student at the university's Faculty of Philosophy. And at 3.30 p.m. local time this afternoon, he entered the university. He went to the fourth floor of the building and started firing his weapon, killing at least 15 people, as you said, and injuring 24 others. Several of them are severely wounded. We understand that at least uh, 200 students were moved to safety and you can see uh, video online some of these students running away from the faculty and over the Charles Bridge to safety even though the police did storm the building and they did eliminate the shooter those are their words he, it is still very much an active scene with ambulances and police outside the university locking down the entire area Terry I mean, it's such a terrifying scene. Prague is such a beautiful city, and yeah. like many European cities, most European cities, they, this is incredibly rare. And I just wonder, given the Israeli-Hamas war and the way that the world has been 
uh, just inflamed by the by that and the, by the terror attack that triggered it. Is there any potential that this might be linked to that? So, Terry, I think it's fair to say that a lot of cities around the world are on a heightened state of alert, boosting security because of a potential fallout from the Israeli-Hamas war, as you just said, especially now during the holidays when there are many large gatherings. But the head of police in the press conference did say that they don't think the shooting is linked to international terrorism. What is interesting is that the police do believe he was inspired by mass shootings that have happened abroad, but I'm sure we will be getting more details as they investigate this mass shooting. Terry. All right. A terrible tragedy in Prague. Lama Hassan in London, thank you. No problem. Well, 10 Americans are back on U.S. soil after being released in a high-stakes prisoner swap with Venezuela. As part of the deal, the Biden administration agreed to exchange Venezuelan Alex Saab. He is a close ally of President Nicolas Maduro. Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. Ten Americans jailed in Venezuela, back on American soil. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. The safe return home comes after months of secret negotiations. 38-year-old freed American businessman Savoy Wright describing the moment he called his family. I just FaceTimed them and I said, I'm, I'm on the way home, back to the U.S., and I love you, and we cried. Wright, one of six of the 10 Americans considered wrongfully detained, including Avon Hernandez, a Los Angeles public defender who was taken into custody last year near the border, accused of being a spy. All you think about when you're in prison is uh, how you didn't appreciate being free. Hernandez thanking President Biden for what he calls a difficult decision. He got us home and we're with our families and so we're incredibly grateful, all of us. Also returned to the U.S., fugitive Leonard Glenn Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, the mastermind of a $35 million bribery scheme, the largest corruption scandal in U.S. military history. In 2015, he pleaded guilty to using prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers to steer lucrative contracts to his companies. Here is Francis on an investigative podcast produced by Project Brazen in 2021. Everybody was in my pocket. I had them in my palm. I was just rolling them around. <laughs> and then I could just move the carriers like, you know, uh, paper ships in the, in the water. In exchange, the U.S. granting clemency to Alex Saab, a top ally of Venezuelan's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. Saab greeted on the tarmac by his wife and daughters, Gracias al pueblo de Venezuela. saying, I thank the people of Venezuela, I'm proud to serve the people of Venezuela and to serve this government. Saab was arrested in 2020 on money laundering charges. Saab was later welcomed at the presidential palace there. This all comes as the Biden administration is trying to improve relations with Venezuela in hopes the country moves towards free and fair elections. Terry? A long-term project there, but Americans home for the holidays. Martha Raditz, thanks very much. For between Israel and Hamas. A new report from the United Nations says more than half a million people in Gaza are now, quote, starving because of the lack of food there. This comes as the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says the death toll in Gaza has topped 20,000 people. This makes negotiations for another temporary ceasefire and the release of more hostages even more critical. And Avis News foreign news correspondent Britt Clement is in Israel with more. Terry, I'm outside the Defense Ministry here where families of those held in Gaza are gathering for a protest just as the War Cabinet is meeting inside that building there. They want to remind the government that they are demanding answers. They keep saying we, are, we need some kind of comprehensive uh, negotiation done right now. You get a sense of the frustration here. People have been gathering ever since those three hostages were killed accidentally by the IDF. They're saying time is running out and they're worried that their families will suffer a similar fate. Now, they're also telling me uh, that they hope that there will be some kind of uh, outcome of this meeting, that the government will prioritize their families. The White House striking a 
a rather optimistic tone, saying that serious negotiations are underway. But Hamas are telling ABC uh, that they want a comprehensive end to the fighting before any hostages uh, are released, before any deal is made. Uh, Hamas is saying that the talks in Egypt did not yield any results. So some discrepancy there. Meanwhile, the situation in Gaza is growing ever the more desperate. Uh, we know that uh, one, one child uh, is killed every 10 minutes. That's a huge and uh, extremely grim figure as the situation there, bleaker and bleaker by the day. Perry. Britt Clenet in Tel Aviv, thank you for that report. Well, coming up, the battle over the border. Texas Governor Greg Abbott flying over 100 migrants up to Chicago and dumping them there as border facilities in his state fill up and agents say they are overwhelmed and overworked. We've got the latest on the border crisis and what it means for the election coming up. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <laughs> Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day. On the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner Oh, Crooks 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back. The crisis at the southern border grows, and Texas Governor Greg Abbott says his state is overwhelmed, and he is now flying migrants from Texas to Chicago. New video shows over 100 migrants arriving at Chicago's O'Hare Airport after taking a chartered plane courtesy of the Texas state government. Chicago officials say they need to, urgently need more help from the U.S. government as Abbott vows to send even more asylum seekers up north. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the details. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago, 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally a record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. 
There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their Cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. Terry, there are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, of $200 million per day. Terry? A lot of money and a lot of suffering there on the border. It's broken. Aaron Katursky, thanks very much. So. so it's a political issue, too, the crisis at the southern border in this campaign. Just weeks away now from the Iowa caucuses on January 15th. Davis News political director joins us now to talk about this. Rick, let's just talk in general you know we see these stories we see this humanitarian catastrophe we see what is essentially disorder and a lack of security at the border I mean, Americans are looking at something that should be fixed and hasn't been how big of an issue is it for voters and how big of a problem for Biden well it's a huge one and I think you can see it in the rhetoric of Donald Trump the over the top rhetoric I should note uh, but uh, tapping into something very real in this country as are his fellow Republicans. And of course, it's not just the Republicans. I think you're seeing this reflected in the fact that Democrats are negotiating with Republicans around border security. They see the same images. They hear the same stories. They know the reality on the border. And frankly, uh, it would be in Biden's political interest to, to try to bring some order out of that, out of what is now a chaotic and horrific situation. I think his administration recognizes it. And I think they're trying to do what they can as we head into the election year. Well, on that, uh, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson today sent a letter to Biden urging him to take executive action on the border to try and stem the tide of migrants, trying to take care of the people who are there, trying to bring some logic to it. What's the likelihood of that? I think they're, they're trying to find the levers that they can press on their own, but there are limits to what any executive can do and what the executive branch can do unilaterally. There's always something, but the big solutions are going to con require congressional action. I think that's been a recognition of Democratic and Republican presidents, Terry, going back a couple of decades now. They're looking for immigration reform. They're looking for additional tools as part of a balanced approach. None of that seems to be forthcoming. There are the, the rumblings of, an, of, of potential negotiations that uh, broke up just a couple of days ago, hoping to get something done before the holidays, tied in with Ukraine funding, tied in with Israel funding. That seems to have uh, dissipated a bit, but it could get picked up after the first of the year. All right. It, it does seem like uh, the, it's a national problem. The national legislature needs to fix it, and the national legislature doesn't. But Biden might get the blame. But let's talk about the big picture in the campaign. Less than one month from the first votes being cast in the Iowa caucuses. What's the state of this race? Well, it's Trump's to lose in, in the Republic, on the Republican side. He is winning nationally by 30, 40 points, uh, winning in the, in the key states by slightly less, but still significant numbers. And he's in a situation where his team feels like they could close this out pretty early. If they sweep Iowa, they sweep New Hampshire, there's, I think, increasingly an air of desperation among the other candidates to try to break through, get something done in one of those early states to try to reset things. And then you just look at the calendar. It gets really brutal. About a month after New Hampshire, the South Carolina primary, that's Nikki Haley's home state. So even if it is a two-person race at the time, Trump has a couple of chances to close it out before Super Tuesday. I think we heard Nikki Haley say just a few minutes ago that the country, uh, the, the country may not be able to survive another four years of Trump, given the chaos surrounding her. I think that reflects the, the, the messaging reality these candidates have. They haven't been able to find a groove of an attack against Trump that's effective among Republican voters. And that's why the, the vast majority of Republican voters are still see, liking what they see in Donald Trump. Well, Rick, they haven't really tried to attack Donald Trump, have they? Because they, they, they want uh, his voters to come their way, so they don't want to be too mean to him. It's, it's like getting in a boxing match with a, with a pillowcase or something. And I just wonder <laughs> about New Hampshire. You do see in New Hampshire uh, that, that uh, Nikki Haley has a steady rise. You know, she's within shouting distance in some polls, 10 points or so. And, and Chris Christie there, he's in double digits. What's the chance that they consolidate, that they that the people who are running against Trump get out of each other's way, that maybe Christie says after Iowa, I, I'm, I'm for Nikki, and then maybe you have a real horse race in New Hampshire. What do you think of that? 
Yeah, I, I think if Ron DeSantis doesn't break through in Iowa, if he comes in a, a third or a distant third, you can imagine his campaign coming to an end. Chris Christie's put all of his eggs in the New Hampshire basket. He was asked just this morning, could he imagine himself supporting Nikki Haley? And he said it depends. He opened the door to it, but he really said he wants to see Nikki Haley take the fight to Donald Trump because Christie has been the one who has been trying, and it hasn't really helped him. It hasn't really made his numbers rise. Haley's the one that's kind of tried to do that middle-of-the-road approach, using a kind of passive term. Of, of, of the chaos surrounds him, but not wanting to directly engage with Trump for whatever it's worth. That seems to not have worked so far, but it might work in New Hampshire, where you've got a huge number of independent voters. It, the electorate's just different in New Hampshire because people that are unaffiliated with either party can vote in either party's primary, and most of the action this year is on the Republican side. So that's the chance that I think, the, probably the best chance that's out there early on to, to change the, the calculus. And yes, it would involve most of the Republicans who aren't Donald Trump, uh, rallying behind one other candidate, that candidate best positioned as of today is Nikki Haley. Well, see, it has been strange watching them run against someone without running against that person. But uh, that's politics, I that's guess. Right. Rick Klein, you know better than anybody. Thanks very much. Thanks, Harry. All right, we're going to take a break. And coming up, TSA agents say they caught a passenger trying to get through security with a loaded diaper. But that's it's not what you're thinking. We'll unpack it right after the break. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So many people start their day here. From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I'm Tom Sufi Barrage with this group of Ukrainian attack helicopters in eastern Ukraine. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're watching ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live, and here are some of the top headlines we're following at this hour. A loaded diaper was found at a New York airport, but it's not what you're thinking of. Look at that. TSA officers caught a passenger hiding 17 bullets in a baby diaper at LaGuardia Airport. The agency says the man claimed he didn't know how those bullets ended up in his bag in a diaper, but later he did try to blame his girlfriend, Natch, He's been cited with unlawful possession of ammunition for that. What are you thinking? Employees at a Wells Fargo bank in New Mexico, they have voted to unionize. Now, this is a first for a major U.S. bank. Workers at the Albuquerque branch say they are understaffed, underpaid, and mismanaged. This follows several successful unionization attempts at different industries this year. And an Oklahoma man who wrongfully spent Almost half a century in prison is now free. Glenn Simmons was exonerated, declared innocent, after a judge threw out his 1974 murder conviction, a crime he's long maintained he did not commit. 
Simmons is the longest serving prison inmate to be declared innocent of a crime. And he says after all this time, he feels vindicated. God bless you, Mr. Simmons. Thank you for streaming with us. I'm Terry Moran. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on, on various streaming services, on the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops, and we will be right back. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Today on ABC News Live, the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What do you need to know as you head out for Christmas? A deadly shooting in Prague. What police are saying after a gunman opened fire at a university near the Czech capital. And the staggering death toll in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry there says 20,000 people are now dead, 20,000, as negotiations continue for a ceasefire and for the release of more hostages. We're in Tel Aviv with the latest. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Moran, and our top story this hour, the holiday travel rush. It's underway. Just four days until Christmas now, millions of Americans are getting an early start to what's expected to be the busiest travel season ever. ABC's Jacqueline Lee is live at Los Angeles LAX airport. Hey, Jacqueline, what, what does LAX look like to you right now? Tara, great to be with you. We gotta say, we're all a little bit surprised because look at the non-existent lines over here. I mean, this is considered the busiest travel day for the Christmas season. And as you can see, there's really nothing over here, at least in the United Terminal. I can say though, when we were walking around a little bit earlier through baggage claim, that is where we saw the really long lines of people that were just waiting to get their bags checked. But at the moment, things are going pretty smoothly here at LAX, Terry. That's a good sign. So uh, what have you heard? Uh, any delays and cancellations across the country? What does it look like? Yep, so at the moment, I mean, we only have seven cancellations here at LAX. Things have gone really smoothly, but we did speak with a United representative about some of the concerns that they are worried about for this travel season. We do expect with the weather here in Los Angeles to matriculate into uh, the Midwest and also on the eastern seaboard. So we are monitoring that closely. Um, but again, we are shooting for those on-time departures and getting folks to their final destination. Just to add on to that, something interesting that United is doing to work on cancellations and delays, something that they have changed from last year, is they are expediting the boarding process. So you will be seated based off of if you're sitting in the window, the middle, or the aisle seat. So that way they can get the planes going off on time. It's something that they're just trying to improve, uh, hopefully, so you don't have any sort of meltdown like Southwest and other airlines dealt with last year. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it, but it sounds like a plan. Anyway, so. Uh, over the next few days, as Christmas arrives, what can we expect? You know, what experts are saying is that this is going to be the busiest um, 
Christmas travel season that they've seen in a really long time. I mean, we have about 49,000 flights that are expected to be leaving just today um, with millions of people traveling throughout the entire country. And this is people really just getting back to normal um, who have not fully resumed since the pandemic hit. Um, so ultimately, we're going to see a lot of people crowding airports. And ultimately, as you said, we'll see how it all shakes out in the next few days and weeks ahead, Terry. All right, Jacqueline Lee, you're on the spot there. Thanks very much, LAX. Thanks very much. Now let's talk about the weather. Powerful storm is slamming the West Coast, threatening to disrupt holiday travel there where Jacqueline was. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow and flash flooding and mudslides as well. ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin, she's tracking the holiday forecast. So, Melissa, let's begin out there in the western half of the country. What do they have in store for this holiday weekend? Well, Tara, I want to start off with Southern California, specifically Santa Barbara. We have a flash flood warning there right now. Already four inches of rain has fallen. An additional four inches on top of that is expected this afternoon. That can bring mudslides, debris flow, and that elevated flood risk extends back through just north of L.A. through today. And then the flood threat extends all the way into Southern Arizona. So let me time it out for you. Over the next 24 to 48 hours or so, you can see here by later tonight, L.A. stretching down to San Diego. That's where it's going to be the heaviest rain through tomorrow morning. That low pushes into southern Arizona, places like Phoenix, back through Tucson, getting in on that heavy rain, even some elevated mountain snow there. And that's why we have these flood watches in effect from L.A. back through San Diego all the way through Phoenix. Now, where is the storm going after it's done with the southwest? Well, it moves right over the Rockies. Heavy snow expected for places like Denver up through Rapid City as we head into Sunday morning. Lots of heavy rain stretching up and down the plains, though, anywhere from places like up into the upper Mississippi River Valley, Kansas City, back Back through parts of Oklahoma City, Dallas to Houston could see some severe thunderstorms. And look at this timestamp. Terry, that's Christmas Eve. We'll be watching the storm right through the Christmas holiday. All right, there's a lot of moisture there. Cold weather here. Is it possible we're going to get a white Christmas out on the East Coast? Well, that's what everyone's asking. And for all of you snow lovers, I really don't have much good news. But like you said, it's cold now. You can see that dip in the jet stream here for the east. It's chilly, but that unseasonably mild air is heading straight for the east coast for Christmas. Look at this. By Monday in New York City, a high of 50 degrees and sunshine. It's very warm ahead of that system. So we're looking at a high of 57, near 60 degrees there in D.C. With, again, sunny skies on Christmas. So anyone that likes that mild, almost spring-like weather is really going to enjoy this Christmas. Uh, Christmas forecast. Where can we see some light snow potentially for that morning of Christmas? You can wake up and you could see some of that white Christmas there anywhere up into parts of the northern Dakotas into northern Minnesota. I think that's the only spot they're going to see anything close to a white Christmas, Terry. All right. Well, good for them. We'll all have Christmas, uh, whatever the weather. Thanks very much, Melissa Griffin. Appreciate it. Well, now we turn overseas in a disturbing story. We're following the latest developments in a mass shooting in the Czech Republic. Police say a man opened fire at Charles University in Prague. Authorities say at least 15 people are dead there, dozens wounded from the shooting at one of the school's academic buildings. We're now hearing from the police. The gunman who was shot dead on the scene was a 24-year-old man from a village just outside Prague and was a student at the university. Let's bring in... Lama Hassan, for more on this from London. Uh, Lama, uh, you know, what can you tell us about this? Uh yeah, shocking, Terry, as you, yeah, person. absolutely. And I think the nation is coming to terms with this shocking incident. You know, the head of police in Prague just gave a press conference. Uh, he said that the gunman, as you rightly said, was a 24 year old student at the Charles University. He entered the building around 3.30 p.m. local time, shooting and killing 15 people and injuring 25 others. We understand at least 11 of them were seriously wounded. Witnesses said that the gunman was walking through the corridors, shooting people inside the university building. Staff inside the classrooms were told to stay put, to use the furniture in the rooms and put uh, put them in front of the door. So essentially barricading themselves in. The rest of the university was evacuated and you can see people running, uh, trying to run away, to get away from the university, running across the iconic Charles Bridge. The police were on the scene quickly eliminating the gunman in their words. That's what they said. Uh, they do believe that he acted alone and at this point they say there is no imminent danger, Terry. Yeah, it's just, it's a horrific scene there, and one, alas, that in America we're very much used to, but in Europe, in Prague, yeah, this is obviously extremely rare. Is there any sense of, of any kind of motive at this point? 
You're absolutely right. It is rare. At this point, we don't have any more details on a possible motive. But what we do know, and again, this is coming from the head of police, they believe the shooter was inspired by similar mass shootings that have happened in other countries abroad. And I'm sure we'll get more information as the police investigate this incident, which has become the worst deadly shooting since its independence about 30 years ago, since the country's independence. Terry. It, al it almost sounds like a, like an American contagion has caught uh, there. Let's hope it doesn't spread. Lama Hassan in London, thank you very much for that. No problem. Now to the war between Israel and Hamas. A new report from the United Nations says more than half a million people in Gaza are now, quote, starving because of the lack of food and aid that is getting into that territory. This comes as the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says the death toll there has topped 20,000, 20,000 dead. This makes for negotiations for another temporary ceasefire, the release of even more hostages even more critical. And ABC News foreign correspondent Rick Clement is in Israel with more. Oh my God, did you hear that? Yes, yes, we did. Oh my God. Civilians and journalists caught in an Israeli airstrike. And as the war nears its 12th week, a grim milestone in Gaza, 20,000 killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. We are just collateral damage. Arwa Naif is a mother of two, forced to evacuate five times already since the start of the war. There is no one single place where you can say, here it's a secure place where I can sleep the night. It is worse every day. It's getting worse every day. But the war unlikely to end soon. In Beirut, a senior Hamas leader saying there's no hostage deal without a ceasefire. One of those released hostages returning to his home on Kibbutz Beri Wednesday, recalling his nightmare. The last thing I remember is being carried away and Duval, my girlfriend, say I love you. House by house, charred out. Painful reminders of the horrors committed that day as pressure intensifies on the government to bring the rest of the hostages home. And Britt Clinette is with us in Israel right now. Britt, tell us what's, what's happening there. You had some kind of protest? Yeah, so I'm outside the Defence Ministry and I think you can kind of sense the frustration here, Terry. Hostage families really are calling on the government to get their loved ones home. The War Cabinet will meet shortly and they want a deal, Terry. They want some answers and they want the, the fate of their loved ones to be the top priority. They've been gathering here every single day. I'm going to move through here so you kind of get a sense of, of, the, of the frustration, of the anger, of the intensity here, the desire to get them home. They've been meeting here every single night since those three hostages were accidentally killed by the IDF. They're saying time is running out, that they don't want their families to be next to be killed. Uh, but, you know, we've heard from the White House saying that serious negotiations are underway. Israel striking a less kind of optimistic tone, saying uh, that there are no direct negotiations with Hamas out currently. Hamas, though, telling ABC News that in the latest round of talks in Egypt, no uh, deal was reached. So there's some discrepancy there. Uh, but an Israeli official also saying that uh, they're shaping up a new hostage strategy. That's one we're going to watch as this war cabinet meets. And we'll hopefully, uh, we'll get some answers. These guys certainly want to see uh, negotiations take place as soon as possible. You can hear them yell, now, deal, now. And then what you've just told us uh, is is bad news for that wish because it, it sounds like the Israelis are determined to continue this phase of the war and to turn to the other side of the border. According to the World Health Organization, there are no fully functioning hospitals left in Gaza. So that just deepens the humanitarian crisis there. The, uh, a child actually dies every 10 minutes in Gaza, according to the World Health Organization. So what is the, we hear the negotiations around the hostages. How are they addressing what is right now the world's worst humanitarian crisis? Terry, the situation in Gaza, I mean, it's growing more bleak by the day, by the hour. I want to give you another stat by the WHO, which said 93% of the population in Gaza is facing crisis levels of hunger. At least one in four households facing catastrophic conditions. Now, I spoke to one woman, Ara Naif. She, with her family, has moved five times, evacuated 
moved with the family, evacuated again. She says, you know, you can't imagine the conditions we're under. No electricity, uh, barely any water, uh, food. She showed me a, a, a kind of pile of vegetables and said, this is supposed to feed 23 people uh, for a few days. So again, the situation increasingly dire. I want to actually uh, cut to a little bit of sound from Ara because I think you really you get a sense of, of what's happening there. This is shot from our producer inside Gaza right now. Let's take a listen. Even though you have nothing, completely nothing to do with all this fight, you can still be one of the death tolls or the injured or the casualties because we believe totally that no matter, no, no matter what's the number, we are just collateral damage. Uh, Britt Clinton, uh, in the middle of that protest, families demanding the, re uh, the release of their hostages, demanding their government, the Israeli government, do more. And we thank her for that report from Israel in this war. We're going to take a break. Coming up, the battle over the border. Texas Governor Greg Abbott flying over 100 migrants to Chicago now as border facilities fill up. And agents say they are overwhelmed and overworked. We got the latest on the crisis at this border and what it means for the election coming up. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. We hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. Give it to me. number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Welcome back. As the crisis at the southern border grows, Texas Governor says his state is overwhelmed 
and has now begun to fly migrants from Texas to Chicago, dump them there. New video shows more than 100 migrants arriving at Chicago's O'Hare Airport after taking a chartered plane courtesy of the Texas government. Chicago officials say they urgently need more help from the government as Abbott vows to send even more asylum seeker seekers up north. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the details. Texas Governor Greg Abbott releasing video and announcing he's now flying migrants to Chicago. 120 arriving on the first flight. One mother explaining there were more than 100 people on board and they were left deserted when they arrived. Abbott defending his actions, saying the city, quote, started obstructing and targeting our busing mission, adding until Biden steps up to secure the border, we will continue to provide overwhelmed Texas border towns with much needed relief. It comes after Abbott signed a law this week that, if upheld, would authorize local police to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. A record 12,600 crossing in one day alone. There's more people in the pipeline, and I suspect Christmas will be worse than today, and New Year's will be worse than today. We're going the absolute wrong direction. ABC's Maria Varial is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There has been a steady flow of migrants funneling through this grassy pit. One group leaves on a bus and another one is escorted over the riverbank. Just yesterday, 4,400 apprehensions in this area alone. Many will wait 10 to 12 hours just to be processed. Some will wait up to two days. Overnight, they'll sleep on this dirt with no shelter, just the clothes on their back and those foil blankets. Processing facilities are full. Agents tell me they are overworked and overwhelmed. We need to surge immigration judges to the border. This is America. People need to get their Cases heard in days, not years. And if they do not qualify for asylum, they need to be deported. Terry, there are real concerns about the living conditions and medical care being provided to migrants. Now there are new worries about economic impacts. Rail crossings have closed, halting freight trains that carry everything from produce to auto parts at a cost, according to one estimate, of $200 million per day. Terry? I want to thank Aaron for that report. Let's talk about the crisis at the southern border. It's proven to be a major issue on the campaign trail just a few weeks away now from the Iowa caucuses on January 15th. ABC News political director Rick Klein joins us now to talk about this. Rick, the White House predictably slamming this move by Governor Abbott to fly migrants north. Director Rick Klein joins us now to talk about this. Rick, the White House predictably slamming this move by Governor Abbott to fly migrants north and dump them there. He's saying he's, quote, showing how little regard for or respect he has for human beings, as the White House says, and calling the flight to Chicago a, quote, political stunt. Well, it may or may not be. It's a political problem for the president, isn't it? How big do you think? Oh, no question. And I think it's something the White House is attuned to. And, Terry, I think it also uh, f feeds into the negotiations that have been going right through the holiday season around potential border security. A lot of people on President Biden's left are, frankly, angry that the White House would engage in, in the kind of negotiations they are with Republicans. Republicans looking for some uh, harsh border, harsher border sanctions and, and security precautions. But the fact that the White House and Democrats are engaging, I think, rec is a recognition of the reality, the images. And the, and the humanity that, um, that, that, that is the reality of the situation on the border right now, it's a big problem because I think it also feeds a perception that's out there in the, in the populace among, among voters that things are just out of control. Yeah, that Biden, he's been president now three years, and, and this is the, as bad as it's ever been. There are many factors, of course, but the buck stops in the office with no corners, and so he's going to have to own it. Uh, so, Rick, since we have you, I want to talk about these, these legal cases in so many states, like Maine now, in light of the decision by the Colorado Supreme Court to disqualify Donald Trump from that state's 2024 primary ballot due to his role in January 6th, and I've seen some calls from Democrats and articles in, uh, in liberal publications saying, why stop with Trump? There were members of Congress, there were state officials who were involved, they believe, in the effort to overturn the country, uh, the, the election the country had. So you know, how, how big an issue is this going to be, and which way will it cut? Well, I, I think politically, it probably only helps Donald Trump. Um, as we've discussed, this is part of his core messaging, and he's incorporated in it. And even his fellow Republicans, the people that are running against him in the primaries, are buying into the notion this is somehow weaponized justice departments or uh, or legal efforts that, that were launched by Democrats. Uh, look, I think some of this was litigated in the midterm elections. We had a couple of court challenges trying to get people off of ballots at the congressional level. None of them ultimately succeeded or ended up making a difference. This Colorado one is very significant, though, because it opens 
opens the door for other states to do the same. You mentioned Maine. We're expecting a decision there by close of business tomorrow, right before Christmas. The, the lieutenant governor of California has raised the possibility of excluding Trump from the ballot there. And the nation's largest state has the largest number of delegates to the Republican convention. So we could see sort of a patchwork of different states coming down in different directions, places where Trump's on the ballot, places where he's off. As you said, maybe lower candidate, uh, lower ranking candidates for office could also be impacted. Ultimately, I don't see how the Supreme Court doesn't weigh in on this, just given the contradictions we're seeing from these different courts. Colorado changed the game. It was the first time any court had felt uh, had felt that it was appropriate to rule that Trump cannot be on the ballot uh, for president. Uh, and I think that just requires now a word from the nation's highest court. Right, because it looks like the courts are basically deciding, you know, primary by primary around the country who's going to be on the ballot, who isn't, and the Supreme Court is probably going to want to sort that out. Good luck to them. Rick Klein, thanks very much, as always. You bet. Thanks, Terry. Well, coming up, just days after Rudy Giuliani suffered a major legal loss, the former Trump attorney seems to be facing another financial blow. We'll have more details right after this break. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live with so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Oh. Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner Oh, Crooks 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. You're watching America's number one streaming news, ABC News Live. Breaking news, exclusives, live reporting across the globe. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Reporting from Harvard University, I'm Selena Wang. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And welcome back to ABC News Live. Here's some of the other top headlines we're following at this hour. Rudy Giuliani has now filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, just days after a jury ordered them to pay nearly $150 million to two former Georgia election workers for defaming them with false accusations of election fraud. The ex-Trump attorney claims he owes between $100 to $500 million on his bankruptcy petition. This comes just a day after a judge ordered Giuliani to pay damages to the election workers immediately. A federal court is rejecting claims linking Tylenol to autism and ADHD, ruling research can't be used to prove that prenatal exposure to sedimentophen can lead to those disorders. 440 lawsuits have been brought against the makers of Tylenol and generic versions of the drug. Spokesperson for the makers of Tylenol say the court's ruling, quote, aligns with the position 
of the Food and Drug Administration. And Honda is recalling about 2.5 million cars in the U.S. over risks of a fuel pump failure that can cause an engine to stall while driving, increasing chances of crash. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration is urging drivers to visit their local dealership to replace the fuel pump free of charge. Well, thanks for streaming with us. I'm Terry Moran. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on various streaming services on the ABC News app and, of course, on abcnews.com, too. The news never stops. We'll be right back. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So many people start their day here. From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting in St. Petersburg, Florida, in the aftermath of Hurricane Adelia, I'm M. Wynn. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Today on ABC News Live, the staggering death toll in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry there says 20,000 people are now dead. As negotiations continue for a ceasefire and for the release of hostages, we are going to talk with one Palestinian-American who still has family trapped inside Gaza. And we are facing a, quote, sobering and unique moment for domestic threats in this country. That's what Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco told our Pierre Thomas in an exclusive interview how the U.S. is responding to that threat environment coming right up. And the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What you need to know as you head out for Christmas. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. And our top story this hour, those threats. The FBI is reporting a massive surge in threats related to the Israel-Hamas conflict. A top Justice Department official tells ABC News the FBI has run down more than 1,800 tips and threats since the October 7th attack on Israel, contributing to an already elevated threat environment that officials are describing as the most challenging situation since 9-11. Our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, is here with an ABC News exclusive. Pierre, you've been covering this, this field, this subject matter for a long time. Break this down for us. Put it in context. Well, one of the things we've been hearing from the FBI director is how this is the most perhaps challenging and dangerous threat environment since 9-11. And today we sat down with the number two ranking official at the Justice Department to get a sense of what does that actually mean? What kind of stress is that put on a law enforcement officials? And here's what she had to say. Since October 7th, how does that manifest itself? What's the tempo like? Can you give us a sense of the, the cases, the caseload? Since October 7th, the FBI has received more than 1,800 reports of threats 
or other types of tips or leads that are somehow related to or have a nexus to the current conflict mm -hmm. in Israel and Gaza. Uh, now, many of these reports and these threats or tips are resolved without incident, but many also develop into investigations. And, and today, as we sit here, the FBI has opened more than 100 investigations it coming out ongoing. of those reports. Indeed. Um, and these are the types of cases um, that people are reading about. So, for instance, these include uh, the case of a man who was arrested at Cornell University for making threats against the Jewish community there. They include um, the case where the FBI arrested an a man in uh, Los Angeles for threatening the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League. Mm. So um, these are threats, they're hoaxes, they uh, can involve um, claims of terrorist financing. So that is the volume, the significant uptick in the volume and frequency of the types of reports we're getting. So, Terry, you can see that this is putting a lot of strain on the FBI and the Justice Department. And, in fact, that's just one sliver of what they're looking at. There are also the domestic terrorism cases that they've got to deal with. So we're talking about perhaps an unprecedented amount of stress on the system right now. Well, very sobering. And, and I understand that in your reporting you're also seeing a rise in false bomb threats, swatting incidents in recent weeks. Those are you know, obviously fake threats, mostly targeting Jewish groups, I guess. How serious are those threats and how do they fit into the bigger picture? Well, I think the best thing we can say about it in terms of describing what it means to the system, every time you have those threats, someone has to run down those leads and check out to see, is this a viable, active, real threat? That's law enforcement manpower, that's FBI manpower. And every one of those 1,800 incidents that I talked about, someone physically looked into what we're talking about here. So uh, imagine a situation where you don't run down that lead, and then later the person who made the threat goes out and does something. That's a story no one wants to see. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Pierre Thomas, for that. And you can see more of Pierre's exclusive interview on This Week on Sunday. He'll be hosting only on ABC. A new report from the United Nations says more than half a million people in Gaza are now, quote, starving because of the lack of food. It comes as the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says the death toll in Gaza has now topped 20,000 people, 20,000 dead. This makes negotiations for another temporary ceasefire and the release of even of more hostages even more critical. ABC News foreign correspondent Britt Clement is in Israel, and she's got more on this. Terry, I'm outside the Defense Ministry here where families of those held in Gaza are gathering for a protest just as the War Cabinet is meeting inside that building there. They want to remind the government that they are demanding answers. They keep saying we, are, we need some kind of comprehensive uh, negotiation done right now. You get a sense of the frustration here. People have been gathering ever since those three hostages were killed accidentally by the IDF. They're saying time is running out and they're worried that their families will suffer a similar fate. Now, they're also telling me uh, that they hope that there will be some kind of uh, outcome of this meeting, that the government will prioritize their families. The White House striking a rather optimistic tone, saying that serious negotiations are underway, but Hamas are telling ABC uh, that they want a comprehensive end to the fighting before any hostages uh, are released, before any deal is made. Uh, Hamas is saying that the talks in Egypt did not yield any results, so some discrepancy there. Meanwhile, the situation in Gaza is growing ever the more desperate. Uh, we know that uh, one, one child uh, is killed every 10 minutes. That's a huge and uh, extremely grim figure as the situation there, bleaker and bleaker by the day. Terry. Britt Clement there in the protest in Tel Aviv. Thank you very much. We want to continue our coverage of this tragic, terrible war uh, as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza grows more dire by the day. We are hearing from Americans who still have loved ones trapped in that war-torn district, the city of Gaza and the rest of the Gaza Strip. And that includes our next guest, Fadi Skik, is a Palestinian-American living in California. His mom is currently trapped inside 
the Gaza Strip. Fadi, thank you very much for being with us. I know it's a really hard time for you guys. Uh, your mom's inside Gaza still, and I guess your, your brothers, one of whom is serving in the U.S. Army, are, are trying to get her home. How, how is, how, t tell us what's happening. Yeah, so um, my, uh, me and my, uh, so my brother, Raji Skake, and pretty much he's in the U.S. M military right now. And uh, we're, we're just trying to, you know, sit, rescue my mother from this ongoing conflict. Um, and, you know, just uh, being able to see her again, you know, my mother, she's uh, going through a lot right now, you know, as of as many others are and my american uncle as well he is um dealing with a uh, severe cardiac condition heart condition and um currently you know needs a, a surgery as soon as we're able to get one um you know what what's happened is uh you know very uh, tragic for you know my father um my mother losing her husband and my father and uh, we're just you know trying to seek out help um we've reached out to um representative ro Khanna to um speak to the white house privately in regards to helping my mother um and um we are just trying to you know um help my mother um uh, from this ongoing conflict for the past four to five days they haven't had a water uh no food um, and um, no medical aid to assist them. So um, that's the uh, that's the overall of what's going on. And, and thank you very much for that, Fadi. I wonder if I could ask how, how frequently are you able to be in touch with your mom? And I get I guess uh, she was there before October seventh. Tell us a little bit more about about what it was like before, and, and obviously what, what what's happened after. So. Um, contact is very limited with my family because um, my mother has to, you know, get to the roof just to be able to get in contact with us and just to get reception, uh, which is very challenging by itself. And, um, you know, I, I worry every awakening moment um, for my mother's safety um, and uh, can't, can't bear to lose her. And, you know, I, I already lost my father to this to this conflict. And and, you know, my mother, she's just afraid, you know, afraid. And and um, she just she she's just dealing with so much that, you know, it's just every waking second. It's hard to, you know, imagine losing her uh, uh, too. Fadi, uh, did, did you lost your dad to this conflict in, in this I know there have been many times where Israel and Gaza have, have been fighting, the people in Gaza have been fighting Hamas. Uh, your dad, you lost your dad in, in the conflict recently or in a previous one? A pre, in, in, this, in this ongoing conflict. I'm so sorry. Um, now your, your mother, I guess, is on the border crossing list, right? So yes. what's the holdup? She's a U.S. citizen. Why can't we get her out? Um, I, I just feel like, you know, the, we are trying to advocate for my mother's immediate evacuation out of Gaza. We, we are, uh, you know, um, reaching out to, um, to see who we are seeking. We are trying to seek help for my mother who, you know, desperately needs to be, you know, evacuated and to be treated medically treated as well as my american uncle who is trapped as well and who ha is dealing with a severe cardiac condition which requires him which requires him to have surgery so um yeah we're, we're working on making yeah. we're working on trying to find a, a way to uh, uh, rescue them from this conflict i can't i can't imagine you know what you're going through right now, Fadi, and you, you've shared with us a, an audio recording from your mother in Gaza. So I, I want our audience, I want to take a listen to it, just part of it right now. So let's take a listen to that. Before my husband was killed, I had some hope that someone was going to come and help us. I don't have that hope anymore. 
I mean, just listening to that is is heartbreaking, especially coming from your mother, of course. Uh, so tell us about your mom, and and you know, you're all Americans. These are these are our people. Are you satisfied with what the U.S. government is doing to help your family? N no, I'm not really satisfied per se. Um, I I um, I just you know. They're, 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 it's a humanitarian situation, right? And they are, you know, they just want to be, you know, helped through, through this, through, through, from this conflict. And um, it's just, it's, it's, it's hard for me to, 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 to bear, you know, uh, losing my mother to this conflict. And we're just trying to seek whatever help we can. Um, and, you know, just to help my mother from from and my uncle that's dealing with medical issues. Right, both of them, American citizens, are our people. And Fadi, I'm so sorry about the loss of your father, and I hope that that uh, you can get some action and that there can be a ceasefire so that your mother and your uncle can come out. And I hope we have you back when you've got that good news. Fadi Skake, thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you. We'll be right back. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome back. The holiday travel rush is underway with just four days until Christmas. Millions of Americans are getting an early start to what is expected to be the busiest travel season ever. ABC's Jacqueline Lee standing by at Los Angeles' LAX airport. Jacqueline, you're, you're at one of the busiest airports in the country. What's it like there? What does the holiday rush look like? You know, Terry, it has been ebbing and flowing all day long. I mean, about two minutes ago, there was a much longer line here at TSA PreCheck, but as you can see, it has dwindled quite a bit. The thing is, people are moving through very quickly. We're not really seeing congestion here, which is wonderful, but I think the best statistic of the day so far, we have seen about 50 dogs going through, some wearing sweaters, some going through TSA PreCheck, just showing that you gotta bring your furry friends to your holiday travel plans, Terry. Absolutely. Keep them, uh, keep them close. It's a family holiday. So it, it's not just L.A., right? Uh, this uh, record travel rush is expected at airports across the country. What have you heard about delays or cancellations across the country? 
Yes, absolutely. So, so far, we're seeing about 2,100 delays across the country, 78 cancellations. So, I mean, it, it, to put that in perspective, if today is supposed to be the busiest of the Christmas travel rush, that's not too bad. Here at LAX, we're seeing 153 delays and only seven cancellations so far. So, as you can see, still lots of people flowing through, but they seem to be going uh, very quickly through the line. Terry. That's good news. So far, so good. Fingers crossed. Jacqueline Lee at LAX, thanks for being there for us. Well, now the weather, uh, and it will affect travel. A powerful storm slamming the West Coast is threatening to disrupt holiday travel. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow and flash flooding and mudslides. It's a big one. Avis News meteorologist Melissa Griffin standing by, and she's tracking the holiday forecast. And Terry, you can see here the heaviest rain. It's still north of Los Angeles, so the city itself really not getting on that flood threat until the overnight hour. So really the timing is on our side for travelers. Santa Barbara, though, they're getting slammed today. Flood, flash flood warning continues there, and then it all continues to move and push south. San Diego overnight, and then eventually into parts of southern Arizona, including Phoenix. That's throughout the day tomorrow. So flood watches continue from San Luis Obispo back through L.A. all the way through southern Arizona. Arizona throughout the day tomorrow. Some upper level snow as well for parts of the mountains there in Arizona and New Mexico. But it's all about this flood threat first for the next 24 hours or so. Santa Barbara to LA, this is through the overnight hours. Again, Santa Barbara getting slammed right now. Some spots in the region saw a month's worth of rain in just 40 minutes this morning. But the flood threat continues right through tomorrow all the way through southern Arizona. Phoenix to Tucson included there, two to four inches, but locally over half a foot possible. Mudslides and debris flow all possible there as well and the storm continues to move across the Rockies. And then by Christmas Eve, places like Denver to Rapid City, that's where you could see some travel issues with snow there. Heavy rain stretching all the way back to the plains. Dallas to Houston could see some severe thunderstorms from this. So it looks like a little bit of a messy area in the central plains and across parts of the northern plains for Christmas Eve. As we head into Christmas Day, though, look at this. A lot of warm air ahead of this system. It'll be 50 degrees with sunshine in New York City. If you were looking for that white Christmas, well, you're only going to find it here in the northern Northern Plains and Upper Midwest could see some light flurries as you wake up on Christmas Day morning and, of course, some rain from the system up and down the Upper Mississippi River Valley. Terry. All right. Thanks, Melissa Griffin, for that. Well, coming up, just days after Rudy Giuliani suffered a major legal loss, the former Trump attorney seems to be facing another financial blow. We're going to have more details right after the break. So much at stake, so much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live.
Welcome back to ABC News Live, and we've got some other top headlines that we're watching at this hour. Rudy Giuliani has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy just days after a jury ordered him to pay nearly $150 million to two former Georgia election workers for defaming them with false accusations of election fraud. The ex-Donald Trump attorney claims he owes between $100 to $500 million on his bankruptcy petition. This comes just a day after a judge ordered Giuliani to pay damages to the election workers that he defamed immediately. And a federal court is rejecting claims that link Tylenol to autism and ADHD, ruling research can't be used to prove that, ex that prenatal exposure to acetaminophen can lead to those disorders. 440 lawsuits have been brought against the makers of Tylenol and generic versions of the drug. A spokesperson for the makers of Tylenol say the court's ruling aligns with the, file, with the position of the FDA. And Honda is recalling about 2.5 million cars in the U.S. over risks of a fuel pump failure that can cause an engine to stall while driving. Increasing chances of a crash, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration is urging drivers to visit their local dealership to replace the fuel pump free of charge. So, a business story. Shares of Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount are all trading lower on reports of a possible merger. The potential deal laid out in a new Axios report suggests that two companies have been working on better ways to compete with rival streaming services. ABC News business reporter Alexis Christophers joins us now with the details. Alexis, what do we know about this merge? It seems like a behemoth already, and, and how would it be significant? It does, you're absolutely right. Well, what we do know is that these two sides came together here in New York City. They met at Paramount's headquarters. These are not formal talks. They're sort of in the exploratory stage right now. Neither side would comment to ABC News. But this would definitely not be a merger of equals. You've got a Warner Brothers Discovery valued at about $29 billion. Paramount valued at $10 billion. But you're right, Terry. If they were to come together, they would create a, a powerhouse, uh, both a media and entertainment powerhouse company. Uh, but they could also see some substantial synergies when you consider that you have the Mac streaming service on the Warner side, the Paramount Plus streaming service for, for Paramount. They want to combine to better compete with Netflix. Seems everybody wants to beat Netflix at their own game. And also other streaming services like Disney Plus, which we know is owned by ABC's parent company, Disney. So on a lot of levels, a deal here, a combination could make some sense. Get the Yellowstone franchise, the, the Taylor Sheridan verse uh, out there. Now, yeah. uh, how is the street, Wall Street reacting? The shares of Warner and Brothers and Paramount have been falling? What, what does that say to you? Yeah, I think that uh, if you look at the way the stocks are reacting, uh, investors are putting long odds on a, on a Paramount or Warner combination here for a number of reasons. Both of these companies are laden with debt, uh, combined over $60 billion in debt at the end of the third quarter. Uh, and it's also not a slam dunk that they're going to get the approval from regulators. I mean, you're talking about two companies that have significant holdings, significant brands, both uh, in Hollywood uh, and in media. Uh, you know, Warner Brothers, of course, has uh, CNN. Paramount has the CBS Broadcasting uh, Corporation. So they are definitely going to uh, raise some eyebrows with regulators. It's not a done deal by any stretch. You know, and, and it's uh, all about consolidation in some ways, which uh, regulators are going to be looking at. Why is that? And, and although this deal is in the early stages, uh, a lot of consumers are going to say, you know, what's going to happen to my favorite show? You know, I want to watch Yellowstone or whatever. Uh, what are you going to be looking for as this plays out? And what does the whole thing tell us about the media environment right now? I, I think you could be looking at a big year of consolidation in the media industry in 2024, and a deal between a, a Warner Brothers Discovery and a Paramount could really kick things off. A lot of these media companies are under a mountain of debt. They're under tremendous pressure uh, to find uh, strategic partners or to find buyers. Uh, in terms of how this deal would shake out, we don't know whether or not regulators would ask either company to sell off certain properties. It would most likely, you would most likely see the Paramount Plus streaming service get rolled up into the max streaming service. You would probably see CBS and CNN combine their broadcasting operations. But shows that are doing well, like a Yellowstone, like those crime drama, dramas, the NCISs of the world, they want to hold on to those franchises. That's what's really valuable uh, to these companies. And also, of course, sports, always very valuable. Uh, both entities own rights to March Madness, but 
time and time again, the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery has mentioned how they don't have any NFL rights. It's a gaping hole in their lineup. They could gain that. And we know it's very lucrative if they were to come to a deal um, with Paramount. But still, it's a long ways away. We see, we've seen this happen before, Terry. They're in exploratory stage uh, talks, and then, you know, they go nowhere. I mean, it's kind of you got Warner Brothers, Paramount, Discovery, CBS. What are they going to call this thing? <laughs> I don't know. It's too many. You know, when Warner Brothers uh, bought a Discovery, they came up with a very uh, unique Warner Brothers Discovery title. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too many names. It's too many names. It's yeah. too many names. Anyway, Alexis Christophers, thanks very much, as always, for your insight. On My these pleasure. Names. Thanks very much. Thanks. All right, thank you for streaming with us. I'm Terry Moran. From breaking news all the way to, the sto to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on various streaming services, on the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com as well. The news never stops, and we will be right back. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. The Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crooks 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today on ABC News Live, the staggering death toll in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry there says 20,000 people are now dead. As negotiations continue for a ceasefire and for the release of hostages, we are going to talk with one Palestinian-American who still has family trapped inside Gaza. And we are facing a, quote, sobering and unique moment for domestic threats in this country. That's what Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco told our Pierre Thomas in an exclusive interview how the U.S. is responding to that threat environment coming right up. And the record-breaking holiday travel rush. The FAA is preparing for nearly 49,000 planes to fly today alone. What you need to know as you head out for Christmas. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. And our top story this hour, those threats. The FBI is reporting a massive surge in threats related to the Israel-Hamas conflict. A top Justice Department official tells ABC News the FBI has run down more than 1,800 tips and threats since the October 7th attack on Israel, contributing to an already elevated threat environment that officials are describing as the most challenging situation since 9-11. Our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, is here with an ABC News exclusive. Pierre, you've been covering this, this field, this subject matter, for a long time. Break this down for us. Put it in context. Well, one of the things we've been hearing from the FBI director is how this is the most, perhaps, challenging and dangerous threat environment since 9-11. And today, we sat down with the number two ranking official at the Justice Department to get a sense of what does that actually mean? What kind of stress is that put on uh, law enforcement officials? And here's what she had to say. Since October 7th, how does that manifest itself? What's the tempo like? Can you give us a sense of the, the cases, the caseload? Since October 7th, the FBI has received more than 1,800 reports of threats or other types of tips or leads that are somehow related to or have a nexus to the current conflict in mm -hmm. Israel and Gaza. Uh, now, 
Many of these reports and these threats or tips are resolved without incident, but many also develop into investigations. And, and today, as we sit here, the FBI has opened more than 100 investigations it coming out ongoing. of those reports. Indeed. Um, and these are the types of cases um, that people are reading about. So, for instance, these include uh, the case of a man who was arrested at Cornell University for making threats against the Jewish community there. They include um, the case where the FBI arrested an a man in uh, Los Angeles for threatening the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League. Mm. So um, these are threats, they're hoaxes, they uh, can involve um, claims of terrorist financing. So that is the volume, the significant uptick in the volume and frequency of the types of reports we're getting. So, Terry, you can see that this is putting a lot of strain on the FBI and the Justice Department. And, in fact, that's just one sliver of what they're looking at. There are also the domestic terrorism cases that they've got to deal with. So we're talking about perhaps an unprecedented amount of stress on the system right now. Well, very sobering. And, and I understand that in your reporting you're also seeing a rise in false bomb threats, swatting incidents in recent weeks. Those are you know, obviously fake threats, mostly targeting Jewish groups, I guess. How serious uh, are those threats and how do they fit into the bigger picture? Well, I think the best thing we can say about it in terms of describing what it means to the system, every time you have those threats, someone has to run down those leads and check out to see, is this a viable, active, real threat? That's law enforcement manpower, that's FBI manpower. And every one of those 1,800 incidents that I talked about, someone physically looked into what we're talking about here. So uh, imagine a situation where you don't run down that lead, and then later the person who made the threat goes out and does something. That's a story no one wants to see. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Pierre Thomas, for that. And you can see more of Pierre's exclusive interview on This Week on Sunday. He'll be hosting only on ABC. A new report from the United Nations says more than half a million people in Gaza are now, quote, starving because of the lack of food. It comes as the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says the death toll in Gaza has now topped 20,000 people, 20,000 dead. This makes negotiations for another temporary ceasefire and the release of, even, of more hostages even more critical. ABC News foreign correspondent Britt Clement is in Israel, and she's got more on this. Terry, I'm outside the Defense Ministry here where families of those held in Gaza are gathering closer just as the War Cabinet is meeting inside that building there. They want to remind the government that they are demanding answers. They keep saying we, are, we need some kind of comprehensive uh, negotiation done right now. You get a sense of the frustration here. People have been gathering ever since those three hostages were killed accidentally by the IDF. They're saying time is running out and they're worried that their families will suffer a similar fate. Now, they're also telling me uh, that they hope that there will be some kind of uh, outcome of this meeting, that the government will prioritize their families. The White House striking a rather optimistic tone, saying that serious negotiations are underway, but Hamas are telling ABC uh, that they want a comprehensive end to the fighting before any hostages uh, are released, before any deal is made. Uh, Hamas is saying that the talks in Egypt did not yield any results, so some discrepancy there. Meanwhile, the situation in Gaza growing ever the more desperate. Uh, we know that uh, one, one child uh, is killed every 10 minutes. That's a huge and uh, extremely grim figure as the situation there, bleaker and bleaker by the day. Terry. Britt Clement there in the protest in Tel Aviv. Thank you very much. We want to continue our coverage of this tragic, terrible war uh, as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza grows more dire by the day. We are hearing from Americans who still have loved ones trapped in that war-torn district, the city of Gaza and the rest of the Gaza Strip. And that includes our next guest, Fadi Skik, is a Palestinian-American living in California. His mom is currently trapped inside the Gaza Strip. Fadi, thank you very much for being with us. I know it's a really hard time for you guys. Uh, your mom's inside Gaza still, 
and I guess your, your brothers, one of whom is serving in the U.S. Army, are, are trying to get her home. How, how is, how, t tell us what's happening. Yeah, so um, my, uh, me and my, uh, so my brother, Raji Skaik, and pretty much he's in the U.S. M military right now. And uh, we're, we're just trying to, you know, sit, rescue my mother from this ongoing conflict. Um, and, you know, just uh, being able to see her again, you know, my mother, she's uh, going through a lot right now, you know, as of as many others are and my american uncle as well he is um dealing with a uh, severe cardiac condition heart condition and um currently you know needs a, a surgery as soon as we're able to get one um you know what what's happened is uh you know very uh, tragic for you know my father um my mother losing her husband and my father and uh, we're just you know trying to seek out help. Um, we've reached out to um, Representative Ro Khanna to um, speak to the White House privately in regards to helping my mother. Um, and um, we are just trying to, you know, um, help my mother um, from this ongoing conflict. For the past four to five days, they haven't had a water, uh, no food, um, and um, no medical aid to assist them. So um, that's the uh, that's the overall of what's going on. And, and thank you very much for that, Fadi. I wonder if I could ask how, how frequently are you able to be in touch with your mom? And I get I guess uh, she was there before October seventh. Tell us a little bit more about about what it was like before, and, and obviously what, what what's happened after. So. Um, contact is very limited with my family because um, my mother has to, you know, get to the roof just to be able to get in contact with us and just to get reception, uh, which is very challenging by itself. And, um, you know, I, I worry every awakening moment um, for my mother's safety um, and uh, can't, can't bear to lose her. And, you know, I, I already lost my father to this to this conflict. And and, you know, my mother, she's just afraid, you know, afraid. And and um, she just she she's just dealing with so much that, you know, it's just every waking second. It's hard to, you know, imagine losing her uh, uh, too. Fadi, uh, did, did you lost your dad to this conflict in, in this I know there have been many times where Israel and Gaza have, have been fighting, the people in Gaza have been fighting Hamas. Uh, your dad, you lost your dad in, in the conflict recently or in a previous one? A pre, in, in, this, in this ongoing conflict. I'm so sorry. Um, now your, your mother, I guess, is on the border crossing list, right? So yes. what's the holdup? She's a U.S. citizen. Why can't we get her out? Um, I, I just feel like, you know, the, we are trying to advocate for my mother's immediate evacuation out of Gaza. We, we are, uh, you know, um, reaching out to, um, to see who we are seeking. We are trying to seek help for my mother who, you know, desperately needs to be, you know, evacuated and to be treated, medically treated, as well as my American uncle who is trapped as well and who ha is dealing with a severe cardiac condition, which requires him, which requires him to have surgery. So, um, yeah, we're, we're working on making, yeah. we're working on trying to find a, a way to uh, uh, rescue them from this conflict. I can't, I can't imagine you know, what you're going through right now, Fadi, and you, you've shared with us a, an audio recording from your mother in Gaza. So I, I want our audience, I want to take a listen to it, just part of it right now. So let's take a listen to that. Before my husband was killed, I had some hope that someone was going to come and help us. I don't have that hope anymore. I mean, just listening to that is is heartbreaking, especially coming from your mother, of course. Uh, so tell us about your mom, and and 
you know, you're all Americans. These are these are our people. Are you satisfied with what the U.S. government is doing to help your family? N no, I'm not really satisfied per se. Um, I I um, I just you know, they're they're they It's a humanitarian situation, right? And they are you know they just want to be you know helped through through this through through from this conflict and um it's just it's 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 hard for me to 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 bear you know uh, losing my mother to this conflict and we're just trying to seek whatever help we can um and you know just to help my mother from from and my uncle that's dealing with medical issues right both of them American citizens, our, our people. And Fadi, I'm so sorry about the loss uh, of your father. And uh, I hope that, that uh, you can get some action and that there can be a ceasefire so that your mother and your uncle can come out. And I hope we have you back when you've got that good news. Fadi Skig, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. America every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Welcome back. The holiday travel rush is underway with just four days until Christmas. Millions of Americans are getting an early start to what is expected to be the busiest travel season ever. ABC's Jacqueline Lee standing by at Los Angeles' LAX airport. Jacqueline, you're, you're at one of the busiest airports in the country. What's it like there? What does the holiday rush look like? You know, Terry, it has been ebbing and flowing all day long. I mean, about two minutes ago, there was a much longer line here at TSA PreCheck, but as you can see, it has dwindled quite a bit. The thing is, people are moving through very quickly. We're not really seeing congestion here, which is wonderful, but I think the best statistic of the day so far, we have seen about 50 dogs going through, some wearing sweaters, some going through TSA PreCheck, just showing that you got to bring your furry friends to your holiday travel plans, Terry. Absolutely. Keep them, uh, keep them close. It's a family holiday. So it, it's not just L.A., right? Uh, this uh, record travel rush is expected at airports across the country. What have you heard about delays or cancellations across the country? 
Yes, absolutely. So, so far we're seeing about 2,100 delays across the country, 78 cancellations. So, I mean, it, to put that in perspective, if today is supposed to be the busiest of the Christmas travel rush, that's not too bad. Here at LAX, we're seeing 153 delays and only seven cancellations so far. So, as you can see, still lots of people flowing through, but they seem to be going uh, very quickly through the line. Terry. That's good news. So far, so good. Fingers crossed. Jacqueline Lee at LAX, thanks for being there for us. Well, now the weather, uh, and it will affect travel. A powerful storm slamming the West Coast is threatening to disrupt holiday travel. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow and flash flooding and mudslides. It's a big one. Avis News meteorologist Melissa Griffin standing by, and she's tracking the holiday forecast. And Terry, you can see here the heaviest rain. It's still north of Los Angeles. So the city itself really not getting on that flood threat until the overnight hour. So really the timing is on our side for travelers. Santa Barbara, though, they're getting slammed today. Flood flash flood warning continues there and then it all continues to move and push south. San Diego overnight and then eventually into parts of southern Arizona, including Phoenix. That's throughout the day tomorrow. So flood watches continue from San Luis Obispo back through L.A. all the way through southern Arizona throughout the day tomorrow. Some upper level snow as well for parts of the mountains there in Arizona and New Mexico. But it's all about this flood threat first for the next 24 hours or so. Santa Barbara to LA, this is through the overnight hours. Again, Santa Barbara getting slammed right now. Some spots in the region saw a month's worth of rain in just 40 minutes this morning. But the flood threat continues right through tomorrow all the way through southern Arizona. Phoenix to Tucson included there, two to four inches, but locally over half a foot possible. Mudslides and debris flow all possible there as well. And the storm continues to move across the Rockies. And then by Christmas Eve, places like Denver to Rapid City, that's where you could see some travel issues with snow there. Heavy rain stretching all the way back to the plains. Dallas to Houston could see some severe thunderstorms from this. So it looks like a little bit of a messy area in the central plains and across parts of the northern plains for Christmas Eve. As we head into Christmas Day, though, look at this. A lot of warm air ahead of this system. It'll be 50 degrees with sunshine in New York City. If you were looking for that white Christmas, well, you're only going to find it here in the north. Northern Plains and Upper Midwest could see some light flurries as you wake up on Christmas Day morning and, of course, some rain from the system up and down the Upper Mississippi River Valley. Terry. All right. Thanks, Melissa Griffin, for that. Well, coming up, just days after Rudy Giuliani suffered a major legal loss, the former Trump attorney seems to be facing another financial blow. We're going to have more details right after the break. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war. For nonstop live coverage, stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. 
Reporting from the Fulton County, Georgia courthouse, I'm Rena Roy. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live, and we've got some other top headlines that we're watching at this hour. Rudy Giuliani has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy just days after a jury ordered him to pay nearly $150 million to two former Georgia election workers for defaming them with false accusations of election fraud. The ex-Donald Trump attorney claims he owes between $100 to $500 million on his bankruptcy petition. This comes just a day after a judge ordered Giuliani to pay damages to the election workers that he defamed immediately. And a federal court is rejecting claims that link Tylenol to autism and ADHD, ruling research can't be used to prove that, ex that prenatal exposure to acetaminophen can lead to those disorders. 440 lawsuits have been brought against the makers of Tylenol and generic versions of the drug. A spokesperson for the makers of Tylenol say the court's ruling aligns with the, file, with the position of the FDA. And Honda is recalling about 2.5 million cars in the U.S. over risks of a fuel pump failure that can cause an engine to stall while driving. Increasing chances of a crash, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration is urging drivers to visit their local dealership to replace the fuel pump free of charge. So... A business story. Shares of Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount are all trading lower on reports of a possible merger. The potential deal laid out in a new Axios report suggests that two companies have been working on better ways to compete with rival streaming services. ABC News business reporter Alexis Christophers joins us now with the details. Alexis, what do we know about this merger? It seems like a behemoth already, and, and how would it be significant? It does, you're absolutely right. Well, what we do know is that these two sides came together here in New York City. They met at Paramount's headquarters. These are not formal talks. They're sort of in the exploratory stage right now. Neither side would comment to ABC News. But this would definitely not be a merger of equals. You've got a Warner Brothers Discovery valued at about $29 billion, Paramount valued at $10 billion. But you're right, Terry, if they were to come together, they would create a, a powerhouse, uh, both a media and entertainment powerhouse company. Uh, but they could also see some substantial synergies when you consider that you have the Mac streaming service on the Warner side, the Paramount Plus streaming service for, for Paramount. They want to combine to better compete with Netflix. Seems everybody wants to beat Netflix at their own game. And also other streaming services like Disney Plus, which we know is owned by ABC's parent company, Disney. So on a lot of levels, a deal here, a combination could make some sense. Yet the Yellowstone franchise, the, the Taylor Sheridan verse uh, out there. Now, yeah. uh, how is the street, Wall Street reacting? The shares of Warner and Brothers and Paramount have been falling? What, what does that say to you? Yeah, I think that uh, if you look at the way the stocks are reacting, uh, investors are putting long odds on a, on a Paramount or Warner combination here for a number of reasons. Both of these companies are laden with debt, uh, combined over $60 billion in debt at the end of the third quarter. Uh, and it's also not a slam dunk that they're going to get the approval from regulators. I mean, you're talking about two companies that have significant holdings, significant brands, both uh, in Hollywood uh, and in media. Uh, you know, Warner Brothers, of course, has uh, CNN. Paramount has the CBS Broadcasting uh, Corporation. So they are definitely going to uh, raise some eyebrows with regulators. It's not a done deal by any stretch. You know, and, and it's uh, all about consolidation in some ways, which uh, regulators are going to be looking at. Why is that? And, and although this deal is in the early stages, uh, a lot of consumers are going to say, you know, what's going to happen to my favorite show? You know, I want to watch Yellowstone or whatever. Uh, what are you going to be looking for as this plays out? And what does the whole thing tell us about the media environment right now? I, I think you could be looking at a big year of consolidation in the media industry in 2024 and a deal between a, a Warner Brothers Discovery and a Paramount could really kick things off. A lot of these media companies are under a mountain of debt. They're under tremendous pressure uh, to find uh, strategic partners or to find buyers. Uh, in terms of how this deal would shake out, we don't know whether or not regulators would ask either company to sell off certain properties. It would most likely, you would most likely see the Paramount Plus 
streaming service get rolled up into the Max streaming service. You would probably see CBS and CNN combine their broadcasting operations. But shows that are doing well, like a Yellowstone, like those crime drama dramas, the NCISs of the world, they want to hold on to those franchises. That's what's really valuable uh, to these companies. And also, of course, sports, always very valuable. Uh, both entities own rights to March Madness, but Time and time again, the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery has mentioned how they don't have any NFL rights. It's a gaping hole in their lineup. They could gain that. And we know it's very lucrative if they were to come to a deal um, with Paramount. But still, it's a long ways away. We see, we've seen this happen before, Terry. They're in exploratory stage uh, talks, and then, you know, they go nowhere. I mean, it's kind of, you got Warner Brothers, Paramount, Discovery, CBS. What are they going to call this thing? <laughs> I don't know, it's too many. You know, when Warner Brothers uh, bought a Discovery, they came up with a very uh, unique Warner Brothers Discovery title. So, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too many names. It's too many names. It's yeah. too many names. Anyway, Alexis Christophers, thanks very much, as always, for your insight. On My these pleasure. Names. Thanks very much. Thanks. All right, thank you for streaming with us. I'm Terry Moran. From breaking news all the way to, the sto to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on various streaming services, on the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com as well. The news never stops, and we will be right back. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. So what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I'm Mo Lenghi in Beirut, and wherever the story goes, we'll take you there. You're watching ABC News Live. Hello, I'm Terry Moran, and here are some of the top headlines we're watching at ABC News Live at this hour. One of the worst mass shootings in the Czech Republic's history happened earlier this afternoon. Authorities say at least 15 people are dead and 25 people are injured from a shooting at Prague's Charles University. The suspected shooter killed his father earlier in the day. The suspect was a 24-year-old student at the university whose body was found by police on the school's campus. On Wall Street, closing bell just rang. Stocks are in the green, rebounding after the Dow and NASDAQ registered their worst day in months. All major averages are up about 15% from lows they hit back in October. And a powerful storm is slamming the West Coast, threatening to disrupt holiday travel. It's already bringing heavy rain to parts of California with threats of snow and flash flooding and mudslides from this storm, which will last just from Wednesday to Friday. It brought flooding to the Bay Area on Wednesday and is now dumping rain and gusty winds on Southern California. Significant travel delays and road closures have been reported so far. The storm is expected to continue in Arizona tomorrow. Thanks for streaming with us. I'm Terry Moran. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. And you can always find us 
on various streaming services on the ABC News app and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops, and GMA3 starts right now. What you need to know right now on GMA3. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. Finally home. The White House says 10 Americans, many wrongfully detained for years in Venezuela, are now back on U.S. soil after a prisoner swap. Record numbers of migrants line up for entry at the southern border. Where do the nation's lawmakers stand on immigration reform? And when will we have a deal? We'll hear from California Senator Alex Padilla. Being able to go to an indoor playground area and not have to worry that you're going to be kicked out as a parent is, it's huge. It's everything. When did they get? Woo! Plus, rocking the spectrum. What one mom did when her son with autism was excluded from playground after playground. If I was a woman like I am now, not 12 years ago, I would not have interfered in another woman's marriage. And the new movie, Ferrari, rolling into theaters this Christmas. My exclusive conversation with star Shailene Woodley. And Santa Claus is back in town, and so is Scotty McCreary, right here in our studio with the Holiday Classic. Now from Times Square, Eva Pilgrim and DeMarco Morgan with Dr. Jen Ashton and what you need to know. Now shut up and drive. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to What You Need to Know on this Baby Friday. Will Reeve is joining us in for DeMarco. I'm so glad to be here, Eva. It's great to see you and Dr. Darian. My just found out my neighbor, Dr. Darian. <laughs> be, we got to hang out away from this. We'll save our commute and come together. Perfect. <laughs> save the world. <laughs> but for now, we actually need you to help us save the yes. world. So, Dr. Darian, there's um, a studies that have shown that more people have heart attacks this last week of December yeah. than any other time of year. Break this down for us. It's a pretty sobering situation. Statistic. And just a reminder that we have to pay attention to our heart health and making sure that we can stay the healthiest people that we can be during this holiday. So here are some important things to know. Number one, the warning signs of chest pain. It can be variable from discomfort or pressure in your chest. It can extend to your neck or your jaw and even include back pain. And most importantly, if you feel sudden shortness of breath or sweating, that's a really significant red flag that you need to get checked out. Next, celebrate in moderation. One of the reasons why we see this increase in rates of heart events is because of the increased use of alcohol and salt. So you have to make sure you're minding your diet. Also, keep moving. The recommendations are at least 150 minutes of weekly activity. That's 20 to 30 minutes a day. And then lastly, the most important thing, remember your medications. The holidays can be really distracting, and sometimes we forget that blood pressure or that other medication for our heart. You have to remember to keep track of those, and because that's one of the reasons why we see these increased rates of heart events overall. Things can get a little bit out of our grasp around the holiday season. Very distracting. But Dr. Darian always has a handle on everything. Thank you for that. We'll check back with you in a little bit. But for now, we turn to ABC's Jay O'Brien in Washington. He has the latest headlines. Good afternoon, Jay. Will, good afternoon. We start with new details coming in about a major prisoner swap with Venezuela. Ten Americans now back on U.S. soil after months of secret negotiations. Six were considered wrongfully detained. The White House says every American held there has been returned, including a fugitive wanted in connection with a $35 million bribery scheme in exchange for clemency of a top ally to Venezuela's authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro, as the Biden administration tries to improve improve relations with Venezuela in the hopes of inspiring freer and fairer elections there. To the deepening crisis now at the southern border as the record number of migrant crossings rises. The governor of Texas now putting migrants on planes to Chicago after the city impounded a bus used to transport them. One mother said more than 100 people were left deserted on the tarmac upon arrival. More on what lawmakers are doing up here soon on GMA3. The major recall now from Toyota involving at least a million vehicles made in 2020 and 2021. The company says a short circuit could prevent the passenger side airbags from deploying properly. Car owners urged to get recalled cars in to be evaluated. And nearly 49,000 planes are expected to fill the skies today. The nation's airlines bracing for what's shaping up to be the busiest travel day of the holiday season. Millions beginning their exodus. Major airlines say most passengers will fly today through Saturday. And the question is, will the weather cooperate? Ginger Z has our forecast.
A month's worth of rain in about 40 minutes. That's what happened in Oxnard, California early this morning and why we've got that elevated risk that goes down to Redondo Beach now, just west of Los Angeles, includes Santa Monica. That risk goes through tomorrow into the desert, so Phoenix and Tucson get in on it. Then that storm combines with another one, moves on east, and it's really warm and even thunderstorms from Dallas up to Kansas City. That's for Christmas Eve morning. But Santa's going to have to grab the galoshes in place of the earmuffs because we could even see record heat all the way up into the plains on Christmas Day. And finally here, the Powerball jackpot is surging once again. The current price now climbing to at least $620 million. That would make a great gift under the tree, right, guys? It beats anything I got anyone this year. The next drawing is on Saturday. Back to you. Hmm, that's a good reminder to get your lottery tickets. Okay. All right, thanks, Jay. Well, there's much more ahead here on this GMA3 on Thursday. All eyes on the southern border. We will learn where the crucial negotiations now stand on Capitol Hill from a key lawmaker. California Senator Alex Padilla is here. And later here, the mom on a mission. What she did when her son with autism was excluded from playgrounds. GMA3 will be right back. So stay with us. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day. On the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner Oh, Crooks 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Welcome back to GMA3. As the nation prepares to wind down for the holidays, key members of Congress face an uphill battle negotiating a $110 billion national security supplemental funding package. The bill includes much-needed aid to Ukraine and Israel, but some prominent Latino members of Congress are raising concerns when it comes to the immigration and the asylum systems. And joining us now is California Senator Alex Padilla. He's the chair of the Senate Judiciary Com Subcommittee on Immigration, Citizenship, and Border Security. Good Good afternoon, Senator. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to dive right into it. This package appears to be stalled 
with negotiations, much of it due to immigration and border policy. So, Senator, what are your biggest concerns about this supplemental package? So, uh, well, good afternoon, Will. Good afternoon, Eva. And uh, I appreciate the context that you set here. Uh, it is a, a package that includes aid to Israel, includes aid to Ukraine, which I wholeheartedly support. Uh, but for whatever reason, folks have chosen to try to link this negotiation to uh, border and immigration policy, which is important. Uh, I, but I don't think one should necessarily be held hostage for the other. Now, on the topic of border and immigration, uh, the concern really starts with what we hear is being entertained by the White House and being uh, forced upon the negotiation table by Republicans. And that's, frankly, the failed policies of the Trump administration. No need to go back there. Uh, is there an increased number of folks coming to the border uh, in recent uh, months, in the uh, last couple of years? Yes, and it's important to understand why if we're going to responsibly and sustainably address it. But returning to the, pun the Trump policies, we know, is not the solution. Well, one of the things that you've said you're concerned about with all of this is, are the dreamers. Talk us through that. <laughs> right. So there's a, a lot of elements when it comes to uh, immigration policy. Uh, it's one thing to talk about people that are trying to come into the United States for a number of reasons. You know, I'll remind the viewers that it is not unlawful for somebody fleeing persecution, fleeing an authoritarian regime like we see in Venezuela, for example, to come to the United States seeking asylum. There's a process for that that we need to invest in more hearing officers, more judges, etc. But that's a very different population than some of the people who have been in the United States for a long time, yes, undocumented. We know many of them as dreamers, young people who were brought here by their parents when they were infants in many cases, but have done well here in school. Uh, they're uh, working, contributing to the success of our communities and our country. You know, you go into the agricultural fields, many here in California, and you see so many farm workers doing work that nobody else would even dream of doing, helping keep food on our tables, but they happen to be undocumented, especially given their service during the course of the pandemic. They deserve better than to live in constant fear of deportation. So. As far as I can tell, the negotiations on a border policy has not even considered providing protections or a pathway, not even to citizenship, just to uh, a legal resident status uh, for these folks that we applauded so much uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm curious what you're most concerned about long term when you're looking at a package like this. Yeah, I think long term is uh, we end up with a policy package that uh, fundamentally doesn't work. It's going to continue to push people to come uh, in uh, uh, what some people call irregular, some people call, call unlawful uh, ways. And it's going to continue to be a, 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 a political leverage point uh, in the future. You know, to think that we are entertaining a budget supplemental package, a budget supplemental negotiation historically has just been about dollars and cents. It hasn't been about permanent policy changes. The policy is important and there's a process for that. So the next time there's a deadline, whether it's a budget deadline, maybe it's a debt ceiling deadline or some other must pass piece of legislation, uh, I, my prediction is Republicans will have us right back here seeking to go more draconian, more draconian until they achieve their uh, Donald Trump, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Miller wish list. Before we let you go, Senator, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed Senate Bill 4, which makes entering Texas illegally a state crime. What are the chances that that bill could stick in Texas? Uh, look, I have a serious doubts that the, that state law, the new state law, is going to hold up in court. We've seen this uh, act before. We've seen it in Texas. We've seen it uh, efforts in Arizona. We've even seen efforts like this uh, in California a few decades ago. Uh, you know, protecting our borders, uh, citizenship. Uh, that's a federal responsibility. It's been uh, maintained uh, in the courts year, you know, over the years, uh, and I think uh, the state law is going to be struck down, uh, but it's just a reminder of the, the urgency and the pressure with which we need to act in Congress, but doing so thoughtfully and strategically uh, and not just responding to political rhetoric. Senator Padilla, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank, thank you so much. Have a good holiday. Just ahead here on GMA3, the mom creating a safe play space for her own son and many other kids. And the reason behind this one woman mission when GMA3 returns right after this.
at stake. So much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Give it to me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7 straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. Reporting on Capitol Hill, I'm Devin Dwyer. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Back now with a woman on a mission for inclusivity on the playground after her son with autism was barred from several of them. She created We Rock the Spectrum, a unique gym designed for sensory experiences transforming children's lives. Gabriel was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder when he was two and a half. I didn't know, you know, about autism then. I knew Rain Man. I knew, you know, very, very little about what to look for. He'd cry all the time being around other kids, kicking and having a full-blown tantrum. So we would just try different indoor playground areas. The breaking moment for me was when a young man came up to me who worked at this indoor playground area here locally and said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but you're gonna have to leave. And this is when I decided, no more. I'm the CEO and founder of We Rock the Spectrum Kids Gym for All Kids. We're an indoor sensory gym. We have 153 locations in 27 states and eight countries. We have 12 pieces of required equipment. It's a trampoline, zip slider, a bolster swing, a hammock swing that works on different senses. For Gabriel is, it keeps him calm. He sleeps better, he eats better. We just want our kids to be independent. <laughs> When I started 13 years ago, I knew I could teach him this. If someone else isn't gonna give him a chance, I will create one for him here. For any child, right, they just wanna feel like they belong. All right, so welcome home. It was finally a place where I can just be my, myself and, and both my mom and my dad never had to apologize for it. Our tagline is, find me a place you never have to say I'm sorry. Any parent with a child with special needs, they know what that means. We're giving families a home that they wouldn't have otherwise. <laughs> A lot of the times, indoor play gyms, it's very difficult with 
our other son, Matthew, he doesn't always interact with other kids. Here, the equipment is made basically for him, so if kids are trying to play with him, he's already engaged in having fun. You can see all the progress that he's made because we have been able to adjust our lives to him. <laughs> this journey has made me a better person. You make me a better person. Hi. <laughs> this, I wouldn't be uh, who I am without the gym. And it's always been a very inclusive environment for me. Being able to go to an indoor playground area and not have to worry that you're going to be kicked out as a parent is, it's huge. It's everything. One, two, three, go. Woo! Give your child as much love and inclusion as you can, and you can also have a child that becomes independent. <laughs> so cool that it's she was fantastic. able yeah able to create that to give that to other families and what she's able to give to her son as well and to herself she yeah. said you make me a better person by giving she gets the reward yeah. really wonderful stuff and just ahead on gma3 dr darian Shut has some tips for us when it comes to first aid for cuts and scrapes oh yeah plus we are talking about the joys and challenges of acting with the star of the new ferrari movie my exclusive conversation with shailene woodley coming up when we come back First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Give it to me. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Stop. Welcome back. This is an excellent school, and your children are learning. Yeah, right. Yeah, it is right. Mm, mm, mm. Single file line, most flammable kids first. Mm, mm, mm. What's happening? Mm, mm, mm. I'm just so happy to be back. <laughs> Do you work here? <laughs> this is embarrassing for you. The wait is over. Abbott Elementary returns February 7th on ABC. ABC News, America's number one news source. 
All right, Dr. Darian is back, and apparently we should all be thinking twice about our space heater, so break yes. this down for us. Well, this is something that has actually grown in popularity because many people are realizing that it's a risk. It's called toasted skin syndrome. So this is when you're exposed to that prolonged level of heat that's not hot, but it's moderate heat. Things that come from, for example, laptops on our laps, space heaters, or even weighted blankets. What happens is that that prolonged heat can damage the superficial blood vessels in your skin and cause a really not pleasing rash that looks web-like and can kind of stay around, especially if you continue to use those sources of heat. And so it's just a reminder to pick that laptop off, probably put it off of your lap, sit at a desk, and those weighted blankets, you want to put them on a timer. You certainly don't want to be using them for prolonged periods of time. How do you treat this? What happens once you, you get it? You know, the treatment often is just simply eliminating the source. There are some that have these rashes so bad that they have to be clinically treated with prescribed medication. But for the most part, if you just simply eliminate that source, then it's probably going to go away with time. But yeah, it can be really, really unpleasing and often sudden. And many patients don't realize it. Some patients even coming in with uh, symptoms on their back because of the weighted blanket and how they use it. So it's just a simple reminder. It's not only a source of a possible fire hazard, but also it can damage your skin. Mm. I have like, so many questions. Same. In my head, I'm like, the laptop from work? Is, yeah. that, is that workman's comp if you get toasted skin syndrome? I think the best is the laptop. Yeah. We have to consult and figure it out. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dr. Jerry. Of we'll course. be right back. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Watching at ABC News Live at this hour. One of the worst mass shootings in the Czech Republic's history happened this afternoon. Authorities say at least 15 people are dead and 25 people injured from a shooting at Prague's Charles University. The 24-year-old suspect's body was found by police on the campus. He is believed to have been a student at that university. Rudy Giuliani has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy just days after a jury ordered him to pay nearly $150 million to two former Georgia election workers for defaming them with false accusations of election fraud. 
The ex-Trump attorney claims he owes between 100 to 500 million dollars on his bankruptcy petition. And this comes just a day after the judge ordered Giuliani to immediately pay the damages to those election workers. Well, Major League Baseball is going to debut several rule changes for the 2024 season in another attempt to speed up play. The most notable change being a shortened pitch clock for when runners are on base. Now, instead of pitchers having 20 seconds to deliver a pitch when a man is on base, pitchers must start their delivery within 18 seconds. Hurry up the game. Along with the pitch clock changes, teams will now have fewer mound visits as well, and the time between innings will be condensed. And the runner's lane on the base paths will be widened as well. These new rules will be in effect immediately, starting in spring training and all through the postseason. And before we go, we want to give a shout out to Matt Claiborne. He's one of the leaders here at ABC News Live, and now he's going out west to the ABC News Los Angeles Bureau, where he will help lead ABC News legendary Western coverage as the deputy bureau chief out there. Matt is respected and loved here at ABC News Live for good reason. He's a, a great producer and a great guy. Matt, best of luck to you. We've been lucky to have you, and our loss is ABC News Los Angeles Bureau's gain. Thanks very much for streaming with us, everyone. Good luck to Matt. I'm Terry Moran. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. And you can always find ABC News Live on various streaming services, on the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com as well. The news never stops. More GMA3 right now. ABC is bringing the hottest artists to the year's biggest holiday party. iHeartRadio Jingle Ball with performances by Olivia Rodrigo, Cher, SZA, Sabrina Carpenter, Jelly Roll, Niall Horan, One Republic, and many more. Oh, uh, yeah. Welcome back to GMA3, What You Need to Know. This programming note, you just heard a little bit of it there. You're in for a holiday music treat tonight. The iHeart Radio Jingle Ball with some very big stars taking part. The holiday special airing at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC. And it will be on Hulu tomorrow. They televise that now? When I was a kid growing up, I had to, like, buy tickets to go to MSG. And you had to, you had to be there. But oh, well. Lucky America. They all get to see it. Jingle <laughs> yes. Ball is the best. Can't wait for that. We are joined by Dr. Darian. We've got a medical question that you have. The question is, do you always need to use an antibiotic ointment on a cut? That's from Amanda P., yeah. Dr. Darian. Yeah, short answer is no. For most cuts, especially when I'm treating them in an emergency room and giving guidance, you just want to keep it as simple as possible, mm. keeping the cut clean. And then if you're going to apply something, keeping it simple, non-fragrant, things like petroleum jelly or aquaphor. But most of the time, especially when you consult dermatologists, they often don't really like these antibiotic ointments because they can cause a skin reaction that can be more displeasing than the cut itself. Aquaphor is a solution for everything, isn't it? Uh, honestly, <laughs> it's, it's like a simple trick. Tape. I always keep it on me. It's very true, very true. Um, your prescription for wellness. Uh, this time of the year, many people are cutting themselves. Uh, many people like me are cooking when they don't normally cook. <laughs> many people like me are wrapping gifts and they may not be good at it. And so what happens and what to do when you cut yourself? Number one, wash the area with soapy water. And then also cover that wound with sterile gauze. And then press firmly. And the key to that pressing firmly is that you cannot peak. You should be holding pressure for five to ten minutes. That allows the bleeding to stop and if you peak then you have to start all over again and then lastly apply a clean bandage and you want to watch for any signs of infection redness swelling increased pain those are signs that you might need might need additional treatment like antibiotics don't put alcohol on it don't put alcohol on <laughs> it just clean water thankfully we've moved past that i don't know if you remember the brown hydrogen peroxide bottles yes. i yeah. still remember getting chased around with that Thankfully, we can just use cold water and we find out it's effective. I can't get past the five to ten minutes on It's a, a long time. Who's got that kind of time? Dr. Honestly, uh, not me, but <laughs> someone who works with me in the hospital usually does. And so we hold pressure. Uh, okay. Yeah, it is a long time. Set a timer. Don't peak. Okay. Don't peak. And if you have any questions, be sure to reach out on Instagram with all your medical questions to ABC GMA3. Coming up when we come back, Shailene Woodley's new role, my exclusive conversation with the star of the anticipated film, Ferrari. And a lot of us have been tracking his career and his music since his American Idol days. Scotty McCreary is bringing the holiday spirit right here on GMA3 in just a bit.
do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Shut up and drive. And welcome back. Opening in theaters on December 25th is the film Ferrari, and one of its stars is Shailene Woodley. She's known for her roles in the Divergent franchise, the TV series Big Little Lies, among others, Eva. Yeah, so many things she's done over the years, and I got to sit down with her for an exclusive interview about acting, her career, and her role in a film that combines a very personal story with race car action. If you get into one of my cars, you get in the wind. Start your engines. Ferrari is roaring into theaters. The movie focuses on the life of Enzo Ferrari, the Italian racer and entrepreneur whose factory created the legendary sports car. The star-studded cast, Adam Driver, Penelope Cruz, and playing the other woman, Shailene Woodley. If I was a woman like I am now, not 12 years ago, I would not have interfered in another woman's marriage. So you play Ferrari's mistress. I do. I like to refer to her as the love of his life. <laughs> it was Italy during the war. Enzo and Lena met and started this romance, and then she got pregnant during the war. And they decided to stay together throughout her pregnancy and raise this child together. And in our world here, between me and you and Piero, what is best for Piero? What drew you to this role? I was really drawn, honestly, by the idea of working with Michael Mann. I think that he's such an incredible filmmaker, and I found working with him to be incredibly inspiring and moving and has definitely made me a much better artist than I was before working with him. You haven't said a word. What is there to say? The newspapers, the radio, they have it all. 
I feel like a lot of people, they know the name Ferrari, right? What do you think is going to surprise them about this movie? I think it's easy to assume it's going to be about racing, it's going to be about cars, and obviously those are elements that are important and integral to this story. But so much of this film revolves around the humans behind the cars. It's really a story that's grounded in humanity. It's that humanity, the complexity of complicated people, that draws Woodley to a role. In Dumb Money, she plays the wife of Keith Gill, who famously rocked Wall Street by short-squeezing GameStop stock. There's a dozen reporters on our lawn. You have to testify before Congress. The game has changed. I know. I hear you. I don't think you do. A lot of the preparation for Dumb Money was just trying to educate myself as much as possible on the landscape of it all. How do you choose what roles you're going to pick next? That's a great question. It's such a simple answer. I feel like I get butterflies or I don't. It could be because I read a script and the story hits me and for some reason I get this physical feeling that I'm like, I have to do this. Or it could be a director or an actor. And so the meter for me really has always been like an intuitive, physical feeling of, of having butterflies. Her career started at a young age. She's been in everything from The Descendants to the Divergent franchise to Big Little Lies, which earned her both Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. Growing up, my parents had three rules. I had to stay the person they knew I was, I had to stay good in school, and I had to have fun. And if I broke any of those rules, I couldn't act anymore. And I'd show up to auditions with like grassy stains on my knees and sticks in my hair, and all the other girls would have their hair brushed. And I remember feeling so cool because I was showing up the way I really was, not showing up the way my mom thought I needed to be for her daughter to be successful. What advice would you give to young girls looking at this career, wanting to do what you do? Advice to, I guess, other young girls would be like, silence is power and taking a minute to take a breath before we react because the whole world tells me I'm not pretty enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not funny enough. That all comes from a place of fear instead of from a place of love where we get to look at the world and go, I know that I have something to offer that no one else does and how can I do everything in my power to protect that so that I never lose sight of that. And she told us that kind of annoys her when people ask her, so what are you doing next? So we didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find but, out with yes. the rest of you. But you can see Shailene in Ferrari when it opens in theaters on Christmas Day. Okay. It looks really good. Coming up next year on GMA3, a welcome surprise for veterans. Just in time for the holidays. So stick with us and come on back. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. We have really good news. <laughs> <laughs> really I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
wherever news breaks. It's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. The Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Do you love your dog? Do you love to dance? Okay then, it's time for you and your dog to get dancing together. So many people are dancing with their dogs and posting their videos, and now we want to see yours. So post a video of you dancing with your dog with the hashtag Dancing Dogs on ABC. And who knows, it may end up right here on GMA for the whole country to see. How's that sound? Reporting from Oroville, California, I'm Rob Marciano. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to GMA3. The holidays are here, and there is no better way to get in the holiday spirit than by giving back to those in need. Especially when it comes to our veterans. ABC News contributor Roxy Diaz has more. Hey, Roxy. That's right. It's always great to give back if you can. And there's one organization doing just that in a major way. Our sponsor, the Home Depot Foundation, is committed to ensuring affordable and accessible housing solution for our nation's heroes. In fact, they've invested over 500 million in veteran causes since 2011. I sat down with the family who received the surprise of a lifetime. I met my wife about 40 years ago. 42, somewhere around there, she that. She was uh, working at the hospital in North Chicago. I had been a patient there, and I guess I liked the sound of her voice. <laughs> so it was love at first hearing for you, because you heard her voice. <laughs> That's good. You're both veterans, yeah. and thank you so much for your service. Um, but talk about your, your experience in the military for the both of you. I joined the Army in 1973, right out of high school. I ended up working for the aviation department. I was a bunch operator aboard a cargo ship. Well, now you guys have a beautiful place to have everybody. Tell me about this house that you just purchased. We had been there, We've but like we say, for there. like four years. So earlier this month, the Home Depot Foundation surprised 500 veterans across the country by covering their December housing payments. Girls. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, what? I didn't expect that. And then on top of that, three veteran families, including you guys, got an even bigger surprise. They paid off your mortgage. Roll it back. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. No. We don't have no mortgage anymore. And that's the greatest thing. I still got butterflies in my stomach because, I, you know, what did we do to deserve this? It was just such a blessing. How much has it helped you to not have that stress of mortgage over your head? It's a peace of mind. And now I can house my children. In other words, they come to visit mom and dad and they always want to eat, I can have food for them to come home. I realize how blessed I am. You guys are mentioning blessings, and you never know when they're going to come, especially what the Home Depot Foundation has been able to do. But they also have another blessing for you guys. I want to present you with this check for $5,000 to give to you guys for any repairs, some more things you might want to do with the house. Wow, thank you. Oh thank my God. God. <laughs> oh, geez. Home Depot Day came and blessed us. And I told my husband, I said, you know what? I said, I would like to have the kitchen remodeled. So you got grandbabies, grand, uh, great grandbabies uh, now. Uh, a lot of people want to eat, so you deserve a new kitchen. Yeah. So will this help you spruce oh, up the yes, kitchen? Oh, yes, it will. <laughs> oh, my God, it will. Thanks so much to Cleveland and Gloria and our sponsor, the Home Depot Foundation, for bringing us that amazing story. I bet you they're having a great Christmas at their house. That was such a nice story, Roxy. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> well, up next here on DMA3, he's grown up quite a bit since his American Idol days. Scotty McCreary is joining us here in the studio. He's got a very special rendition of an Elvis Presley classic, so don't go anywhere. Well, First 
thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Welcome back to GMA3. We've had great holiday performances all week, and we've got another one for you today. Joining us now is someone so many of us rooted for when he won American Idol at the age of 17. That has to feel like a long time ago. The now 30-year-old has become a triple platinum recording artist with four billion, four Billboard number one albums. He is here today to perform one of his favorite Christmas classics. Please welcome Scotty McCrary. How's it going, y'all? Thanks for having me. Congratulations on all the incredible success. I, we have to mention one, though. You were just inducted into the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame. Yeah, that great. has to be extra special. It, yeah, it really is. If anybody knows me, they know I love my home state of Carolina. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of my heroes that are in that hall. Randy Travis and Ronnie Millsap, Charlie Daniels, Andy Griffith is in, is in that hall. So, uh, huge honor for me, for sure. You've also grown up quite a bit since American Idol. You've celebrated your fifth anniversary with your wife, Gabby, yeah. and you have a one-year-old named Avery. So I'm curious what you have planned for the holidays. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Very blessed, I'll tell you. We, uh, we're excited to spend some family time together, we're going up to the mountains in Carolina and hanging out. Uh, it's already snowed a little bit for us this year up there, so we've been doing some sledding and, and just having a good time. So. Before you can head home for the holidays, you are going to be singing a Christmas song for us today that was made famous by Elvis. Yeah. So what inspired you to channel the king? Man, Elvis was my dude growing up. Like, I don't know what it was when I was younger, but it's like all I listened to. And I'd be singing Elvis on the back of the bus, and all the kids would be like, man, that kid is weird. But, uh, <laughs> but I love the king, so uh, we're going we're gonna to try and do him some justice with this one. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Scotty McCreary's Santa Claus is back in town, is available everywhere music is sold and streamed, and you can check out Scotty live on his buzzed about cab in a solo tour starting in January. Yes, for everyone at home, make sure to check out our GMA3 playlist by scanning that QR code right there on your screen. And now here is Scotty McCreary performing yeah. Santa Claus is back in town. Yeah! Woo!
Play with reindeer, no sack on my back. You gon' see me coming in a big black Cadillac. Whoa, it's Christmas time, pretty baby. Yeah. The snow is falling down. Pretty stockings turn out the light. Santa Claus is coming down the chimney tonight. Oh, it's Christmas time, pretty baby. Then the snow is falling. What you need to know for this Thursday. It's so great having you here. We'll do it all over again tomorrow. I'm Eva Pilgrim. I'm Will Reeves. And I'm Dr. Darian. For all of us here at ABC News, have yourself a very, very great day. We'll see you. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from South Korea, I'm Juhi Cho. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live.
I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington right now on ABC News Live. The record-breaking holiday travel rush kicking into high gear. Millions hitting the roads and taking to the skies. Today expected to be the busiest for flyers. This is we track a powerful storm on the move threatening some travel plans. And overseas, a deadly mass shooting at a university in Prague. What we're learning about the rampage and the gunman. Plus, the little girl kidnapped during a camping trip in New York who allegedly, who allegedly took her the moment her family knew she was alive. Our ABC News exclusive interview with the child's aunt. But we begin with the travel rush in full swing as millions of Americans catch flights and hit the roads for the holidays. The Transportation Safety Administration saying it plans to screen more than two and a half million travelers at airports across the country today and tomorrow. Los Angeles International Airport expected to be among the busiest. The TSA projecting by the end of the week, it will have screened nearly 800,000 passengers there. And in the middle of all of that, is where we find ABC News' Jacqueline Lee live for us at LAX. So, Jacqueline, how are the lines there right now? Hey, Jay, great to be with you. Look, I mean, it's been slow and steady all day. We'll see an influx of passengers come in. You'll see a line form, but then it quickly dissipates as people go through. So we really have not had many issues. And I will say, though, we have seen lines when people are trying to check their bags. But other than that, I mean, they're moving through pre-check very quickly. We've seen a lot of dogs, nearly 60 dogs in the last few hours that we've been here, Jay, just so you know. <laughs> You're, you're keeping track of the dogs. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, are, for the life of me, I could not expect LAX to look like that. What about flight delays and cancellations at this hour? Right, so so far across the USA, we've seen 2,600 delays, 78 cancellations. And if you think about it, the fact that Chris, that today is supposed to be the busiest day for Christmas holiday travel, that's pretty impressive. Here at LAX, 212 delays, seven cancellations. We also spoke with a representative from United, and he explained they're focusing on the weather. As you know, LA is dealing with a lot of rain right now, and that is the biggest concern, but it has not caused a lot of travel disruptions. United is also focused on streamlining their boarding process. That means having people board based off of if they're window, middle, or aisle seat to help get these planes out on time, Jay. So one more thing for us, as you know, not just a lot of people traveling today, but over the next few days. So what can we expect uh, as we get closer to Christmas here? Yes, yeah, so look, I mean, there's more than 39 million passengers traveling for the next two weeks, and LAX is ranked fourth busiest when it comes to Christmas departures, according to Hopper. So tomorrow will also be the second busiest day with more than 44,000 flights, Jay. So we're just going to buckle up and just hope things go smoothly. Jacqueline Lee Forrest at LAX, thank you very much. At the height of the holiday travel rush, a new storm on the West Coast is creating high wind alerts and flood watches for this weekend. ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin is tracking it all for us. And Jay, I want to show you these flood watches extending from Los Angeles, San Diego into southern Arizona, including Phoenix there. But the worst of this rain is going to be overnight for the city of L.A. itself. So places like LAX really getting a break with this system because the, the timing's on our side. Heavy rain moving in overnight into early Friday morning. That's when we could see the flood threat continuing for L.A. into San Diego and then eventually pushing into southern Arizona where heavy rain and even some thunderstorms are possible from Phoenix to Tucson. Mountain and snow possible in parts of upper and northern Arizona into New Mexico, but the flood watch really continues right through the day tomorrow. So anyone traveling in these areas through tomorrow needs to be on alert for mudslides, debris flow, especially on those roadways. It could get very dangerous anywhere from Los Angeles through San Diego into southern Arizona with that flood threat continuing. But where does the storm go after it makes its way across the southwest over the Rockies? Heavy snow possible in parts of the central and northern Rockies. Denver, Rapid City, those are areas if you're traveling on Christmas Eve morning, you could get caught in some of that snow, so it could be dangerous on the roadways. Even back through the plains, though, heavy rain is the problem here. From Minnesota, Kansas City, Oklahoma City, Dallas to Houston could see strong thunderstorms on Christmas Eve. This through the day on Sunday, so the central plains could get 
quite messy if you're traveling before the big Christmas day. But here's your Christmas day outlook. And if you're looking for that white Christmas, you're really not going to get it in the Northeast where it's going to be 50 degrees in New York City with lots of sunshine, even close to 60 for DC. If you're looking for that snow though, again, the Northern Plains up into the upper Midwest, that's where you could see those flurries when you wake up on Christmas morning. Rainy conditions from this system though will extend from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf Coast throughout the day on Christmas and it'll finally be dry for Southern California and the West Coast on Christmas Day. Jay? Melissa Griffin for us. Melissa, thank you. Now to Prague, where the gunman who carried out a mass shooting at a university there is now dead. At least 14 people were killed and dozens more injured. It's believed to be the worst mass shooting in the history of the Czech Republic. Police say the shooter was a 24-year-old student at Charles University who also killed his father earlier in the day. The deadly shooting took place at one of the university's faculty buildings. This dramatic video we have for you shows people clinging to the side of a building hiding during the rampage. There it is there. Authorities say the shooter is dead. The Czech Republic's interior minister says officers apparently responded just in time to prevent an even bigger massacre from unfolding. I want to turn now to ABC News correspondent Lama Hassan. Lama, what more are we learning about this suspect and any word on any potential motive here? Yeah, hey, Jay, so we're getting chilling details. The interior minister saying tonight, as you rightly pointed out, that the shooter was a 24-year-old student at Charles University, adding that he doesn't have a criminal record. They don't believe he knew his victims either. At this point, they believe he just fired his weapons randomly, and they're still trying to identify those victims. As for a motive, they don't think this shooting is related to international terrorism, but they just don't know what the motive is yet. The Interior Minister said, quote, I'm talking about a high-performing student who got inspired by another heinous act somewhere else in the world. So it sounds like they think he was inspired by other mass shootings that have happened abroad. Now, they are still in the early stages of this investigation, so I'm sure we will get more information in the coming days. Uh, one other thing that you pointed uh, to, the interior minister saying uh, uh, that they found a large number of weapons at the university building and that the this could have been uh, much, much worse, and they could have had more victims had the police not responded so quickly, Jay. And Lama, an attack like this, a gun crime in general, really, it's so rare in the Czech Republic. How are people there reacting to all of this? You know, Jay, it is extremely rare. Gun crime is low, but you can legally own a firearm in the Czech Republic. The gun laws are some of the most permissive in Europe. The shooter reportedly owned multiple firearms. I think in terms of how people are reacting, so many people are shocked that a mass shooting like this could take place in the Czech Republic. They are still trying to process what they are calling the deadliest mass shooting in the country's history. Even the president himself saying that he was shocked by the events and expressed his sincere condolences to quote all the victims of this unprecedented and insane act which he says the Czech Republic has never experienced in its history and he said it was something that everyone had been terrified of and something that was difficult to prevent. Jay. Lama Hassan tracking all of those developments for us. Lama, thank you very much. Now we turn to the Israel-Hamas war where hopes for another temporary ceasefire face a roadblock. Both sides struggling to agree on a plan. Hamas says it will only discuss a permanent ceasefire. And Israel says it will only agree to limited humanitarian pauses until all the hostages are released and Hamas is defeated. But the White House still claims serious negotiations are continuing. Hunger is an increasing factor here. It's an already dire humanitarian crisis. The World Health Organization says one in four households in Gaza, or more than half a million people, are facing catastrophic hunger conditions. Let's bring in ABC News foreign correspondent Britt Klenet in Tel Aviv for us tonight. Britt, we're getting new reporting that a senior Israeli official is saying that the ongoing talks about releasing hostages have made quote-unquote progress, but we've been down this road, as you know, before. Is another temporary ceasefire really in the cards here? 
Well, look, I know that the hostage family certainly hope so. I was just at a, a protest outside the Defence Ministry. Really, the frustration is palpable. You know, they are very much demanding answers, and they've spent every night there since the death of those three hostages accidentally killed uh, by, the, by the IDF. They're saying that time is running out. They don't want their family members to be next. They say nothing can be more important than bringing their loved ones home. Uh, the White House struck a very optimistic note, uh, saying that serious negotiations negotiations are underway but you know Israel has been uh, less optimistic tonight saying that there isn't a direct uh, negotiation process taking place at the moment Hamas uh, telling ABC News that talks ended uh, in Egypt uh, without any results Israeli officials saying as I said no direct negotiations Hamas saying uh, that unless there is some kind of comprehensive end to the fighting there will be no hostage deal so there is a lot of discrepancy going on and it's hard to see how there is a way forward what we do know is that the war cabinet is meeting tonight the hostage families hoping there will be some kind of negotiation they say uh, ahead of those uh, talks uh, that there is some kind of new strategy being um, shaped up they hinted at new uh, the need for humanitarian uh, aid to go in then therefore a pause as well to release the hostages and as I say war cabinet meeting and, and hostages very much hopeful that there will be some kind of new deal new negotiation new plan forward yeah and Britt as you pointed out I mean uh, hanging over all of this is that ongoing military campaign in Gaza the Israeli military says during that it's uncovered a major Hamas command center in the heart of the city of Gaza it says exposing what it calls a vast underground network used by Hamas to move weapons and supplies through the Gaza Strip what more can you tell us uh, about those ongoing IDF operations in Gaza tonight. Well, look, Prime Minister Netanyahu and the De Defence Minister as well, Gallant, they have been steadfast in their goal, they say, which is to eliminate Hamas, to destroy Hamas and those Hamas capabilities, which include that mass tunnel network. You know, the IDF claims it was a strategic a tunnel network used by Hamas to connect the homes of its top leaders. But I guess one of the big questions is, how are you still seeing outgoing fire from Hamas? Maybe the leadership, uh, the chain of command is switching around, but certainly they do have some capability to retaliate in some shape or form. But we are seeing uh, those daily uh, strikes, those daily attacks by by air and by land, those land assaults too, um, from Israel. And we, we saw that today, we saw that yesterday, and we are seeing the devastation, the destruction, the death toll climb in Gaza as, as a result of that. I mean, the other question in all of this is how you get aid to the Gaza Strip. We know that delivery of aid to the Gaza Strip has become arguably more difficult now than ever due to the fighting there. Uh, what is the latest on those trying to get that aid to, to those who need it most there? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And most aid groups we speak to say that for what they've got right now, it's a drop in the ocean. It's just quite frankly not enough. But after weeks of uh, delays and intense negotiations, uh, it looks like the United States uh, was negotiating with Egypt to try and find a compromise to get more aid in. Uh, a Security Council resolution by the UN would allow kind of scaled up, uh, you know, safe delivery of aid from air, land and sea. And I think that's what many humanitarian groups want to see, that desperately needed aid reach people who are just uh, really facing dire situations. I'm talking a shortage of water, uh, food, electricity, uh, communication is down. It's very hard for these people to live day in, day out. I spoke to, to a woman inside Gaza who said that she expects fighting to break out soon because people are so desperate to eat and the starvation reaching at such desperate levels. Uh, Brick, I want to, Brett, I want to circle back to, you said something about a protest that you were at with the families of some of those hostages. We know that those families have been exerting a lot of pressure on the Israeli government. And I, I'm just curious, you mentioned it a little bit, but I want to go a little bit deeper. What are they telling you at this hour about their level of satisfaction with how the government is handling this in Israel? Yeah, so as I say, after the death of those three uh, Israeli hostages accidentally by the IDF, 
you kind of expected this um, outpouring of anger. There was a lot of frustration. But, you know, some people we spoke to said, well, they're soldiers, and I also served in the IDF, so I kind of understand how people with who, who are carrying those arms would be frightened. Um, but certainly, you know, they don't want their family members to be next. And I think that's the overarching theme. I think what they're trying to do is walk a very fine line. They don't want to alienate the government. They want the government to be on their side and they want to know um, that the government supports them, 100% backs them. But at the same time, their anger is growing, their frustration is growing. And you can tell that the overriding message is time is running out, act now. Britt Clenet in Tel Aviv for us. Britt, thank you for your time. Coming up for us, a nine-year-old girl abducted on a camping trip and found days later what she went through, where she was found. The ABC News exclusive after the break. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war, after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day. On the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> I you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war. For nonstop live coverage, stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. Welcome back. The family of a girl abducted on a camping trip in upstate New York and found days later is sharing their story for the first time. In an ABC News exclusive, her aunt is sharing how her niece vanished the moment she learned she was alive and the justice the family is seeking now. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. You always say, like, this type of stuff doesn't happen to you, but obviously... It can happen to you. It was a case that gripped the country. A little girl abducted while camping in upstate New York last September. No now her aunt speaking exclusively with ABC News about the harrowing ordeal. Um, pure torture. Pure, pure torture, really. You're thinking, like, what if this doesn't end soon? What if we can't find her? What if, like, all of the what ifs? ABC News is not naming or showing the nine-year-old and blurring her face at the family's request. Her aunt, Janae Senna, speaking for the girl's family, fiercely protective of her as she tries to regain a sense of normalcy. Honestly, it's been a roller coaster. She is a child that um, didn't ask for what happened to her. So she's 
trying to resume her, her normal life. During a family camping trip at Moreau Lake State Park, the little girl was riding her bike with other family members around this loop when she decided to do one more lap on her own and then vanished. Her sudden disappearance sparking a massive multi-agency manhunt. For two days, her family waiting in agony. Then a bizarre break in the case. Law enforcement says a ransom note was slipped into her parents' mailbox while an officer was watching. Fingerprints leading authorities to 46-year-old Craig Ross Jr., who had been arrested for a DUI in 1999. Authorities tracking him down in a trailer behind his mother's home, 13 miles from the victim's house. Police say the 9-year-old was found alive in a cabinet. When you learned that your niece had been located, what was your reaction? Um, I dropped my knees screaming. Ross Jr. now charged with nine counts of kidnapping and assault. He's pleaded not guilty. Unfortunately, the world we live in, there are predators out there. And so justice will be not only him being safely away to not do this to anyone else, but also her having, you know, great support system and tools and whatever she needs around her to move forward. What do you want people to know and take away from your family story? This isn't just a headline. This isn't just um, something to get clicks. This is a real person, a real child, a real family. Ariel Resha reporting for us there. Thank you. We want to point out that that young girl's aunt, who you just heard from, was adamant in about the need for sensitivity in these cases that are traumatizing to young kids and how they're handled in the legal system and in the public, especially when they involve children. The family will be spending Christmas together, she says. Coming up for us, time is running out to get those presents under the tree. We'll give you some tips on finding last-minute holiday gifts after the break. This is ABC News Live. The crushing of families trunk. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Give it to me. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the Capitol, I'm Rachel Scott. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. All right, welcome back. So look, we all know those people who have finished their holiday shopping by August, and then there is the rest of us. So, rest of us, rather. So if you're behind on your holiday shopping for your friends and family, and you're starting to panic, first, you are not alone. I am among you. Second, ABC's Rena Roy has you covered with expert advice on last-minute shopping. Here she is. 
Tis the season for gift giving, but don't worry if you put off your holiday shopping to the last minute, you still have options. Experts say digital gifts are great because you can cater to the receiver's interests and you won't have to worry about whether you'll have it in time for Christmas Day. For example, to Masterclass, perhaps Audible, perhaps um, to a screening service that they like to use. And then, of course, there is subscription boxes. They don't need to know that you ordered it at the very last minute. They're just going to be looking forward to those boxes arriving throughout the year. Another fun digital present, a shout out from their favorite celebrity on Cameo. That basically taps uh, talents across, you know, actors, musicians, athletes, and you can have them say a personalized message for your recipients. Or you could book an experience for your loved one. If there's a concert that, you know, they really want to go to or a sporting event or a team that they're rooting for. Buying them those tickets, that'll be a very memorable experience. If you're set on giving a physical gift, experts recommend actually going to a store to shop or choosing an item online that's eligible for in-store same-day pickup and be flexible on the product and price. You might not be able to price compare as much as you would. You might not be able to wait for something to go on sale because you simply don't have time. So sometimes you have to prioritize at the last minute based on whether something's going to arrive on time or whether it's in stock for you to get it at a store. In-store same-day pickup has saved me a lot over the years. Some good advice there from Rena Roy. Rena, thank you. Much more ahead for us here on ABC News Live. First, he was using buses. Now Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott is putting migrants on planes and sending them to Chicago. I'll speak with ABC News foreign correspondent Matt Rivers about the growing battles over immigration from the southern border to Capitol Hill. And in our spotlight, the new report on Clarence Thomas, his concerns about his salary, on top of that ongoing scrutiny over the lavish trips from a GOP mega donor. Our panel weighs in on public service versus profiteering. All of that coming up. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? 
Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, Yay. every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. Welcome back. Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott doubling down on plans to send migrants to other states. First, he used buses. Now he's using planes. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington, D.C. In today's big story, the first flights of migrants arriving from the U.S.-Mexico border to Chicago in response to officials there cracking down on Abbott's use of buses. This as civil rights groups fight a controversial new Texas state law. I'll speak with ABC News foreign correspondent Matt Rivers about the latest immigration battles from the southern border to Capitol Hill. And in our spotlight, the stunning new report about Clarence Thomas, his reported complaints about his salary, all amid accusations he secretly accepted lavish trips and gifts. Our panel weighs in on just how much Americans should profit from public service. But we begin with our big story. Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott sending migrants by the plane load to Chicago. The first flights arrived yesterday carrying more than 100 people. Abbott says the flights will continue and blames the situation at the southern border on President Biden. The administration says Abbott is using real people to carry out a political stunt. And Chicago's mayor says the governor is creating chaos. The migrants on that plane, including a mother along with her husband, and three young children. The mother says she has brain cancer, her eight-year-old leukemia. The people who brought us here were the first to get off the plane, and we never saw them again. We only saw the flight attendant and the pilots. They were very kind, but they didn't know what was happening either. The flights of migrants to Chicago is just the latest escalation in, the gov in Governor Abbott's efforts to transport thousands of asylum seekers from communities along the U.S.-Mexico border to Democrat-led cities like Chicago. The crisis, meantime, showing no signs of slowing down. Waves of migrants arrived in Eagle Pass, Texas this week. This comes as civil rights groups challenge a controversial immigration bill that Abbott signed into law Monday, giving state and local authorities in Texas the power to arrest people suspected of illegally crossing the border. The law takes effect in March, and critics say it will lead to widespread racial profiling. ABC News foreign correspondent Matt Rivers is based in Mexico City and joins me now in New York. Matt, you, again, are based in Mexico City. You have covered the border for us for quite some time, spent a lot of time down there. So first and foremost, I just want to ask you, what is the situation like down there right now? Well, I mean, it's unprecedented, and, and that's saying something because what we've seen at the border over the last, let's say, three years uh, ha has really been large numbers of migrants coming, but the sustained trend, the sustained day after day after day of thousands of migrants being encountered up and down the southwest border, it's unprecedented. I mean, there's really no other way to describe it. And what you're seeing in places like Eagle Pass, Texas, this is a tiny little sleepy uh, town in the southern part of Texas, and it is being overwhelmed by the amount of migrants that we're seeing there. So wherever you fall on the political issue in all of this, what I can tell you is that the amount of people arriving at the border right now is something we've never seen before.
So back to SB4, that law just signed by Governor Greg Abbott. It, traditionally, it, only the federal government, as you and I have covered for a long time, mm -hmm. enforces immigration law. Now police in Texas would be allowed to make arrests and even carry out some form of deportation. What kind of reaction have you heard from communities along the border there? And, and does Texas really have the manpower and the infrastructure to pull something like that off? Yes, yeah, so I'll take the first part uh, of the question first there, Jay. I mean, listen to what Mexico is saying first and foremost, because that's the country that these people would be deported back to. Mexico is saying, well, why is it our problem to solve U.S. immigration policies? They think that this U.S. law is legal against U.S. constitutional law, against Mexican law, against international law, and against any sort of decent moral code with which you should be treating migrants. So that's what you're hearing for along the border there. But then you just talk about the practicalities of this law. So what exactly is going to happen? You're going to get a, a, a law enforcement officer, let's say, in North Texas that's going to send a migrant all the way down to South Texas. We all know how big Texas is. So who's going to pay for all of that? Who's going to transport the migrants south? And then when you get the migrants south and you want to enact those deportation proceedings, well, the way that happens now is that Mexican authorities receive migrants as they cross back over these land bridges. What if Mexican officials say, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're not going to accept these migrants. We're going to not let people cross into Mexico. Well, then what happens? How is Texas going to respond to that? What is the federal government's role in all of this? What about the Border Patrol agents and the CBP officers that are staffing those ports of entry? Is Texas going to send migrants back across the Rio Grande? In, in, in an illegal way into Mexico, then they're violating Mexican law. So there are so many different practicalities here that the governor, despite talking big about this law, saying it's going to go back into March, go into effect in March, how this is going to get carried out, I don't think anyone really has an idea. Well, you mentioned talking big. I mean, the whole impetus behind SB4 is Abbott saying that President Biden isn't doing enough at the border. And so I want to play you something. Our Mary Alice Parks pushed the White House on that exact question today. I want to play you that exchange, get your reaction on the back end. Here's that. Can you point to one thing that the White House is doing right now that is making an impact on the border, is making an impact with this current surge? Well, one of the things that uh, we, well, Obviously, it's a big part of the supplemental request. We're seeing record levels of people. More people are on the move in this hemisphere than that has been the case since World War II. There's a lot of factors, and part of that is, of course, dealing with instability, uh, political dom uh, and, uh, and domestic instability uh, in the region. Okay, Matt, your take on that, particularly his notion of a lot of people on the move in the hemisphere and that notion of domestic instability. Yeah, I mean, there's no question about that. I mean, in each one of these countries that people are coming from has its own set of problems. So if you're looking at political perse persecution in Nicaragua, if you're looking at the crazy inflation rates that we're seeing in Argentina forcing people to flee, if you're looking at a increasing gang violence in Ecuador, if you're looking at economic problems in a place like Guatemala or Mexico, each one of these countries has its own issues that is forcing people people to head north. And that's just some of the issues that are sending people north. But this is all happening at the same time, Jay. So that is a, 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 a trend that, you know, uh, John Kirby there is right when he says that there's a lot of movement going on, unprecedented amounts in this hemisphere. All right, and one more thing for you while I have you. It's something that's taking up a lot of my time as someone who doesn't typically sit in this chair and covers mm -hmm. Capitol Hill is that Republicans and Democrats are, are still there trying to hash out a deal on immigration reform. While those talks play out, what have you heard from migrants, from Border Patrol, from advocacy groups, anybody that you've talked to in your reporting about what they would want to be included in those talks? Everybody, the, the one thing that everybody can agree on is that this is very much a issue that needs funding. Whatever you want the funding for, whether it's more enforcement, whether it's more humanitarian need, whether it's more shelter, whether it's more processing and asylum processing capability, everybody agrees that what is happening at the border now needs more funding and everyone can agree that what is happening right now at the border is a crisis in some way, shape or form. How you want to deal with it can depend on where you fall in the political sense of things, but when you look at what's happening at the border, it's not good for migrants, it's not good for Border Patrol officials, it's not good for the governor of Texas, it's not good for the president president of the United States. Everybody agrees that things need to change. And the best way you can do that is by acknowledging this is a problem and by uh, funding it.
Yeah, Matt Rivers, so great to unpack all of this with you. So useful. Thank you, sir, for your time. I want to bring in now our big story panel. Turn to them with all of this. Joining us today is ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host Mike Muse, ABC News contributor and former Republican congressman from New York, John Katko, ABC News contributor and former Clinton 2016 presidential campaign aide, Amanda Renteria, and ABC News contributor and op-ed columnist for the LA Times, LZ Granderson. Everybody's in. Thank you for your time. John, I turn to you first here, these immigration reform talks playing out in the Senate that you heard Matt and I just talk about a little bit. Is there anything that Republicans and Democrats could agree on in the Senate, assuming that they do, that could pass in the Republican-controlled House with some of your former colleagues there, some of whom are hardliners on this issue? Well, if, if you listen to the hardliners, nothing's going to get done. If you listen to hardliners on the left or the right, nothing will get done. You need a bill that's going to upset both the far left and the far right. And that's where the sweet spot to get this thing done, because we need aid to Israel, we need aid to Ukraine, and we need to secure the border. But one thing Matt didn't talk about that is a cold, hard reality, is that on January 20th, when the president was sworn in, President Biden, he issued a series of executive orders that the cartels used to advertise on TikTok and Facebook and other mediums that caused a magnet for these people to come to the border thinking that there was a different there was a different type of tone and tenor with respect to U.S. immigration on the border. So that has to change. I think the Biden administration acknowledges that. I think they're getting pounded in polling by that, and that's why they're trying to strike a grand bargain. I want them to strike that grand bargain, bargain and I want the far left and the far right and the middle on both sides to come to the realization that anything we do to try and secure the border better and have some better security on the border is going to lead to less exploitation of the individuals coming across and will lead to a more secure border. And I think that's a good thing. And we need to get to that point. We are, we are not there. And people have got to put down their swords for once and get this thing done. Yeah, we should add here, as John just mentioned, that Republicans on Capitol Hill said there will be no aid for Ukraine or for Israel without some kind of a deal in immigration policy. Uh, but mm -hmm. Amanda, President Biden is facing a tight spot here, too. He said he's open to significant compromises as part of that package I was just talking about with Israel and Ukraine aid and immigration reform. But he's getting flack from Democrats in border states for not doing enough. And he's getting pressure from progressives not to cave to Republicans in those talks. Does he have a way out of this where everybody can stay happy? with the eventual result? Well, I, I'm not sure there's a happy place to make everyone happy on immigration. And I think that's exactly the point, which is we do yeah. need a Congress that can do the hard work, um, both courage and compromise to not just figure out yeah. this, but this moment in time, but also immigration reform largely. Now, I agree with John that this is a time and this is a moment right at the end of the year when everyone starts to like, how are we going to get this done? where you can start to build that group, that gang of eight or whatever it might be, to begin a real process of immigration reform. And it does start with what do you put in this bill in order to both help what is happening at the border, but also set the stage for real immigration reform as opposed to political stunts. Are you saying talks in the Capitol are more productive when everyone's not in town? How dare you? Of course they're more productive when everyone's here. What do you mean? They're so great when they're all together. Anyway, L sorry, LZ, uh, this is going to be a serious factor in the presidential race. The situation at the border is already a serious drag on President Biden's poll numbers. Every single Republican candidate mentions this issue daily on the stump. So how do you see us playing out on the campaign trail? Well, you know, I live in Texas and, you know, being in L.A. all those years, I've been covering immigration for a while. And the thing that seems to me that comes up over and over again is that we're so focused in on the border and we're not asking ourselves, why are they coming? We keep framing this as an immigration issue when really it's a refugee issue. They're fleeing. They're not coming here. They're fleeing from something. And we know that Texas governor last year, Greg, uh, Greg Abbott, designated the cartel as a terrorist organization. And he got it to the White House asking for the same. In March, uh, Secretary Blinken said that he was considering it. I think they need to revisit that because they need to start the root of the problem and not just keep looking at the border. Why are they coming? That's the real issue. Yeah, and Mike, one more to you here. So migrants are being flown to Chicago, as we mentioned, but also they're being bused 
to New York, where you are sitting in one of our studios right now. It's causing a serious strain on resources there. So what are you hearing about the effect that this crisis is having on communities and on people who live far away from the U.S.-Mexico border? Absolutely. It's putting a big strain on it and continue with the cynical nature, Jay, of, of your previous statement is that we now need Congress to do better at governance. Uh, we need one them to address the issue of soft diplomacy and address infrastructure, education uh, and security so they don't come forward. We also too need Congress to act in order to pass funding to what you and Matt was speaking to in order to give relief to these cities, to these migrants are flowing into. But really, Jay, I think this is a call from Governor Abbott to force this issue to the Supreme Court to really reexamine Arizona versus the United States to determine if states can control immigration or we should continue to leave it to the federal government. Mike, John, Amanda, LZ, thank you for unpacking this with us. Coming up, our panel sticks around with the new reports that Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas was so concerned about his finances that some worried he might quit the bench. Should recent law graduates earn more money than justices on the nation's highest court? That is in our spotlight. That's what we're talking about after the break. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <laughs> Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day. On the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner Oh, Crufts 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. All right, get this. According to a recent report in ProPublica, in 2000, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas thought he wasn't getting paid enough and sparked fears among some that he might resign because of it. He reportedly detailed all of those concerns in a conversation with a then Republican member of Congress, arguing that he and his fellow justices were underpaid, sparking concerns in the legal community about how much all federal judges are paid. According to that report, a the memo was then written to Chief Justice William Rehnquist asking if Congress should raise justices' salaries. ABC News has not verified the memo, and representatives for Justice Thomas, Thomas and the Supreme Court have declined to comment. But all of this is prompting questions about how much the people we elect or give lifetime appointments to should financially benefit from public service. So we bring back our panel now, Mike, John, Amanda, and LZ. This is going to be like law school where I cold call on people with questions 
institutions that have facts and data. So, Mike, first to you. An associate justice of the United States Supreme Court makes $285,000 a year. That's a lot of money, but it's not anywhere close to what lawyers at some big law firms get paid, even entry-level lawyers. On Capitol Hill, lobbyists make more than lawmakers. All of us on this panel know that. So there are concerns that if you lower the pay or that their low pay could drive people away from public service. But will the American people, in your eyes, really get behind anything that would pay public servants more? <laughs> Jay, that's such a big, brilliant question. Um, and to that, I often go back and forth on this. Uh, I, I do believe that if you were to pay elected officials more, or those who serve lifetime appointments, you may not get those who are willing to sign up for a servant's heart, uh, but more so for looking at it from a capitalistic gain. Uh, I believe, Jay, the solution is, is to really look and examine term limits. If you look at the examine term limits, they will be there for a limited amount of time, and then after that, they can enter with the servant's heart, and then they can leave to gain in the private sector and work for a public affairs firm or then for a lobbying firm, and they won't be tempted in order to take side deals, which often is the case to which we've seen uh, some allegations coming from Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Uh, to one of our, our panelists now who's been on the receiving end of a paycheck from the federal government, John, Justice Thomas <laughs> has been under scrutiny for expensive trips he took, paid for by Republican donors. He even had an RV reportedly financed by a wealthy friend. After all of this came out, for the first time, as you know, the Supreme Court adopted a new code of ethics. But it's voluntary. So the question to the former lawmaker here is, should that be mandatory and should it be put in federal law? Oh, absolutely. We can't even take a cup of coffee from anybody when we're in Congress. And that's the way it should be. And anybody who goes into public service thinking that you're going to make a lot of money or you're going to get rich is, uh, is uh, not going in for the right reasons. And it's just not realistic. Public service is exactly what it is, public service. I did it for 32 years on the federal level. And I can tell you, much to my wife's chagrin, my family's chagrin, it was not a real lucrative thing. But here's the reality. Five or six of my staffers, by the time I retired from Congress last year, were making more money than me as a member of Congress. And, you know, that's something you got to really think about. And for the average American, that's, they're like, so what? But the bottom line is we don't want just millionaires in Congress who can afford to be there and afford all the extras. I mean, when you go to Congress, you don't, you, you don't get paid for extra living expenses, or at least you didn't until recently and after I left. So there is a lot of things that we can do to make it more competitive. But the bottom line is... You're a public servant. If you don't want to, if you don't like the deal, don't do it. But don't cut corners and don't try and make money on the side because you're not happy with the money you're getting. That's not why you're doing it. I was very proud of my service. Everyone should be. But you know, thinking you're going to make money on it is you go somewhere else and make money, not in cotton, not as a public servant. So, Amanda, in that vein, two issues that in polls always drag down Americans' perception of government are officials leaving public service to become lobbyists and members of Congress from both parties trading individual stocks of companies who's, who they regulate or make laws about, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think that there could be any legislation on either of those things that could really ever get through Congress? I do think there can be. I think you're seeing a whole new generation get into office and start to look at these things from an entirely different view. I am hopeful that you're seeing more and more support for stopping top stock trading. Um, so I'm hopeful about this. But listen, this should have been stopped a long time ago. I hope it will. And I think a new generation is actually going to write new rules for exactly this kind of thing. LZ, Congress doesn't poll well with Americans. What is your take with all of this? I think it's interesting that the conversation starts with the need to make more money, that if you look at the base of America, every single member of Congress is technically rich. <laughs> yeah, that is an excellent point. That is an excellent point, I mean, that, that's, Thank that's, you, sir. That, that's the state of American economy right now. Right now, every member of Congress is technically rich. So if you think that you're poor in Congress, try being an average American. They make $174,000 a year. That is a that. good point. I might add to that. There's, there's no doubt that's accurate. I'm just saying from a from a practical standpoint, I don't want Congress to be filled with just millionaires. I want people like me and blue collar people to go there and to be able to handle the, having two homes and all that other stuff. But that all that aside, Congress has very, very strict limitations uh, because of what's happened in the past. Supreme Court needs to have the exact same limitations. The fact that they don't, the fact that things are voluntary there is patently insane. And I absolutely agree. 
term limits will solve a lot of this problem. And whoever said that, you're spot on. I've been buttonholed in the halls of Congress with both of those points made. But Mike, John, Amanda, and LZ, thank you very much for your time. Coming up in our last call, one of the signs of the holiday season are those holiday cards piling up in your mailbox, maybe on your fridge. Is it a welcome site or a bygone tradition? That is after the break. This is ABC News Live. The crushing of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Give it to me. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Manhattan, I'm Diane Macedo. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. Your